giving up, be strong and lift him up, cause he's the power of life, so won't you lift him up, rain always, rain always, rain always, cause it's the last day. With direction, his love and affection. Hi, this is Angel Sessions, and when I'm in town, I listen to Jerry Royce live. PositivePower21.org, where they play my favorite music. Hi, I am recording artist Marilyn Dunn from St. Louis, Missouri. If you are looking for some soul-stirring, anointed, spiritual, and heartfelt music, visit my website at www.marilynnministries.com. Or you can also find me on CD Baby, iTunes, and Reverb Nation. For booking information, contact Mr. Kevin Dunn at 636-856-0551. That's 636-856-0551. Hi, this is international urban gospel recording artist Angel Sessions. And I have a new single out that just was released February 17th, 2015. The title is Jesus is Coming Soon. It is now on all online stores, so CD is sold, uh, CD Baby iTunes, Amazon. Also, you can visit my website, www.angelsessions.com, for more information. And I am on Gary Ross Live. You are listening to PositivePower21.org with Jerry Royce. What up, it's your boy Kano Kingston. Hi, this is Angel Session. Hey, this is Kat. Hi, I'm Teresa Powell. Hi, Jerry. This is Iowa Sandro Carter. Hi, this is Paul Powers. Hello, this is Teresa Bobby with Jerry Royce Live. Hi, I'm Phil Brand. I'm live on the Jerry Royce Show. Hey, what do you do? Boy, who's the same? Peace, this is Dolly, the poet, spoken word artist. Hello, this is Lamar Marquis with Jerry Worth Live. All right, all right, everyone. you got Robin Lynn, and I'm keeping it live right now on Jerry Royce Live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's up? This is a war-winning podcast with the greatest podcast on earth. Thank you for stopping by. I'm your host, Jerry Royce Live Worldwide on Internet Radio. Where you get your positive on. So when it's all positive, it's all power. That's positive power. This is a worldwide podcast for growth, wealth, and success. Thank you. Think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Think again. Set in the green hills of western New Jersey inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company where decisions are worth billions of dollars and human lives worth less. Nicholas Harding, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career, family, and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse, a suspense thriller novel by Bill Powers, published by Donna Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com or DonnaInc.org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. Are you looking for the next great read? A book filled with love, passion, betrayal, and intrigue. The award-winning novel, Season of Change, by Tamika Patrice Kane is sure to satisfy your literary sweet tooth. 
Check out this must-read book reviewers are calling uplifting and emotional and exceptionally great read, deeply intense and thought-provoking. Order your copy today, available in paperback and ebook on Amazon.com or at www.TamikaPatrice.com. Are you an author looking for promotional services or a reader looking for a great read at low prices? In this competitive world of books, Writing Royalty Promotions is dedicated to bringing authors and readers together to build a greater respect for literature through our various promotional services and online bookstore. So head over to writingroyaltypromotions.com and check us out. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and welcome to Positive Power 21.org. I am Jerry Royce Live. That's right, and welcome, everybody. And tonight we got a special special treat for you. I know you guys have been watching us on Facebook, and we've been, we've been promoting Angel Sessions is back. That's right, urban gospel recording artist. That's right. She the, she's the uh, songstress of Hearts of a Broken Love, my favorite, favorite, favorite LP, and we're going to have her on in a few moments, but right now we're going to have a word from our big major sponsor of this program, Dominique Wilkins. Have you been hurt? Been hurt. Been back, back there. there. Got a talking back to you. Talking back. Because you're not alone. No, no. Escaping to another reality. reality. Through Dominic Wilkins' good book. Good books of your books, paperback, ebook, good books. Available on authordwilkinsgoodbooks.com. Thank you for joining us. This is the Jerry Voice Live Worldwide presentation for PositivePower21.org and Spreaker.com forward slash PositivePower21. Tonight's guest is Angel Sessions. And her bio reads, I've always had a love and passion for singing ever since I was a little girl. Touching the lives of others through my music inspires me to continue my journey for God's glory until the end. Angel Sessions. The road to success hasn't been easy, but after 18 or more years in the music industry, Angel Sessions has proven she is in it to stay. Angel started out early on as an R&B recording artist before her first deal with Pit Mobile, Ichabon Records, and Volt Records. Angel was traveling to GOM, performing at the Grammys pre-parties in Los Angeles and performing at the same venues with acts such as The Whispers, H-Town, Tina Marie, James Brown, Eric Renee, and many more. She performed also on many local television stations in the Bay Area and was interviewed on local radio program show. Angel Sessions writes all of her own lyrics, Ever since I can remember, I always wrote songs of love to my Heavenly Father. It was a gift God has given me along with the ability to sing. Angels began singing in church. She was one of the lead singers that would perform a special song when called on. After years of local performances in the Bay Area and the Los Angeles area, Angel was introduced to a producer and songwriter that would take her career to the next level. In 1998, she signed a deal with Pit Mobile Records. She released her first album entitled Introducing Angel. Her first single release was Never Her. Got radio airplay on 80 BDS stations and was received well. The buzz about Angel was beginning to spread and many people in the industry was hearing the name Angel Sessions. Equibon sold the company in 1999. Angel was introduced to the vice president of Fantasy Records, Phil Jones. She had already recorded her second album, Love Ride, and at the time was shopping for her deal for her new project. Phil Jones loved the album, and it was soon released on a December 99 on Volt Records. The single Get It Right from the album was also released to all of the radio stations around the country. A video was also shot for the song. Actor, director Fred Williamson played Angel's father in the video. The album was received well and had a small write-up review in Rolling Stones magazine and mentioned in Billboard magazine. Volt Records also signed Lenny Williams, Brenda Holiday, Frida Payne, the Delphonics, and the Dramatics. Each of them did one album deal. 
Angel had the opportunity to record backup vocals on the album and also duets. She was also introduced to Maurice White, the singer of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Angel sang on two on Maurice's album that late replaced on the Stylistics album in 2010, entitled Painted in the Sky. Many great producers contributed to the album Love Rise. Tony Camello wrote the song Inconvenience on Angel's album Love Ride. It was written for the movie Held Up, starring Jamie Foxx and Neil Long. The original title of the film was Inconvenience, but was soon changed to the title Held Up. However, Angel was invited to the movie premiere to meet Jamie Foxx and the cast and to see the film. In 1999, Angel was introduced to Mari Wilson, formerly from the talented and famous girl group The Supremes. In 2004, Angel traveled around the country singing backup for Mary Wilson. In 2005, Angel released her first gospel recording album on CD Baby. The album entitled He Loves You began the new journey in the gospel world of music for Angel Session. She auditioned to open up for Fred Hammond at the San Diego State Fair in 2007 and was later asked to do two shows performing on two different stages on that same day at the event. In 2012, Angel released other gospel material. She shot her first gospel video, Chastin, and You Got Him, You Don't. Both videos were received well by her fans. Angel released her next video in 2013 titled You Can. And one hour after the release, it went viral to over 9,000 views. Angel released her seventh album, You Send Me Higher, an EP, If You Love Me, that same year. In 2014, her latest album, Hearts of Broken Love, gained exposure from the fans around the world after the release of her, of her single, Get Up, from the album. It was released to radio stations and charted at number one for 11 weeks on the national U.S. charts. Hearts of a Broken Love also charted on Amazon at number 14 for the best gospel music download. Angel is currently working on a new album entitled Songs of Comfort and will release, will release her new single, Jesus is Coming Soon, in February 2015. She is also planning on a tour coming soon. She, is as, she has been featured in Encore, HD Hair Magazine, Artist United Magazine, Say What News Online Magazine, and Top Cat Online Magazine. Angel has also had her songs featured on Coast to Coast Mixtape and was nominated for the Underground Music Awards for the Most Promising Female Artist and nominated for the ATL Music Entertainment Award for the Best Female Artist. Angel continued her success from sharing her talent for all of her fans, and she is so grateful for the support many of her fans have shown her. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you Angel Sessions. Enjoy this presentation on Jerry Voice Live Worldwide. Welcome to the show, Angel. How you doing? Hey, I'm great, Jerry. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Now, you got your brand new single coming out. Well, it should be out now, right? February. Jesus coming fe- soon. Yeah. February 17th, it was out uh, about two days ago. So it's on Amazon, all online stores where music is sold. CD Baby, Amazon, Google Play, iTunes, you name it. Yeah. Oh, man. Beautiful song, too. Now, before we get started with the interview, you know, I told you my audience in D.C. and Maryland, you know, mostly my family, they love to know who they're listening to on this show. And this is for you, Eastern Shore, Maryland, D.C. The question is, who is Angel Sessions? I Angel Sessions, I myself, I am an urban national or an international urban gospel recording artist. And I've been in the business for quite some time. Uh, over 18 years. Um, been in that long journey and a wonderful one thanks again to my Heavenly Father for keeping me uh, through his strength strong and to go on. And just a lot of great things in store this year. Um, just working hard on continuing to uh, put out good music, mainly for God's glory and to for all of my fans. I'm just grateful for all the emails I receive, uh, for all the support I get uh, through um, my um, awesome team, um, Kelly Lee. Artists United, uh, Demetrius Gidry, and, and um, all the wonderful host radio shows such as Franz, Ape, um, Yuri, North Live, and just many others if I haven't uh, named. But God has been good, good, and I just can't thank him enough. Amen. Amen. God is awesome. That's right. All right, Angel. You know, I'm always listening to your songs. I tell you all the time how I just love your album, your LP, and I can't wait for the new one to come out. And you're dropping that in March, right? The songs of a Comfort. Songs of Comfort. Oh, Jesus yeah. coming soon, February. March, you got Songs of Comfort coming out. 
how anxious is, is your team and your uh, and your fans? How anxious are they? Uh, from what I'm hearing, you know, uh, and all the great, wonderful emails and um, response that I get, I'm sure they're very excited about it as much as I am. So uh, I think they'll really enjoy this new album. I'm very excited about it. Uh, I love the latest album. I have Hearts of Broken Love, but I think this is more, far more, a little more deeper because each of the songs really does have a song of, song of comforting a person's soul, a uh, heart, um, as far as whatever they might be going through. I mean, God is the only one that can save. Um, so the song is not uh, as though it can save someone. God can, but God can use the song for that purpose. So um, that they can use, hear the song and God can really minister to their hearts through it, and this is what I'm praying for. That's right. Now, your, your, your music is so relaxing, and, and we, when we talked before, you know, you told us, you know, you write all your own lyrics, and the same for this album, you wrote all your own, own lyrics? Correct, correct, all right. yeah. Oh, awesome. Your, your music is so relaxed, like, it talks to your heart. You know, Hearts of a Broken Love, I just found every, every one of those songs to be so soothing and relaxing. You know, man, if it was slower or it was up tempo, it just was so relaxing. You know, it's like you get almost feel the angels, you know, singing to you. Now, are we going to get the same or are we going to get way more from song, Songs of Comfort? I mean, how do you feel about this one over? I mean, could you compare the two if you had to? Yeah, Songs of Comfort is different. It, I mean, you know, my writing ability is, is who I am. So I think when people hear my vocal arrangement, it's still in your sessions, but Songs of Comfort is definitely more um, um, more powerful, more, you know, heartfelt, simply because um, each song I write, I try to be as um, different. I, mm-hmm. I try not to be, you know, similarly the same. So um, it, it definitely does have that great feel of Songs of Comforting, someone's soul. So, it's, you know, some great, the Hearts of Broken Love is a great album, and I'm definitely still I'm currently uh, uh, pushing that one. But this yeah. new album that I will be releasing, I'm, I'm really believing that um, hopefully, it, you know, Lord Willem is going to do well um, yeah. and that people will see why the title is called Songs of Comfort. Yeah, I can't wait. I mean, Jesus is Coming Soon is an is a exciting, exciting single itself. Now, let's listen to it a little bit, all right? And we'll be right back. So hold tight. We're talking to Angel Sessions on Jerry Voice Live Worldwide. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to listen to Jesus is Coming Soon. All right, hold tight, everybody, for this presentation with James Deshay. Are you looking for a great book of poetry that is romantic, heartfelt, and full of male emotion? Then get Thoughts, Love, and Reflections by James K. Deshay. That's D-E-S-H-A-Y. Go to www.jamesdeshay.com. You will enjoy Thoughts, Love, and Reflections. Jesus is coming soon because he is coming soon. And I just want to always make sure I'm faithful to God's word to declare everything that I've learned from God's word, um, that Christ is soon to come, um, and that it's going to be a rejoiceful time for his elect. Maybe not for everyone, of course, because God knows who his elect are, but when he does return for his elect, there will be totally 
joyful sounds. I mean, I can't even imagine how it's going to be, but it's going to be so awesome on that day. So it's a song of encouragement to all the true believers from all around the world, and only God knows who they are, and they know who they are, um, to hold on and be strong and don't give up and, you know, and continue to lift up God's name, continue to be faithful, stay true to God's word, and share the gospel uh, faithfully to as many as God allows. Uh, put on your heart to do so, so that God will continue to his people, saving his people from their sins. Um, because this is the this is the miracle of Christ, and that is the work of salvation that he does in the hearts of his people. And so this song is just uh, to continue to uh, encourage all the true believers to just rejoice and be happy because the Lord's coming soon, and just hold on and don't give up. That's right. Hold on, everybody's coming soon. That's right. Now, Angel, your music is, is like a ministry. Is, it, is that the purpose? It's a ministry from you to us? Well, yeah. I mean, um, it's not like a, a, a preaching thing. It's not something that, that I'm doing because, you know, um, it's just something that through my music, that God that does all the work and um, uses me uh, through my music to share his word, the gospel, uh, in my songs uh, for everyone and um, to whom God will to save, he will. And I just want to be that vessel that God continues to use for his glory to be faithful to his word and uh, utilizing um, um, my songs as I use scriptures. So when that song, Jesus is Coming Soon, first opens up on the first verse, that is a scripture taken from the King James, original King James Version of the Bible. Amen. 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 Now, there's a lot going on out in the world. You know, we know we can't, save everybody, but we try and touch as many hearts as we can, you know, through our voice, you know, what we do, what God, what he's given us. When, when, when will we see you, you know, on tour, on stage, on video? Any plans for that this year? Well, as far as video, definitely, hopefully soon. I can't say as, that, as far as when that is yet, but tour, hopefully, definitely soon. Um, you know, God... He knows the enemies from the beginning, and you never know what God has in store for you. This is why I just continue to pray that God lead and guide me to whatever he asks me to do. If it's right now, continue to just put out music, and he continues to touch the lives of people, then that's what I'll continue to do. But, of course, I would, you know, uh, and I'm working on eventually wanting to tour, you know, um, so and so for me more so that I can be able to reach my fans and see them face-to-face and be able to share, you know, what God's given me through songs you know, and be able to be live and up close because I know that means a lot to my fans to be able to perform live, and that's mm-hmm. what I'm desiring to do. Because I have fans mm-hmm. all over the world, you know, that do write to me and ask me, when are you coming to the U.K.? or when are you coming to Japan? or when are you come to uh, Australia, we want to see you. So, you know, I get these kind of emails sometimes, and it just really, you know, inspires me and pushes me more to keep going in hopes that I can, you know, I'll, you know get that worked out. That's right. That's right. They want to see you. Now, Angel, now, we know you got to start in church. Now, when you reach your, you know, your plateau where you are right now, the, you know, the big stage you're on now being, you know, international gospel star, is it possible for you to show up at church and pass and say, hey, come on up here and sing, Angel? <laughs> is that possible? Does that happen? Um, no, I mean, it hasn't as, as, as far for a while. Um, I'm just you know, I mean, there was, like, yeah, I was in San Diego and um, with my mom, and um, she wanted me to sing and things like that and, and, you know, share my gift to, to her friends and, and people there. So I was able to do so, and they were very, you know, happy. Mm-hmm. Um, this was off my Heart to Broken Love album. Um, this was back in um, December. So... Um, but I'm just looking to tour, you know, hopefully worldwide, you know, even if it's just starting off my native city area, you know, mm-hmm. and just be able to go wherever God allows to take me um, to go. Um, I just want him to lead and guide me, not me myself. Yeah, yeah. Now, we have, a, our audience is a lot bigger since the last time we spoke with you on, on Jerry Voice Live. Now, um, people want to know, you know, how did you get your start? You know, they they listening to you right now. You, you know, you're international. You have these beautiful songs out. Obviously, you have good support, you know, to get where you are today. You know, you kept you grounded. You keep the Lord first. Any advice or can you can you give our audience a little bit, you know, 
background on how you got started in the industry and before you got started in the gospel industry? Yeah, well, again, as my uh, you had read a little bit about my bio, since I was a little girl, I've always wanted to sing. That's just something I started doing since I was six years old. Um, I did a little talent show um, from the song called Our Love by Natalie Cole, and I came in second place, I believe. And um, I just always had this love and passion for singing. I started writing since I was 11 years old. I would write my little tune for God, and I would run to my mom and sing it to her, and she would share you know, uh, my talent to her friends, but she would have company and ask me to perform and sing for them, you know. So I kind of broke away from my shyness because she did that a lot. So I was able to sing a lot in front of people and not be shy. And so um, she pushed me further to, and then, you know, to encourage me to keep singing. And um, as I got older, I had, um, you know, embarked upon a career, you know, doing a lot of networking and just introducing myself to many people, you know, sending out P1 packages uh, with my bio picture and CD and um, just trying to do a lot of networking here in my uh, Bay Area and mm-hmm. meeting a lot of people. Um, I was able to uh, be blessed to um, perform at the Grammys pre-party four times. Um, this is a wonderful friend of mine. She uh, passed away, um, but her name was um, the late Bonnie Sweeney, and she will put on uh, the Grammys pre-party in Los Angeles. And she would always ask me, she said, if I have you to perform, you know you've got to perform my favorite song. And when her favorite song was Celine Dion, my heart will go on. So every wow. time I perform, I would open up with that song first, and then mm-hmm. I would perform one of my songs um, at the Grand Week Party. And so I was blessed to do it four times, four different years, and um, open up for many other people like Howard Hewitt, you know, and um, uh, perform where Eight Town was there, and The Whispers, and... I just met so many great, wonderful, you know, celebrity um, performers. And um, this was before I even got my start. I was just doing a lot of networking and trying to find myself and, you know, putting out demos, constantly performing and recording studios. And it wasn't until around 1997 when I uh, met uh, someone who was a producer, songwriter uh, himself. And he's the one that kind of started me and gave gave me my big break and uh, started his own label, Pitmobile Records, and um, um, we went to Atlanta, Georgia. And at the time, Ichiban Records was around in, in Atlanta, and they um, fell in love with my, um, my music, and he wanted to put out a single on me, which was called She Was Never Her, um, but Ichiban wanted an album. So um, I had already had a lot of songs I'd never published, but, you know, fresh new songs I just recorded, so we put it together and recorded a few more songs to put the album called Introducing Angel, which was released in 1998 from um, Pitmobile slash Ichiban Records. Um, the following year, um, we were going to release a second single off that album, which was called um, You Missed a Good Thing. That was a song originally that I wrote, and they had voted, and um, I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> we were about to release, I was you know, getting excited, but um, we just continued to perform, I mean, actually uh, record a new album, and um, we used their studio in Atlanta, and um, we shopped it to various labels at the time. And then he went to Fantasy Records out of Berkeley, California, and they reactivated a label, old school label called Vote, uh, mm-hmm. Tax Vote Records. And they actually, they had signed a lot of the um, old school, uh, legendary, great, awesome recording artists, which is uh, Lenny Williams and Brenda Holloway, Frida Payne, and Dramatics and William Hart of the Dale Phonics and L.J. Reynolds um, of, of the Dramatics, and um, I can't remember everybody else, but um, and I was one of the new artists, and me and this other young lady um, from Atlanta. So uh, I was able to perform on their album, doing back vocals on their album. Oh, sorry, the Mighty Dales, can't forget them. Mm-hmm. And um, so I was able to meet them and just really down there, with, you know, became friends and just, you know, great teams and just working together and recording. And we did this single call at Brand New Start, which was mm-hmm. a duet with me and Lenny Williams, Brenda Holloway, and William Hart of the Delphonics. And we were going to release that. Um, we did release it, actually, on the folk records. We were going to actually perform it on Oprah Winfrey show. She heard the single and she loved it. And she wow. it on her show, you know. Um, um, and I was all ecstatic, excited, excited about it. But, you know, God knows, and, it, you know, it didn't work out, but, you know, the single did come out, and, um, yeah, 
So um, just kept promoting and pushing the, the Love Right album, the big buzz created with, you know, all around the, the uh, United States and, and mm -hmm. Japan about Angel Sessions and my first album and my second album. Um, but just a lot of pro, uh, 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 protocols and a lot of politics and just things that just didn't go the way I, it would have it could have went, but God knows and he, you know, works the way he works and he does things best for, you know, uh, what he knows best. And so um, he led me from, from that point to in 2005, um, put it on my heart to just start doing gospel music. And that's where I decided to just continue to do that, which was my passion since a child. And um, haven't looked back as far as that's concerned and continue to write my songs and, you know, arrange and continue to just move forward and just, you know, stay indie and um, just, you know, focusing on what God has done. And since then, I've came out with about seven, you know, urban gospel music. And yeah. very happy about all that and just great things that's coming out of it. And it continues to grow and continue to meet great people that God's blessed and brought into my life to help me along the way because I believe in this. You can't do it by yourself. So that's he's right, really right. guided me and blessed me with some wonderful people that have, you know, came into my life, you know, uh, like, you know, Kelly Lee of Artists United, and it was a great blessing um, to me um, because of her passion uh, for the independent artist um, to, that you can do it, you know, even if right. because you're not major doesn't mean you can't do it, you know, because social media is a big, big, broad internet where you can really yeah, do it. Is. And big even world. Though, yeah. yeah and, and even though there's a lot of music already out there and sometimes like you get oversaturated, it's just a way of knowing how to market and knowing how to really get your music out there. If your music's good, it will be heard. And that's the main thing, to making sure that it sounds polished and, 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 and clear and clean and, 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 and positive, you know, and radio-ready and um, commercial. And um, the fans know what they like. And even if that's my right. music may not be for everyone, it's for someone out there. That's and right. So that's right. For that individual, this is why I do what I do. That's right. You're doing a good job, man. We see you out there staying proud. Good role model for the young people also, by the way. Want to throw that in there. Now, now your bio is so interesting. It's, it reads just like a story. Um, you had an opportunity to, to work with the great Maurice, of, Maurice White of Earth, Wind, and Fire, my dad's favorite group. Um, what was it like working with Maurice on that project? Anybody, well, really you know, wonderful, actually. He's, he's a very down earth person, very down earth, and he was like, uh, you know, I'm not puffing myself up. I'm just going by what I remember and what he said that he was astonished with my vocals because I love doing. If you listen to all my songs, you know I'm I do all my own harmony, mm -hmm. and um, he loved my vocals. He loved my harmonies, and that's what he needed me for. He needed me to do some backup for these two songs that he was working on for the Earth Wind and Fire album, new album at that time, and so he hired me. Um, to do two songs, to do backup and harmony, things like that, and he loved it. He said, well, yeah, you, you know, I would, I'd like to keep using you, you know, and um, for my next project, you know, so I said, well, that'll be great, you know, mm -hmm. and um, he ended up using those two songs actually on the Stylistics album from 2010. And wow. also, um, Paint It in the Sky, if you hear that song, Paint It in the Sky by the Stylistics, that's my vocals in the background. Yeah, I got to look that one up, Paint in the Sky. And the, and the name of that album was, was that... It's a stylistic. Just look for the song. I don't know that. I can't remember the album uh, name. I just know the mm -hmm. single's called Painted in the Sky. Okay, yeah, we can look that up. All right, you had an opportunity also to write a song for a big star, two big stars, at least in the African American community, <laughs> Jamie Foxx and Nia Long. What was it like working on that project? That song was titled Inconvenience. Was that the title? It, it, it was not their project, actually. It was a movie. It was a movie called, um, it was originally called Inconvenience. Mm -hmm. But they changed the title. Trimark Pictures, I was in Los Angeles, and Trimark Pictures um, hired me. They said they wanted me uh, to do the theme song for the movie Inconvenience, starring Jamie Foxx and Nia Long. And mm -hmm. so I flew to... Uh, New Jersey, and I worked with Tony Camillo, I think his name. He wrote, he wrote that song, Midnight Train to Georgia, with, um, um, what's it? Midnight Train, uh, um, Gladys Knight. Um, Gladys Knight, that's right, Gladys yeah, Knight. Yeah, he wrote that song for her, and he, I mean, he's a great, I mean, he's a Grammy, you know, award-winning songwriter, oh, yeah. and, um, 
he's on a lot of great songs, a lot of Dionne Ward and a lot of people he's worked with. So he wrote yeah. the song, Ink and Dance, on mm. my album. And, um, oh. and right at the last minute, they changed the title to Held Up. So the movie's uh. out, it, you can see it online, but, and so, I, you know, that, so the song was not able to be used because they changed the title. Even though when you hear the, the, watch the movie, that song Ink and Dance would have been perfect, I think, for that mm. movie, but they wanted the title to be Held Up instead of Ink and Dance. But I was able oh. to go to, go to the movie premiere and um, meet Jamie Foxx in the cast. Yeah, that was awesome. That's awesome. All right, we're talking to Angel Sessions. She's been in the industry for a while, and we want to know the secret to holding up in the industry, the, the one that we know so well, the big-time music industry. Now, Angel, a lot of people don't don't last that long um, in the industry, and, and I guess it's because they, they're they not moving along with the time or the, the labels just don't feel like and you want to carry them pay them the money they used to making or do some of the, I say some of the people just decide to go indie, work on their own projects. So that's something they probably always wanted to do, do it their way. So we're going to just get your opinion on that when we come back. So we're going to take a quick break. All right. And we'll get your, your opinion on that one. All right. I'll tell you. Okay. All right. Hi, I am Arthur Crystal Alexis, and I'm on Positive Power 21 with Jerry Roy Slides. Woohoo! Are you an avid reader of urban fiction, looking for drama, suspense, and more? We to our publishing is dedicated to bringing the world's best literature to our readers. Urban fiction, erotica, sci-fi, mainstream fiction, and children's literature are just some of the genres produced by our diversified family of authors. You can reach us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at our website, www.weeswellpublishing.com. What do you give to a person who has everything? Hi, I'm Darlene Rucker Williams, and I am the owner of Stylish and Stellar Gifts by Dar. I get this question all of the time. At Stylish and Stellar Gifts by Dar, we specialize in customizing gifts for people and pets too. Our gifts are original and one of a kind. Not only do we deliver, we ship as well. We work according to your budget and your things. We have gifts for all things, including baby showers, sports teams, get well, bridal, birthdays, pets, just because, and that's just the name of you. So let's stylish and sell a gift by Dar. Take the worry out of your gift giving today and also for the holidays. Our website is www.stylishandseller.com and our phone number is 443-682-5664. Positive Power 21.org Internet Radio You are listening All right. to Positive Power 21.org with Jerry Royce. All right. Thank you, family. That's right. Family all over the Maryland Eastern Shore, Washington, D.C., they listening to us. They want to know who's the writer of Get Up, because they love that song, too. That's from Hearts of a Broken Love, Angel Sessions, gospel, urban gospel recording artist. Brand new single out, Jesus Coming Soon. Songs of a Comfort is on its way. I can't wait. Whoo, Angel, so how have you been able to hold up? You have 18 years in the industry. A lot of them don't make it that long. You, you know, you hear about the greats. It is falling by the wayside. Mm. Tell us the secret, Angel. How you do it? How did you do it? Uh, it's no real secret. It's just about the passion, you know, the person has to have and what they do. Um, it's just about something. Some people don't do it always for their passion and love of music. They do it maybe because it's just a money thing or, you know, at the time it's just what they thought they wanted. It just depends on the individual, but I think mm. that... It's all up to the individual. If you're in it for the right reasons, if you're in it for the love of music, the love of the people that you share your music with, um, you can continue to do it because if you give up, you never know 
how it's going to end. It won't, it won't go anywhere because you've given up, so you will never know. That's right. Now, Angel, you know how sometimes you read about these guys that, you know, they're pastors, bishops, uh, deacons, and they'll tell that story how they, were, they, were, they, were, they heard God calling them, but they just weren't listening. They didn't want to give up the streets. They didn't want to give up that lifestyle they were living, you know, the preacher's word. They just kept resisting them until things went bad, and they had no choice. And then they finally gave in and said, let me go help God and his people. And they, then they, you know, got into the ministry. Now, you, you, you were out there before in the R&B on the music side, and you decided that, you know, it wasn't for you anymore. And you decided to do gospel, and you just love it. You got the passion for it. You know, you hear about some of these greats, you know, they used to sing in the church, then they went on and got big contracts. And um, you don't even hear about them anymore. I just wondered, you know, wonder what would happen if they decided to return to the, their gospel roots and start singing for the Lord again. You know, you think that was a blessing for you, you know, working for God uh, again? I do know that God has to be the one to draw you. You can't do it yourself. There's nothing we can do in ourselves. God's already said that through his word that uh, without me you can do nothing. So God has to be the one to plant that seed in that person's heart. He has to be the one to save that person. He truly has saved you, you know, when you have an intense desire to do his will, you know, uh, uh, to be obedient is to be, you know, to keep his commandments, which is the whole Bible. And when that, you will not give up. You can't give up because God is the one who's taking control of your life, and he's the one who works in your heart, both the will and do of, of, of his good pleasure. So it's always going to be about God because it's not ever about us. If we do it on our own strength or, or on our own self-righteousness and we're thinking we're doing it, you know, by God and we fall by the wayside and we keep doing it and we keep falling, then we have to reexamine ourselves Are we really saved, mm-hmm. you know. Right. And so salvation is of the Lord. It's not of ourselves. It's nothing we can do to get ourselves saved. God has to be the one right. to do it for it. He's already done the work before the, before the foundation of the world. So at that point in time, before that person dies on this earth, God will apply the word to his heart, to that person's heart, you know, mm-hmm. and only God knows when that happens, but they know they'll have a, a new, you know, a new heart and a new spirit, and they'll know that their life will be completely different. Mm-hmm. You know, they won't have the desire to continue to do the same things they've been doing. They won't have a desire to say, well, yeah, I backslid, but there's no such thing as backsliding when God saved you. God doesn't work like that. That's right. Amen. Powerful, powerful. All right. Now, you've been um, seen in some... Big time magazines. You um, you're the new one that's out. Artists United magazine. Kelly Lee, brand new. Yeah. She featured you in that. What was that project like for you? Working yeah, that her. was awesome. She had uh, re- uh, released her her awesome magazine on um, October of last year, 2014, um, featuring the awesome Erica Kane. She was the first young lady uh, on it. Uh, she's an awesome R&B singer herself. Um, many people know her music. And um, she blessed me to feature me in November uh, on the Artist United magazine. And I was totally honored, totally honored for that. Um, and so, yeah, that was just an awesome magazine. And then um, there were others um, that was on that God was in with, with like um, um, Say What News magazine, a wonderful magazine that God was in with, with Renette Brown. She's the CEO mm-hmm. owner of Say What News. Um, that was back in 2012, actually. And... Mm-hmm. Um, and then she featured me again in 2013 when I came out with the You Send Me Higher album. Um, she did a review on that one. And um, then the latest album, the latest uh, magazine I was on was called, um, um, was it called? Encore. Encore. Encore, yeah. Hair and fashion magazine featuring um, um, Lisa Rachel was on the front cover of that magazine mm. that just came out January of this year. So yeah. I am in that one. All right. Now, you have you have a great look, great look, real fashionable. How important was was image? You know, especially being introduced in these magazines because they seem like, you know, these these magazines are about the glam. You know, perfect image. Is that tough? You know, being in the industry trying to keep it up twenty four seven. You know, is that hard? Um, no, because I'm not trying to be a follower, actually. I just wanted to continue to allow God to use me. And um, I just do what I have been doing for a long time, which I believe it is important um, uh, when you uh, have, you know, show yourself to be professional, 
you know, mm-hmm. keeping up with um, your website, updating it constantly, keeping current information on there for your fans, and anyone that want to know anything about you. Your image is very important, your album cover, your CD cover, your, your pictures, profile, your, your photos. You know, it's very important because if you look sloppy, your music, the people are going to make your music sound sloppy, you know. Mm-hmm. So you got to be very, you know, careful and very, if you're a sincere artist, of course, you know, you're going to want to look like most of the majors. You don't see them with sloppy albums and, and it looks like amateur looking, you know, it's very professionally <laughs> done. So um, mm-hmm. if you as, as an artist have to remain, you know, doing the same because you want your fans to take you serious. That's right. That's right. So, so Angel, where did, where did you learn all your business savvy? You know, in the beginning. I mean, how? Did, I mean, where where were you in the beginning? And where are you now when it comes to making business decisions? And who's helping you out with that? Uh, so the grace of God is helping me out with that with that a lot, of course. You know, and then of course with with the help of uh, Kelly Lee, Artists United, and then of course my husband. Um, but I, I make a lot of decisions also of my own because I've been in doing it for so long. And I had to learn, you know, a lot of the business side in order to take care of my business when it comes to making sure, you know, with my BMI account, you know, mm-hmm. uh, publishing the royalties and making sure I register my music and things like that. So when I'm coming out with a new album, everything is, is all taken care of. It's not just throwing your music out on iTunes expecting it to just sit there and, and people are going to go buy. You really have to market that. You really have to That's continue right. to push and market and promote so that people can know that you're out there and that, you know, and make yourself visible on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, right. um, if you mm-hmm. do, you know, uh, be on blogs and have other people to talk about you, you know, and mm-hmm. share your, your, your news where other people be excited for you as well as you're excited for yourself. Um, so I learned a lot of these things as I'm out there doing a lot um, uh, and along with uh, my team that's working with me. And um, I think that's, you know, very important. You should, you know, always learn the business and not just sit back and do nothing but be the artist. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think it's cool to you know, to be lazy, you have to learn to say, no, you know, it's going to take hard work. You know, nothing happens overnight, you know, but it's not about the quick, get, get, get rich quick, you know, kind of thing, you know, mm-hmm. but you keep grinding, you keep working, you keep pushing, you know, and it will happen eventually. Well, willing, you just keep, you know, believing in yourself because if you have what it takes, others will see it. That's right. But you have so to get it out there in front of them. That's right. Now, how was, how, how was, um, you know, how important is management to an indiv- to an artist? How important is that? Good management. I think for for, for new artists, that, that management could be important because new artists don't may, may know much about the business. They don't know where to go. They just do music in studios. They want to get heard. They want to be out there. Um, they want to perform. They want to sing. You know, they want to do a lot of great things. But if they don't know the business side, then of course they should need have someone that's going to guide them. So that they're not all over the map and just doing things backwards or doing things that they don't know what they're doing. But, you know, because of the, the industry that has changed a lot, you know, in today's um, market, some don't need managers. You know, I think it's good to always have someone to guide you because even with me, you know, I don't think, think that I know everything because I don't. Just because I've been in the business for a very long time, the industry is constantly changing. You know, there's constantly new things that are online, constantly new things that are happening. To keep yourself current, to keep yourself going, you need to learn about all these new things to keep yourself, you know, going so that um, you can not only help what, what you're trying to do, but perhaps share that knowledge with someone else, you know, to keep going because the industry is always changing. It's always been like that even before social media began, you know, so it's always good to, keep, you know, keep yourself, you know, grounded. And I think as, you know, with today's change of social media, if you are an advanced artist, you know, and you know an awful lot about, you know, what you need to do with marketing, promotion, things like that, you may necessarily not need a manager. But then, again, you may want one because you can't do everything. And it just has a lot of hats to wear. You may want eventually someone to take over and say, I just want to be the creative person, and I want someone to take over my business side, and that's fine too. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. And making, now, who's, who decides on your, on your different looks? Because all your pictures look great, your poses, I think everything has to be perfect when you're, especially on the internet, because it moves so fast. How important was your look for the internet? Well, as always, since the beginning of time when I first started this industry, it was always important to me, you know, um, having that image as well as performing and things like that. It all goes hand in hand, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to take care of yourself. You want, you know, you want to look the part, you know. Again, it's not like that's the, 
the image and then that's it. But image is everything. You just look like you don't care about yourself and you look sloppy and toe up and, and you just wear anything and, and you just take a picture like a selfie picture and you stick it on an album cover and call it a, a CD. You know, that, that's mm-hmm. not going to look right for someone you want to buy your music. And they buy that even if it's download. I mean, it just looks like you don't care, so why should they care? That's right. That is true. <laughs> now, how about as far as like um, skincare, eating right? Are you really in, in, in tune with those kind of things? I am. I am. I, I definitely, you know, I mean, I don't always eat right and healthy foods all the time, of course, but I do try to maintain, you know, uh, watching what I eat and exercising and keeping myself fit, you know, so that um, I can last as long as I can, look willing, you know, and um, be able to have that um, energy so when I'm performing on stage or whatever that, you know, I can have that energy, you know, so I do definitely try to keep myself in shape. That's right. Now, what is a typical morning like for Angel Sessions? A typical morning? Yeah, um, I always media. just... Yeah, well, it's, 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 every day is kind of different. It just depends. You know, some days I'm more busy, busier than others, you know, but always making sure that I'm up and on that computer and doing what I have to do, you know, and keeping um, my fans uh, updated about whatever is going on or, you know, making sure that I'm on time with my interviews or answering calls, you know, or, you know, maybe at times I have to take the break and go out and go for a walk, you know, to, to keep that going and, you know, but most of all, just making sure that I'm not all over the map where I forget about God, you know. Um, think about him at all times and make sure you and you pray. Don't, don't forget to take time to pray, you know, That's and thank right. the Lord and just, you know, meditate on him. You know, don't get so caught up that you forget about him. You know, I can remind right. myself to do that all the time because it it's easy to be done if, you, if you're so caught up. Yeah, you hop right out of bed and forget to jump on your knees. You know, she was like, oh, my God, where am I going with this? You know, now, th- and this question is for you, Angel. Then we're going to take a quick break. Big, big question. Work-life balance. Is it balance? Balance? Is it balance? Yes. Is your work and life balance? Yes, always with the help of God. I, I, again, I say I can't do anything without him. I depend on God for every single thing. Everything. I can't do not one thing without him. It's an impossibility. You know, I, I, I lean on him. He's, he's my father. And, I, and, and and as you can say, I'm a needy person. I need him. I need him every hour. I need him every second. You know, to guide me, to guide me to think right, to guide me to do right, to guide me to make the right decisions, you know, to guide me to say the right thing, to guide me to say the right thing, at the, at, you know, uh, with someone who may be tweeting me and, 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 and what how, how should I respond, you know, uh, a word of encouragement. You know, to say something because you never know what that person might be going through. And, yeah, that's you know, right. and, and you want to say the right thing. You don't want to say the wrong thing. You don't want to get so caught up about yourself that you forget about others out there. You know, it's mm-hmm. not about me. So, um, just remaining balanced, you know, that's just thinking about that um, this is not for me and I'm not here for me. It's just for God's glory. So, you know, if I keep that in mind that it's not me, it's Him, you know, that's where the joy comes in. That's where the joy comes from to keep me going. That's right. Now, that was a good message because, you know, when you get caught up in your passion and, you know, you're really driving because you know where you're trying to be, because I always try to set little pinpoint, little goals, to tr- you know, and then you always want to, you know, throw them at somebody, see how it sounds to them, but then you find yourself that you're monopolizing the conversation all the time. It's always about you, and sometimes you forget to ask them how was their day, you know, what are they up to right now. It's like... You know, it's not a lot of time in a day, and with the speed of the internet, you sometimes you say, "Oh my God, did I call mom yet? Did did did, she, did I give her fifteen minutes? Or should I time her?" Or, you know, you find yourself being on a timetable all the time. Do you find that to be kind of difficult sometimes? Just you know, trying to work in little things like saying hi to a best friend, see how they doing. If I, you know, it's like about your album or your tour. Is it, have you learned from that? Yeah, well, mm-hmm. first of all, I wanted, when you met your mom, I wanted to say shout out to my mom, my darling mom. Yeah. Today's her birthday, so happy birthday, all mom. Right. You all know, right. so, um, yeah, definitely want to make sure that I stay grounded, you know, and, and stay humble because um, just like God's word says, pride comes before destruction and haughtiness before it falls. So I never want to be prideful in anything. You know, this gift God's given me can, can easily take it away, you know, so it's not about me, you know, and stay grounded and, and always think. Always, I'm grateful. God 
only knows to uh, my fans, you know, uh, mm. my fans who are so supportive, just people that just, you know, the tweet, you know, that they tweet me or the, or the my fans on Facebook or wherever, or they, they email me from, you know, different other sites like Number One Music or wherever it is, you know, and all my supporters, I am so grateful for them and just, you know, happy when I hear from them and the wonderful, loving things that they say. And they really, they don't know me at all, you know, but it's the music that they hear that moves their heart. And, and, and I'm just rejoicing in my heart when they, when I hear from them, it just makes me so happy. That's right. Yeah. Very clean style, awesome image, beautiful, beautiful message. I think people are just um, drawn to you, you know. All right. We're going to take a quick break. So when we come back, Angel, we're going to get your, your final thoughts to our audience. And, and before you go, I want to say, say this, that, that you're an awesome role model, not just for young ladies, but for people that's young in business like myself. You know, I've been in it for a while, but we, it's another phase of it now. And I think you are one of the trendsetters, one of the game changers, somebody to watch, somebody to learn from. You're just like a, just like a billboard, a video, you know, somebody to look at and just say, hey, this is the way you're supposed to do it right. And that first means give God the glory and, and give it all to him, and, and he, will, he, will, he will guide you. That's, that's a powerful message that you gave today on that, and I thank you for all of that. All right. You're we're talking to Angel. <laughs> thank you. We're talking to Angel Session. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back and give her final thoughts. This is Jerry Voice Live Worldwide. Are you an author looking for promotional services or a reader looking for a great read at low prices? In this competitive world of books, Fighting Royalty Promotions is dedicated to bringing authors and readers together to build a greater respect for literature through our various promotional services and online bookstore. So head over to writingroyaltypromotions.com and check us out. All right. Thank you, Leisha Sandler. That was Leisha. Thank you, Leisha promoter out out east you know she's in atlanta right now anyway we appreciate her her help all right we're talking to angel sessions man i love that song get up can't wait to get into songs of comfort can't wait for that to be dropped jesus coming soon is out there now download it guys that's right cd baby itunes amazon.com is anywhere else they need to know where to get it at angel I um, uh, just want to let everyone, again, if you want more information, um, you can always visit my website at www.angelsessions.com. Um, you can go there, and then up there you can click on that contact if you need uh, to contact for any info. And um, just stay up to date, and I will keep you informed on all that I uh, have coming up this year. And thank you for all those who are supported by my single, Jesus is Coming Soon, uh, anyone who bought any of my music. And look forward to Songs of Comfort, which will be released sometime in March, towards the end of March. And I'm just looking forward to that. And definitely again, for Lord willing, touring soon, because I, you know, I just feel in my heart that Lord willing, that's going to happen, you know. But I'm just working at it and with my team, and I'm just grateful for that. So um, I just want to say thank you and shout out uh, to um, always my loving husband, and Demetrius. Shout out to... Kelly Lee of Artists United. Um, shout out to um, all the producers of Songs of Comfort, which I would like to name, which would be Franz H., um, Freddie White, Patrick Joseph, a.k.a. Beat Abuza, uh, Antonia Tizan Street. He's actually a platinum producer. He's worked with so many major great artists. Um, and Andre Rivers. He is the one who actually um, mastered my album. And... Um, to um, Jerry Ross Live, uh, to yeah, yeah. Lady T and her husband, and to um, uh, Faces of Success Radio, um, and to Dao, um, my PR, and to um, all of my fans from all Thank around you. the world. I love you. And anyone I left out, please forgive me. Um, but I am grateful to everyone, and God is awesome. And most of all, <laughs> forgive me, Lord, <laughs> my heavenly Father, because He should have been first. I should have said that. <laughs> um, without Him, I'm, I couldn't even be here doing this. So always go mm-hmm. my heavenly Father, my awesome, loving Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because He is an awesome God. That's right. Amen. Amen. And don't forget about the great state of Maryland. 
that's been supporting Angel Sessions. They're here all the time. That's right. Me supporting you. All right, Angel. One thing I want to know, can we still get some of your previous albums, you know, like you send me higher, you know, your EP, Absolutely. If You Love Me? Okay. Uh, oh, yes, okay. definitely. They're all on Amazon, iTunes, CD Baby, and Google Play, and all online stores where music is sold on all music. And um, so, um, yeah, and then, of course, I have an Amazon store where you, when you type up Angel Sessions uh, Amazon, you'll have all that on um, in my store on Amazon. So definitely you can still get all of my previous albums out there, including the very first Introducing Angel and um, Love Right. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad I, I said something about that because I was just wondering, because I know you release a whole bunch of albums, and I'm wondering, you know, are they still available for download, which they are they in definitely. your store. Yeah. yeah, you never mm-hmm. told us you had a store. Angel Session has a store, y'all. She never told us that. <laughs> All right, now we know. Now we know. All right, so I'm not stuck with just waiting for songs of conference. So if I want some new stuff, I go out there to her store. And don't forget about her website, angelsessions.com. All right, and she has videos, songs, photos, news and events, bookings, all those good things out there. Her bio, you can read her bio, magazine reviews. And that's something I always love doing is reading um, magazine reviews and um, in the articles. So she is available. Um, look up Encore, HD, Hair Magazine, Artists United Magazine, Say What News Online Magazine, and Top Cat Online. So those are some of the magazines you can catch up and really get a chance to get to know Andrew because I know I didn't ask her all the questions you probably want to hear, but you can check out those publications online and find out more and more and more about Angel Sessions. All right, our Angel. We appreciate you, Angel. Thank you so much for coming on my show. Well, thank you so much, Jerry, for having me. It's always a pleasure. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, thank you so much for your patience today. You're simply awesome. And um, we wish Songs of Comfort the best, and we hope you come to the to the Maryland, D.C. area to perform. I hope we, oh, wow, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, we'll That would be. be awesome. Yeah, they know you out here. So, you you know, see if your management team can make that happen. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, like I always say, if you want to hear the good stuff, I mean the real good stuff, you got to listen to Joy Rush Live on PositivePower21.org because I just finished revising the website. The team was working on it. It looks good. We agreed to something. We got it going. Also, you'll see Angel Sessions on there. That's right. So you won't forget that she was just on this interview. So it's out there on demand. Also, on Spreaker.com forward slash PositivePower21. You can listen to her 24-7, anytime, anywhere, on your smartphone, PC, laptop, and tablets. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jerry Bush Live Worldwide. Have an awesome week, all week long. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to Jerry Bush Live on PositivePower21.org and Spreaker.com forward slash PositivePower21. This is a Bush Enterprises production. And don't forget about replay on Facebook.com forward slash Jerry Voice Live. It's Indian. Uh, all right, oh. everybody. Have you been hurt? Been hurt. Been back, back babe. babe. Got a talking back to you. Talking back. Cause you're not alone. No, no. Escaping to another reality. reality. Through Dominic Wilkins' good book. Good books, audio books, paperback, ebook, good books. Available on author D. Wilkins, goodbooks.com. Are you looking for a great book of poetry that is romantic, heartfelt, and full of male emotion? Then get Thoughts, Love, and Reflections by James K. Deshay. That's D-E-S-H-A-Y. Go to www.jamesdeshay.com. You will enjoy Thoughts, Love, and Reflections. Good evening. You're listening to Bianca Harrison, author of Love and War, I'm listening to Jerry Ross Live Worldwide, Positive Power 21. Positive Power 21.org, Internet Radio. You are listening to Positive Power 21.org with Jerry Royce.
You are listening to PositivePower21.org with Jerry Royce. What up? It's your boy, Kano Kingston. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. Hey, this is Pat. Hi, I'm Teresa Powell. Hi, Jerry. This is Iowa Sandro Carter. Hi, this is Phil Powers. Hello, this is Chris Bobby with Jerry Royce Live. Hi, I'm Phil LeBurn. I'm live on the Jerry Royce Show. Hi, what are you doing? Boy, who's the same? Peace, this is Dolly, the poet, spoken word artist. Hello, this is Lamar Marquis with Jerry Worth Live. All right, all right, everyone. we got Robin Lynn, and I'm keeping it live right now on Jerry Royce Live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's up? This is a war-winning podcast with the greatest podcast on earth. Thank you for stopping by. I'm your host, Jerry Royce Live Worldwide on Internet Radio where you get your positive on. So when it's all positive, it's all power. That's positive power. This is a worldwide podcast for growth, wealth, and success. Thank you. Think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Think again. Set in the green hills of western New Jersey inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company where decisions are worth billions of dollars and human lives worth less. Nicholas Harding, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career, family, and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse, a suspense thriller novel by Bill Powers, published by Donna Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com or DonnaInc.org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. Are you looking for the next great read? A book filled with love, passion, betrayal, and intrigue. The award-winning novel, Season of Change, by Tamika Patrice Kane is sure to satisfy your literary sweet tooth. Check out this must-read book reviewers are calling uplifting and emotional and exceptionally great read, deeply intense and thought-provoking. Order your copy today, available in paperback, and ebook on Amazon.com or at www.tamikapatrice.com. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. On February 23rd, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, I will be live on Jerry Rose Live Radio. I will be discussing my new album, my new single coming in February. Stay tuned and we'll see you there. This is a Jerry Ruiz Live Worldwide presentation for PositivePower21.org radio network and podcast. On Spreaker.com forward slash Positive Power 21. The anticipated new interracial novel by Bianca Harrison. Starting out writing short stories, Bianca decided to write her first novel two years ago. After writing on and off, Bianca knew it was time to complete what she had started. In a six-month time period, not only was her first novel completed, but her second novel was birthed as well. With great imagination, creativity, and faith, Bianca's hobby became a profession in 2013. Bianca is the author of Someone to Call My Own. Born and raised in South Georgia, she currently resides in North Georgia with her family. She has a Bachelor of Human Resource Management degree in Business Administration. For more information, visit her website at authorbiancaharrison.com. Available at amazon.com. And the books are sold online. Love and War is a provocative interracial story of deceit, love, hope, and commitment, and heartache as a love affair threatens a marriage and silence hides a secret as a life hangs in the balance. Ava and Ryan are the ideal couple. They share two children together and seem like a perfect family. Ava is a successful best-selling author who lives her life putting her family first. She's a diva with expensive taste. Ava is so busy enjoying her wonderful life that she dismissed signs that result in her being diagnosed with a terminal illness. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you Bianca Harrison at authorbiancaharrison.com. I hope you enjoy this presentation.
Hey, hey, thank you everybody for joining us and welcome to Positive Power 21.org. I am Jerry Voice Live and we streaming, y'all. That's right, we streaming tonight with Bianca Harrison. That's right, we so excited to have her on here. Woo, she is here finally. That's right. The next voice you hear will be Bianca Harrison. Hold tight for this presentation. Hi, I am Arthur Crystal Alexis, and I'm on Positive Power 21 with Jerry Roy Slides. Woohoo! Hey, hey, what's up, Bianca? How you doing? Hey, Jerry, how are you? Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So awesome. The right of love and war. What's going yeah. on? Nothing. I was taking Nothing. it day by day. <laughs> That's right. Taking care of the family, right? Taking yeah. Care of the family. That's right. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Well, you ready for the first question? I am. All right. And the first question is, who is Bianca, the author? Who is Bianca, the author? Bianca is uh, educated. She's an educated lady. She's a family oriented lady. I have three kids. I'm married, and I am also a writer and an author and an artist. Mm, artist. <laughs> so all that comes with the package. Wow. Besides, I still work my day-to-day job, so that comes with it, too. But I managed to get everything done. Mm, awesome, awesome. Now, it's, it's unusual that, you know, someone is packaged that way. You know, they can write and create artistry. Now, how is that possible? Now, I've been in a major where there was frustration, drinking, it, and partying. Yeah. So they couldn't handle it. They was about to bail. They failed. And how did, how did well, you get through that? I, well, I mean, if it's something you're passionate about, you get, you'll find a way to get it done. It's just like with anything else. I use my phone for everything, my smartphone. So anytime or anywhere I'm at, if I have some time, I write from my phone and I transform it to my um, computer once I get home. Other than that, I mean, my phone is my best friend. That's how I write. I don't do any typing. I do everything on my phone and transform it. So oh, I, I get it done. I, have, I, I do everything like that. So I have time. Huh. So you dictate it to your phone? Mm-hmm. I do everything through my phone. Wow, so sometimes this can be a little awful. smart. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say, that thing can get kind of crazy sometimes. I, I didn't it, say that. Yeah, but, <laughs> But it, it works for me. Some people can't do that. They have to be at a computer type, and I don't have to type only when mm. I'm doing corrections and stuff like that and when I'm, you know, transforming it to my Word document. Other than that, I mean, I found a way to get it done. Wow. You're going to be getting to a lot of publications. Mm. <laughs> I know. Some people are like, how do you work, have a family, raise three kids, have a newborn, and still write? I mean, if you're passionate about your craft and that's what you mm-hmm. want to do, you'll find a way to get it done. That's right. There's no yeah. excuses. Yeah. No excuses. <laughs> yeah, because I heard, I heard when you're married and you have three kids, when, when you're at work, that's kind of like your break. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, exactly. Time. When you're at work, I mean, you have your break and your lunch break, and you can sit and relax for a minute. You can mm-hmm. think clearly. And when the kids are asleep, that's your time to write. That's right. That's right. All right. Good for you. Good for you now. All right, let's let's hear a little bit about your background. Tell us, you know, how did you grow up? You know, what was oh. middle school and high school like? Um, high school, middle school was good. I was um a little popular little kid in high school. Um, you know, homecoming court and all that, but I did play sports, um, softball. Mm-hmm. Um, I came up with good grades, um, went to college, I finished. Um, I master I mean did my bachelor's degree in human resource management, um, mm-hmm. worked full time an account specialist and here I am. Yeah, you know, and I'm yeah. I'm not even doing anything in my background when I went to school for I'm writing, I'm an author. So. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so, so do you have any <laughs> and how about you how how about your siblings? Did did you have anybody to play with when you were growing up? Yes, I have a sister and I have um my sister's two years younger than me, and I have a brother who's ten years younger than me. So, so now that's see, age different. So, so you skipped all through them. You did your presentation like in twenty seconds, and you didn't even <laughs> mention your brother, sister, mother, father, grandmother, nobody. Oh, I'm where so you grew sorry. up at? Really, know where you grew up at? So for you know, well, you, you said know, South well, Georgia. South, you said South Georgia. Georgia. That could be anywhere. Well, what's yeah, South, what's South know, Georgia? 
South Georgia is a little town of Griffin, Georgia. That's south of Atlanta. Okay. And right now, I currently live north of Atlanta in Gainesville, Georgia. So I went mm, from south yeah. to north. And, yeah, it's, it's cold up here where I'm at right now. So, But I was born and raised in Georgia, you know, a little country mm-hmm. town, Bowden County, Griffin, Georgia. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but Atlanta is right there in the center of it all. Yeah, I've been, yeah, we've been to Atlanta and Buckhead and, you know, mm-hmm. where the money at, where the people who... Yeah, you know, where the money at, where you do. Yeah, <laughs> where the Lear Jets at. People park Lear Jets in their backyard and got golf courses and stuff. Just like a little small Beverly Hill and Buckhead. <laughs> yeah, I heard, you know, um, you know, that's Hollywood, you know, moved out to Atlanta now, you know. That's yeah, all the they reality need to get shows. down there. Exactly. Yeah, we, yeah, we see your little reality shows. We see what's yeah. going on. A little Richie <laughs> restaurant. Wise and stuff, yeah. Huh. I guess oh, that's dressed up. Yeah, that's what we need to get to, but, you know, we, we're doing what we're supposed to do. So that's right. To get so where we need you, to go. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Now, would you say North Georgia, you know, it's kind of like moving on up like the Jeffersons, you know, would Well, say? I'm not going to say well, moving on up, but for me it's moving on up. I actually, well, when, when I was in school, I knew I didn't want to stay in Griffin, Georgia, so I want mm. to – um you know, move a little from there. So North Georgia to me is okay. I like where I'm at. So I actually met my husband in college. We went to the same college, so I met him. He actually from here. So I moved yeah. here about 15 years ago. So mm-hmm. this is home now. So that's right. That's right. So so what was it like in the household? You know, you know, what did you guys do to entertain yourselves? I mean, did you guys have like a farm, or was it just you know you you know I don't know Griffin? We didn't have a film. I'm in Griffin, you know, what we do for fun, you know, just normal kid stuff, you know, school projects and, you know, little groups and stuff and clubs. Other than that, you know, my mom worked full time, my dad worked full time, and, mm-hmm. you know, we just did normal stuff. Other than that, mm-hmm. you know, I did work while I was in school, so I worked mm-hmm. when I was 15 and still kept my grades up. So other than that, I was trying to make money at an early age. I didn't have yeah. to, but that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, see, Griffin oh, yeah. sounded like that was named after the mayor or somebody. Was that named after the mayor? <laughs> no, just like, Griffin just like a little. You're going to have to look it up. You have to look up Griffin. Yeah. Doing just a, yeah I'm going to Google it. I'm going I'm to Google it, too. I'm going to look for like exactly right now, where the, you grew up at. Yes, exactly. right now the crime rate, if you look, is awful. They're having so many mm-hmm. um, gangs down there, so it's just scary. Mm-hmm. Um, every week you hear about somebody getting shot. I don't know where that comes from. I guess kid doesn't appreciate life right now. You know, human life doesn't matter at this point. So yeah. it's all young kids and games. So that's all you hear about right now. I yeah. never in a million yeah. years you would have thought that. So. Cause see, I remember too. Um, you know, growing up like in, you know in the the eastern part of Maryland is is kind of like you know like the south south like Virginia and them places, Carolina, uh-huh. and um the the the, the the kids really didn't have a whole lot to do. You had to be real creative. Like I remember my uncles and them, they had like band. Everybody had a band or they had a DJ group. So they spent most of their, their weekends practicing for gigs. So but during oh, the week, wow. they all had, had jobs like, you know, farming, cleaning, mm-hmm. you know, janitorial work. Like cause my grandfather had a janitorial business. I remember they used to go around cleaning different nurseries. That's what they called daycare centers down there. So they were busy, you know. By the time they did their homework and had to do those things, then chores, take care of the farm animals, the day was done. But for the oh, boys wow. who who didn't have all of that, you know, they they didn't have much. You know, they thinking about uh-huh. you know who house they gonna break in when those people leave. You know, they could be their neighbor. They didn't care. So you be hearing yeah, dumb crime. Man. It be dumb crime. Then drugs. It was a lot of drugs. You know, you can just pull right up and you see the man sitting right there. You know, the guy with the Mercedes is obvious. He's the guy. You know, everybody else driving, wow. riding bikes. <laughs> yeah, so. that is sad. You know, you have that. But luckily, you know, I didn't grow up like that. I mean, like I said, there's crime and drugs everywhere. But mm-hmm. the way it is now, it's so different. Yeah, it's prevalent in the in the low income areas. You know, that's how they they um, survive. You know, because nobody else can get no job. And then you have no kids job. of your own. You 
you know, it's just so scary. So you is, try not to bring them uh, up like that, but you want to teach them about life as well, and you want to keep it 100 with your kids as well, too, about what's going on in the street. <laughs> yeah, I know. You, oh, yeah. you know. So, well, let's look at, we can look at that that, that uh, movie that's called the, the Snow and the Drifts or something like the Snow and the Bluffs. Yeah. <laughs> we can look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought man. that thing was real. I was like, is this real? <laughs> I had to call my son up. I was like, Brandon, oh, is this real? Gosh. I know. So, you know, it's, it's life, though. It's life. I know. Mm. That's that was so. scary. And I've I worked know. in the hood, but I don't remember being like that. It's like, what's that? Me either. Yeah, I said, you kill people you know. <laughs> they like, drive by. Yeah, I think you shoot up people you don't know. You know, in the city, you know, you're going at the other rival neighborhoods. Those guys, like, live in the same hood. They yeah, that's the scary part. You can go visit yeah. family, and they have to drive by, and you know the yeah. and it's the ones always get hit. So yeah, you know, cookout. It's like you know when you put your arms down in the city. At least they do <laughs> take time off. It's like look, man, it's, it's a holiday. You know, everybody know. put the arms down. Leave them at home. Take the clip out. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. That's, that's the way it is, though. You know, you, yeah, some people just. Boys. Put their energy into something else, you know. You just never yeah. know what you get. You know, people That's don't have right. time. That's they right. want to stay on a corner, shoot, and sell drugs. And there's so much potential out here for everybody. I mm-hmm. think, you know, somebody, for, there's something for everybody. So. That's right. Now, what's the, what's the ages of your kids? What are their ages? My daughter is 15 years old. Mm-hmm. I have a son who's me and my husband started all over once we spent, went back to school, finished, and did everything else. And mm-hmm. I just had a newborn who's two weeks years old, and I'm still Ooh. working. <laughs> wow. Well, not working, working, but, you know, trying to still promote my stuff. I'm okay, but I have a two-week-year-old, mm-hmm. a two-year-old, and a 15-year-old. So you actually, so, um, so you working from home right now? You, so, I mean, you well, also from your other from job. Work, I'm actually, yeah, I'm attorney leave as far as my books and stuff. I'm still doing stuff like that, setting up yeah. book tours and just, just doing stuff like that just to get everything out there. And, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. right now I feel like I'm get an agent. Like, I, I get an agent I to do know. all that stuff for you. That's what and they my call husband's actually pretty good. Yeah, and he's actually pretty good with doing a lot of stuff like that, too. He's actually doing a couple of things, but I set up a lot of stuff with him. You need to call this person, mm-hmm. you need to call that, you know, I just – like to have my hand in everything just to make sure stuff get done. Mm-hmm. Because if it don't get done, you'll be pissed off, and you'll be like, if you want something done, you do it yourself, or you know how mm-hmm. that goes. <laughs> yeah, but other than that, I'm still just, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much getting there, so I'm almost 100%, and I'm pretty good. So yeah. I'm ready to get back out there and stuff, which I know I'm taking time and stuff, because it's a big snow, snowstorm up here, and the weather's awful, too, so. Oh, you guys getting the snowstorm? Because we got well, some crazy. Um, no, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had so a flash. We had a flash. Yeah, we had a flash storm. But we did get something over the weekend. Gave us a day oh, off okay. on Tuesday. So we actually had oh. a four-day weekend. So that was hot. See, the kids been yeah. out of school, and I think they're going back tomorrow. But more weather's coming in tomorrow, too. So wow. it's just, like, mm. awful and stuff. So everybody's running yeah. out here trying to make sure they got everything. and. Power's been out everywhere all week, and some people yeah, just now you guys, get their power back. Yeah. So. so you guys have no. to have, make sure y'all have, um, so you guys got to have, like, um, wood-burning fireplaces and stuff like yes. that? Yes, and then when you run out of wood, you got to figure out what you're going to do, and then they got a newborn, so it's like, oh, crap, you know. But luckily, mm-hmm. we was, you know, our power wasn't out like the other ones, just a couple of hours, so we was one of the lucky ones, so I'm grateful for that with a newborn. Yeah. So. Your lines what don't run on the ground. Out? So y'all don't run y'all no. y'all let your lines down on the ground. No. <laughs> oh, see, yeah, in, the, in the cities, the new development areas, it's like suburban, they run our power lines on the ground. So, no, um, they just you know everything just kind of worked out. But a lot of people, I guess there was ice everywhere and the power lines mm-hmm. and everything down. Yeah, so. the way to the, yeah the way to the, yeah we haven't had no really bad ice storms in a couple of years now. Mostly the blizzards. Coming from the Midwest, that's what's really hit us hard. But um, I understand what you're going through. I mean, it's not over yet. You know, everybody's not out of the woods. You know, when I, when no, it's coming from the south. Some, you know, <laughs> ready for some spring weather right about now. <laughs> yeah, then when it gets too hot, we'll be complaining about that. 
Yeah, because it get hot it's down high. there. I remember, yeah, y'all get them thunderstorms. And yeah. The heat index is it's, crazy. Georgia weather is yeah. crazy. One minute yeah. it's summertime, next it's wintertime, spring, you get all the season in one week. <laughs> yeah, no, it's kind of like Long Island because my grandmother, um, you know, owned a home up in Long Island. I remember that it's really cool at night because of the water, but during the day it's like sizzling hot. You know, like you can see the steam coming off the street. It's mm-hmm. so hot, you know. Yeah, but Long yeah. Island sounds like a nice place to visit, though. Oh yeah, really nice, really nice. A lot of mixture, cult, different cultures and everything. A lot of different, different people, you know, because a lot of people come there um, from the foreign countries who specialize in, like, you know, in medicine, in nursing. So that's uh-huh. always the first stop. Is all those, those type of, because they have really big hospitals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and hmm. that's where you go to get trained. Because I think that's where my grandmother left Virginia. Her and her sister too uh, get trained in nursing, and, and that's where they retired in the. Um, at a hospital. That's where they retired. Okay. Yeah. Get them good benefits. Yeah. They live, I think they actually live across the street from a hospital. <laughs> wow. They, they, they don't have no excuse not I to know. go to work. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, but they That's retired now. They're in, a, yeah. they're in the 90s now, so I don't know why they oh, want to cross the street from a hospital. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Well, I mean, shoot, I guess that's easy to get to work, too. So they don't come to work, somebody can go over there and check. (laughs) That's right. That's right. All right. We talking to Bianca Harrison. She has a book, a recent release, Love and War. We're going to talk about that book. It's supposed to be provocative and a racial story about deceit, love, hope, commitment, and heartache because of a love affair. That's right. And people doing that stuff still, too, man. You're encouraging (laughs) it in this book. I'm not encouraging. It's all my books are so diverse and it's so different. Each one of my books are different, and I just, I mean, just this one's totally different. And it talks about illness and you know just things that happen in life. Yeah, in life. Okay. All right, I'm, just, gonna, I'm not. I'm not gonna beat you up about that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I mean, let's take a break. The territory. <laughs> yeah, I understand. People like reading that stuff, so they know how to do it right. All right, let's take a break. <laughs> When we come back, we're going to talk about love and war. We're talking to Bianca Harrison. Hold tight, everybody, for a 60-second break. Hi, I am recording artist Marilyn Dunn from St. Louis, Missouri. If you are looking for some soul-stirring, anointed, spiritual, and heartfelt music, visit my website at www.marilynndunnministries.com. Dot com. Or you can also find me on CD Baby, iTunes, and Reverb Nation. For booking information, contact Mr. Kevin Dunn at 636-856-0551. That's 636-856-0551. Are you looking for a great book of poetry that is romantic, heartfelt, and full of male emotion? Then get Thoughts, Love, and Reflections by James K. Deshay. That's D-E-S-H-A-Y. Go to www.jamesdeshay.com. You will enjoy Thoughts, Love, and Reflections. Hey everyone, this is Tanika Gonzalez, spoken word poet. Whenever I'm online, I'm always listening to Jerry Royce Live. You can find Jerry on www.speaker.com. Positive Power 21. Positive Power! Listening to Positive Power Twenty One dot org with Jerry Royce. All right, thank you, family. We appreciate the intro. Love and war, love yeah. and war. Mm, what's the deal with that? <laughs> what's the deal with that? Oh, love and war. No, it's love and war no, I mean, is totally uh, interracial book for me is interracial romance novel women fiction 
um, so much diversity in this book as far as the other books that I've written. Um, this one just goes with a woman whose heart's been broken, you know, found out her husband's cheating on her just to see her and, you know, the only thing about it, she does not ask for a divorce. She doesn't believe in divorce, but he does. And the same day that he's asking her for a divorce is the same day she comes with him about her illness. But she has to make a choice. Should she tell him about her illness or should she keep it to herself? So, you know, you have to play it, you know, how it goes. Yes, that's Ava and Ryan, the couple. Yes. Yeah. Ava having a problem. and Ryan. Yeah. All right. And that's- Ryan... He has a, you know, another woman. He has another woman. Yeah, when you always think the grass is green on the other side, then you finally come to your senses and you find out it's not, but you got to figure out if it's too late, though, you know. Yeah. You get all this dirt, and you know, you got your idea, you a perfect, you know, you picked your perfect family, and then you come here, and then you come with this side check, and, you know, it's not what it is. And your wife is sick, but you don't know that she's sick. So there's a lot of, you know, with their characters and her Ava's friends, there's a lot of, um, to me, it's a lot of, it's showing you that you can laugh, you can cry, you can have heartache and pain. All this is in one book. You may laugh, you don't cry, you know. <laughs> I've heard it all. <laughs> Wow, really? Oh, like, man, so I, I need to go out there and check that out. So, right. Yeah, I mean, you're going to get it all. If you um think about um the best man holiday too. Mm-hmm. It was something something totally that I've heard is something totally different from that from other people's reviews and stuff. So you're gonna get mm-hmm. all that. You're gonna laugh and cry, but it's you know, I want to do an interracial book because it's a variety of things out there, but I don't want to just think just one couple goes through things, everybody goes through everything. I mean, love has no color. So I mean yes, you can't yes. help who you fall in love with, so you know, so you have experience. So you have a little bit of you had some experience to write this book, or just research? No, I didn't. I had an idea, and you know, it just came with that. The characters, and you know, and when I write, I just write. So whatever comes to mind, I try to do an outline. But sometimes I really go with the outline. When I write, I just write. And everything <laughs> just comes together, you know. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, yeah. oh, why did I let her do that? Why did I let her do that? I can't believe she did that. You know, you just write, and as all things, you just write. Yeah, I was going to ask you, um, you know, what's your style? You know, how, you know, what happens? Do you develop your characters first, or you just let them do? Well, yeah, I do. I do develop my, I do develop my characters, and mm-hmm. I do try to do an outline. And I sometimes I stick with it. Sometimes I go off course and just, like I say, just write. And that's mm. just, I mean, this comes with the territory because you put everything else in there. And you're like, oh, gosh, I can't believe I let that character do that. But, you know, like I say, this book was totally, it, it was easy to write because everything just came together. It was so easy to write. I just finished my third book, so it was just like, oh, gosh. It took me, I feel like it took me the longest. I don't know if it's because I was pregnant, but my sister was reading and everything. She's like, oh, my God, I think this is my best book. But you just never know. Whatever yeah. takes you the longest versus what's easy. <laughs> so you just write. Because normally I can write a book so quickly. But with me being pregnant the last couple of months, it took me the longest to write that. <laughs> I guess I was tired too. But yeah. but I did get it done. But yeah, Love and War yeah. is, is, you know, it just is it's just a story because she's caught in between her love for her husband and fighting a battle but trying to keep him, too, and the battle with the illness that she's obtained. So she's dealing with a lot. She's a best-selling author, and her husband's, you know, plotting his mistress, and, you know, but she's not giving up on her marriage because she doesn't believe in that. So that's why I'm like, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of stuff to learn in this book. I even had males that read the book, and he's like, oh, my gosh, you know, the way the characters were written, and, you know, so uh, you have to check it out when you get a moment. You have to check it out. Yeah, I don't think you'd be disappointed. Right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, you got. Yeah, you got. Send me something so I can um, flash it up on my on my YouTube show. I will. I, wanna, I, I really see will. Now, is that I a mean, hard? I, ba- I mean, what is that? I know. You, I know you got the downloads, the Kindle download. Are you? Are these books available in paperback? Yes, they are. And I do a lot of um, book tours and do a lot of book events. And I do, you know. 
sell them there and stuff too, so they are in paperback as well. And I like to do that because a lot of lot have a lot of people that read and like and they prefer mm-hmm. the book than an ebook. That's right. I have a lot Very of people that school. still prefer the book. Yes, and for me, I prefer a book as well. It just seems like it take me forever to read it on my Kindle. I don't well, I know get why. Through them quicker. <laughs> I get through them quicker. I, I just I be reading up. several. Yeah, I just said um I read a few of them at the same time, and then I'm like, oh. Oh God! It, it just feels like I it get... takes me forever. I get I guess I'm so used. Oh yeah. gosh! I guess I'm so used to a book that I prefer a book. Mm-hmm. But I, now, I read it on Kindle. <laughs> yeah, I love it on the, on my tablet, and my phone. I can w- read one walking. Now, Bianca, now how long you been writing? You know, been a I've author? written a oh, couple years. I think I start writing in 2008, and for mm-hmm. some reason, I first wrote my first book, so I wanted to call my own. I think I picked it back up. I wrote it in 2008, put it down. You know how you get that, oh, who's going to read this book? And, you know, not having faith in myself enough to finish it. So 2012, I think I finished the book in 2013. I'm like, no, not me and my husband talk. Okay, you know, you never know who's going to read it. Or, until you put it out there, you got to have faith in that's yourself. Right. So that's what I did. And then after that, you know, I just had so many good response from people. So... It just keeps me, you know, motivated and keep pushing because I'm like, okay, I got my craft. I know what I like to do, you know, Mm -hmm. building characters. It was just up to me to get it out there. So I I read a lot, too. So Mm -hmm. after being an avid reader, I came up with characters. Like, I can write my own book. And that's how I start writing. (laughs) Yeah, that's how I get started. That's right. Hobby. It's like a hobby, and then you made it your own. Yeah, yeah, so like 2013, it just became my profession. Like, okay, I've written two books and a couple of months after that. So just writing, it just became my profession. So, you know, I'm still working, still trying to get myself out there. And, you know, just That's never right. know. So, you now know, your, um, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, so how's your your fan base, you know? How are your fans actually, love so you? far so good. So far, so good. Um, I'm actually still building that. I do have a lot of people actually promoting and um, advertising for me as well. So, so far, so good. I'm still building it as well, though. Yeah, because I'm, I'm looking at your reviews. Um, now, your old old school fans, they're going to they gonna be there for you no matter what. It's like just like Prince. You know, Prince fans, <laughs> fan, Prince can rap. He can spin on his head. We're still going to be happy. But, exactly. You know, but, but his bandwagon fans will be like, "What the heck was that?" <laughs> now, and what are your now your old school fans? They're gonna protect you. They're gonna look out for you. And what are the new people saying about Bianca Harrison, the author? Well, I'm actually getting re- good reviews, but you would think it. You know, everybody don't write a review, so that's mm-hmm. the only thing. Cause you would want them to. Um, but I've gotten good reviews and vibes from it. You know, yeah, I haven't. I, I just wish everybody would write a review, though. <laughs> you gotta ask them. Now, now I you, do that. You should I, post. I, you I, should post them on your Facebook, and then encourage other people to do it. Look, yeah. like you got this good one right here. Say, it say grabs you by the throat. This is an emotional charge story about a marriage. That, that's a good start. If I saw some, if I saw that on on a post, I was like, oh my god, I gotta get that book. And so you can be yeah, and I do that occasionally on my, um, I do have a um, Facebook page, you know, for my author page. Mm-hmm. That's my author page. So I do put that on there occasionally. Just, you know, just put stuff out there, Twitter and mm-hmm. everything like that. So I do try to get it out there as well. Yeah, but you ain't but got I've faith, so many right? People, exactly. <laughs> but I've had so many people read the book. That's the thing. You're like, okay, you know, you're a woman writer. You know, I even put it out there, you know. But I guess you just can't make them. Or they don't know how. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a way you could do it. I mean, some people be having like hundreds of them. I'm like, how the heck? But they said they, they really engage their people, you know. I, I mean, yeah. some people just got a lot of time. They can just, I don't know, I guess they just fast. I don't know. Hey, but let me ask you this. <laughs> um, now, I know Facebook is, you know, like the the biggest phenomenon when it, you know, for authors, I mean, a lot of people becoming really successful really, really fast. I mean, I'm hearing mm-hmm. four or 5,000 downloads a week from, you know, from some of those that are, I consider to be social media gurus. They use Twitter to, to, feel, to, to reel them in, and they, and they hook them as soon as they get to their page. What are some of your secrets, trade secrets, you like to share with someone who's like, you know, kind of like struggling right now, you know, with posting and not really understanding the good and the bad of it? Any, well, any I, advice? 
Well, I just said first um, learn the craft, and then, you know, you try to build your your fan base and audience out there, and then try to connect with other authors. I've connected with a lot of people on Goodreads. Um, mm-hmm. Had a lot of experience with other authors that give you um, good advice. Um, not all of them are nice, but you're gonna, you know, you're gonna get that because I mean, some right. people don't want you to do better than them. But the thing is, there's a lot of success out here for everybody. It's not like mm-hmm. you're trying to take their fan base, but you're all working together to get their book out there, to get your book out there. You help me promote. I help you promote. I mean, just just promoting yeah. and advertising and getting yourself out there and just connecting with other authors. I mean, mm-hmm. you just never know. But learn the craft as well, too. Advertising right. and promoting is the main thing. Advertising. So. That's right. And speaking of advertising, you got to come on Jerry Woods Live Worldwide. Now, yes. was it hard getting you? Was it hard getting you on this show? Did Brandon have to pull your no. teeth? No, no, I'm not even sure who emailed me. <laughs> he just said producer. the third week, and I was like, I'm like, he just said third week or whatever. I'm like, okay, you yeah. know, I just make sure I put in my phone or whatever. I try to do that. Um, that way, I stay on tack too. Or what I got mm-hmm. coming up, or because I'm easy to forget with life and everything else, but I make sure that I program everything in my smartphone. <laughs> yeah, you really use that smartphone. Man, you use that. Oh, my God. I mean, it's, it's like not always secretary. smart. But, yeah, it's, it's good to me as far as, yeah. you know, what I have to do. So it really is. But, no, it was not hard at all. No, it's not hard at all. Anything I can do to help your business and you can help me as well, that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I remember I had to make a couple phone calls. People said, can he call? They want you to call them. I'm like, what? Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. I'm okay. And it wasn't you know, you. You're helping me. I'm helping you. So, no. Yeah, <laughs> so I couldn't figure it out. I said, what? I said, we asking them to come on our show, you know. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, in our hand helping them, you know. <laughs> yeah, you help helping us, we helping you. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, no, no, no. You didn't have to yeah, we didn't have to. We didn't have to talk to your man as your husband. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm good. If I know it's something that could benefit me, benefit you, you know, right. I'm good. Mr. Harrison. Mr. Harrison you wants know. to speak to you first. <laughs> oh, no. I'm not going through all that, you know. So. <laughs> but, yeah, we kind of, me and my husband actually worked as a team. He's actually a graphic artist as well, too. So mm-hmm. he's actually, to you know, do a lot of stuff behind the scene on my book and website and all that stuff so you know we have to work together when you're trying to build something so that's right so he did your book covers for you mm-hmm. book covers okay. and um you know website you have to update that you know but yeah i like that that's a nice just, yeah, loving, yeah, loving, and, yeah nice yeah right. he does other stuff too like music on the side too so i have to get you to talk to him too they actually have artists music artists and stuff too and they have yeah. a big um, show um in april so i think corrupt and some other rappers are coming in so he does all that on the side so i try to stay out of it and just go when i need yeah. to support it and stuff but yeah they got artists and our you know entertainment stuff too so that's his mm-hmm. side of the gig with the beats and stuff and mine with the author so he's a promoter so he's yeah, a promoter so he's or manager mm-hmm. he's actually he a manages- manager producer so he produces oh. all the other the music. So yeah, yeah I have yeah. to uh, send you his information. Yeah, you yeah so you know, we kind of work together and doing everything too. So that's right. Tell him we love that because I mean, I love to talk to him about that because we definitely trying to do um you know weekend um, radio casting on the weekends with um okay you know performers ind- independents mostly you know that's what we like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I um, actually send Brenda an email. You know, I send him an email yeah. that way. You know, connect and stuff and. That's you right. know, can go from Get there. That's right. Exactly. I know that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Appreciate that. Appreciate oh, that. Oh, no problem. You know, we're trying all to right. do it all. You know, you just hey, you have to get yourself out there, too, because nobody else is going to do it if you don't. That's right. So. You got to. All right. So. We're going to take a quick break, Bianca. When okay. we come back, we're going we're gonna to get your your uh, final thoughts and, um, you okay. know, talk, you know, give people some advice on, um, you know, hanging in there with the game because the game can get rough, like you mentioned, you know. It's a it can. <laughs> get rough. All right, so hold tight. We're going to listen to Bill Powers, Powers okay. publication, all right? All righty. I think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Take a guess. Set in the green hills of western New Jersey, inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company where decisions are worth billions of dollars 
and human lives worth less. Nicholas Hardy, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career, family, and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse, a suspense thriller novel by Bill Powers, published by Donna Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com or DonnaInc.org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. Are you an avid reader of urban fiction, looking for drama, suspense, and more? Reesworld Publishing is dedicated to bringing the world's best literature to our readers. Urban fiction, erotica, sci-fi, mainstream fiction, and children's literature are just some of the genres produced by our diversified family of authors. You can reach us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at our website, www.reesworldpublishing.com. Hi, I am Arthur Crystal Alexis, and I'm on Positive Power 21 with Jerry Roy Slide. Woohoo! All right. Thank you, Crystal. All right. We're talking to the author of Love and War, Bianca Harrison. Now, I don't see your name on these books. What's the deal? You ever. You don't, I don't understand. No, I, I'm looking at Love and War, Kindle Additional Amazon, and say um, something about graphics. Identifying graphics, illustrator. Mm-hmm. I should be Does, there. Yeah, I don't see your name on. Oh, I see it in your bio, but it it, it didn't show you as the author. You know, when you first go into Amazon, it's I'm in a I'm on a messed up version. But and but I did see your other books. So, yeah, it should uh, you, be you, there. Yeah, you see, you're doing your thing. Nice lengthy book. Two hundred. And when you type my name, page. man, you it'll come up. I'm sorry. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did come up. I see your That's name crazy. on the title of the book, though, but for some reason it didn't show up under the um, title when you go to the page for some reason. I don't know. Maybe, that, maybe that's the way I went into it. They still me for them. <laughs> yeah, you got to check them out, make sure they're doing right. You know, Amazon can mess you up. Yeah. You got to stay on top I'm of them. Concerned. I know about that, but you have to stay on top of it, too. That's right. All right, so can we get your final thoughts, advice for any young author out there? Thinking about venturing to writing, marketing, and promoting all that stuff. Well, as far as other me. other authors out there that are trying to make it and um, be an aspiring writer and author, I mean, just keep. I mean, you're, it's got to be your passion. So keep writing. I don't say don't give up. You have to believe and have faith. That's the only reason. I mean, only way you're going to make it. You have to believe in your craft. You have to believe that you're going to be a success. Um, as far as writing, just keep doing what you're doing, and, hey, it's going to show up. People are going to buy your stuff. You have to promote, advertise, and get your work out there, but you have to do the work, and you can't give up. I mean, you just have to. you got to have faith. Nothing's going to be easy. That's just like, you know, something major happening overnight. It's not going to be easy. Sometimes you may stumble, but you got to stand up and keep walking. So. That's right. All right. Now, another question would be, now, when you say invest in yourself, you know, advertising, what, what type of venues would you recommend, you know, you know, so they don't be all over the place? What would you recommend how, how to advertise? Will be I mean, there is, First of all, always use social media. It's free advertisement, so use social media. Back in the days, we didn't have social media, so it was kind of hard to advertise. But as far as advertising, um, you're going to meet other people. You're going to meet um, different sites to promote. There's Goodreads out there. There's sponsors. I mean, there's there's so much out there. And once you use those avenues, you'll find ways to um, dabble in other sites to promote. I mean, Use your friends, your network. I mean, have right. friends to promote and from, uh, advertise for you. Change your profile pictures to your book. You know, mm-hmm. you just have to find ways out there. And it's free promotion out there as well, too. You don't always, it don't have to always be expensive. I'm looking mm-hmm. at me. I'm talking to you. So, you know, it's free promotion. So. You'll be I free mean, today. You'll be high <laughs> exactly, tomorrow. You just, exactly. You just never know what you're going to get. That's right. When but they say you, you want to. Let me ask you this though, but Bianca, like when you know, people, a lot of people say they're getting, you know, they're getting kind of worn down. They have family they want to see and take care of, and they want to start working smarter 
if if they had to work smarter in promotion, because because I mean social media is tough work. You know, I know people say they it, post two hundred something a, a day. That's, it is unless you can like, pay somebody some, to yeah. do it for you. It's right, not a lot of them do. I mean, and then sometimes you may see a significant number of sales, and sometimes you may not. So you have to just find other streamers for just using Facebook and postings and stuff. I mean, there's other people. There's people that can blog for you. That would mm-hmm. be happy to blog your books and do reviews for you. So I find a lot of people that does that as well, blogging, mm-hmm. reviews, and that's when you start seeing sales, when people start um, blogging your stuff. And people are like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, I like that. So I mean, you, it can get, oh, draining. Sometimes I don't even post every day because it can get draining. And you can mm-hmm. pay somebody to do the same thing to post for you, but why would you want to pay somebody to post for you when you can just post to your group yourself? So, yeah. I mean, there's, it, it can get draining, but right. you got to find out up. what works for you. <laughs> I know. Yeah, right. Hit the tweet man up. And, then you know, a lot of people got yeah. video blogs out there now, too, that they have huge followings on their YouTube channels. And that's, I was, true, um, and that's what I'm trying to yeah. build up now. I haven't had time to um, do a um, chat, not a check, but a um, blog and stuff. But that's my next avenue. I just haven't had time with the way my life is going, but I plan to do the same thing as well, so. That's right. I was cause I was just reading on this guy who's supposed to be a um, marketing guru, um, and he had this woman come on and she said, "Yeah, I built up a huge following video blog." That's because she said she doesn't like to write, so she, all she does is video blog, and people um, uh, follow along in her little, you know, uh-huh. leave their comments. Yep, and she works for and people. She works for other people. She just mentioned them on her show and charged oh, them a whole okay. lot of money. Yep, and charged them a whole lot of money. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah. I'm sure you can make money doing it. <laughs> but that was my oh, next yeah. thing was to do a video, you know, start doing videos. And mm-hmm. I hope that I can do that this weekend. I've been planning on doing it, but I just haven't had time with the cold weather and stuff. It's just been, time has been all, so. That's right. Yeah, you got to get to it. And that's one of the the big things that we saw that, that really helped out our traffic, especially to our website, was when we started mm-hmm. putting out our audio players with the show on our website mm-hmm. that's when we really started seeing track then we started putting out youtube because the kids like making music videos exactly. featuring me, and the people like that stuff they start showing their friends next thing you know they follow you you know you start seeing I 20 see 30 40 good. people following you at night you know you start saying hey i must be doing something right there's not gonna exactly. always be like that you know but you got to keep the momentum going you know. Exactly. Keep putting stuff out there too. So yep. just like everything going. else. You gotta keep mm-hmm. yourself relevant. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people doing the same thing we're doing. So you gotta it keep being innovative. In- innovation is the key. Exactly. So you, know? you are absolutely right about that. So, That's right. But I That's right. I don't everybody who I mean somebody who's doing something who's trying to come up in the game, I mean just Hey, just stick to your craft. I just say don't give up. I mean, I had to learn everything on my own when I just first got out here in the business. Like, oh, gosh, and where do I start? You know, then I have a whole bunch of people who asking me, oh, you know, questions about how do they get started, how do they do this and stuff. And Like, I should do a class on how to get started. You know, you just. That's right. I mean, they don't get video blood. That's exactly. Right. So do a Google, it. Google Hangout. See, look, you exactly. do a Google Hangout, and that's how you. People like to engage people. You know, they want to talk to you through their computers. <laughs> that's yeah, that's awesome, true. Man. So, but yeah, that's I right. mean, I started on my own. Didn't have any help, nobody to ask questions to. I was a newbie, so I just kind of learned everything as I went. And I, like I said, I'm still learning. So, yeah, still learning. We all are. So it's that's I mean, right. it's, I like what I do. I like creating characters, putting stuff out there that people are gonna enjoy. You know, so and meeting mm-hmm. other authors and. People like you guys, so I appreciate it. I appreciate everything. Yeah, yeah we Somebody appreciate Somebody ask me if I can be on their show. Anybody can ask me, I can help. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm there. So that's right. And you and you and you, and you mentioned earlier earlier that you do book signings and everything. So you love I doing do. this kind of thing. So I do have a couple of um, things coming up this year. Actually, it's going to start next month. So that's why I'm, I'm mm-hmm. healing pretty good. I'm doing everything. So well, tell I'm us, tell us where you're going to be. You still got a couple minutes left. Remember you the last yeah, show. Me, this is the last show for the week. Where you going to be at, Bianca? Where you going to be? Wait, Justin, let me see what I have to add. Yeah, check your smartphone. <laughs> I know. I have a couple <laughs> things. I'm going to be at a couple of um, findings um, later this year, Decatur um, Book Show, and I'm trying to 
there's one in Atlanta as well in November I'm going to be at. But next month, I'm on March the 28th, I'm going to be at Griffin High School, actually, for a book signing. That's going to be from 4 to 6. At April the 11th, I'm going to be at Nubian Bookstore, and that's in um, South Lake Mall. That's in Lovejoy. Oh, and that's still around. And then April 25th, I'm going to be at Urban Grind Coffee House, and that's from 2 to 4. I'm going to be doing a book signing. So All I do right. have a couple of more available this year that will be on my website so everybody can see, and it's going to be on my Facebook page. Well, you got a lot. And that's, yeah, so I'm going to have a lot of things this year, you know, that I'm working on. So you going to take the baby my, with you? Who's oh, going to be watching no. the baby? <laughs> No, I have people watching the baby. You know, oh, okay. I have my little helper with me, yeah. which is uh, actually my daughter. Care. And I, yes, I do have a um, assistant actually, which is just like you know, a family member that helps me at all times with book signing mm-hmm. and stuff. So, I'm grateful for the help that I have when I'm doing stuff like that, and I actually enjoy it because that's when I do meet a lot of readers too, and that's when yeah. you know they put my book out there. They like the book, and you know, tell other people about it. So that's right. That's how you keep it moving. That's exactly. Right. Momentum. So, Momentum. Yeah, get your name out there and everything. <laughs> That's right. But all I mean, right, if they want to know where I'm at, all the way go to my Facebook page at Facebook, mm-hmm. Arthur Bianca Harrison, or my website at ArthurBiancaHarrison dot com. That's right. And you said you're on Book Baby and Amazon. Yeah, and Twitter, uh, Miss Janelle. That's M R S J A N I E L L E. Instagram is Miss Janelle as well. All right. Very good. We appreciate having you on the show and sharing all your, I appreciate you know, your it secrets well. of how you move in these books and everything and encouraging others following your path. Yeah, I appreciate it as well, too. I mean, when they follow me, they can always check out my first release, Someone to Call My Own, and other mm-hmm. releases that will be available for this year as well. So thank all you right. for having me, Jerry. I appreciate it a lot. You're welcome. So I know you're going to share our show and tell people about us, right? I surely am, and I'm going to put it on my Facebook page and everything else, and I'm going to tweet. (laughs) Awesome. All right. So we have the the file, the on-demand file available to you tonight in case you're up late and you feel like working. All right? No problem. All right, everybody. Thank you guys for having me so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Everybody say thumbs up. All right. (laughs) And I tell you, Bianca, I tell people all the time, I say, well, they want to hear the good stuff. I mean, the real good stuff. Just like tonight, you know, you told us, you know, you're juggling two small kids and a husband has a music career going on. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. But you're doing yeah. your thing and you're enjoying it, having fun, and got a full-time job. It's exactly. Very motivating. Don't stop. <laughs> That's right. Very motivating. And we appreciate Thank you sharing you all so that. Much. I appreciate right, it so much, guys. Yo. Go buy the book. Go buy the book. Don't That's forget right. buy her Amazon. book. Right. And we see Obviously. you in the next drop. <laughs> Thank you we so much. We see you in the next too. drop, too. All right? Okay. Take care. Thanks, guys. All right, everybody. I'm Joy Goes Live. Too. Worldwide. Positive Power 21.org. Exactly. Spreaker.com forward slash Positive Power 21. Be awesome all week long. Thank you Thank for tuning you. in to Joy Voice Live on PositivePower21.org and Spreaker.com forward slash PositivePower21. This is a Voice Enterprises production. And don't forget about replay on Facebook.com forward slash Joy Voice Live. All right, everybody, don't forget to share tonight. I am recording artist Marilyn Dunn from St. Louis, Missouri. If you are looking for some soul-stirring, anointed, spiritual, and heartfelt music, visit my website at www.marilynnministries.com. Or you can also find me on CD Baby, iTunes, and Reverb Nation. For booking information, contact Mr. Kevin Dunn at 636-856-0551. That's 636-856-0551. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. On February 23rd, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, 
I will be live on Jerry Rose Live Radio. I will be discussing my new album and my new single coming in February. Stay tuned and I'll see you there. Hey, what's going on, family? This is Eric A. Terry Sr., author of Real Talk, The Making of a Man, and I'm on Jerry Ross Live Worldwide. You are listening to PositivePower21.org with Jerry Royce. What up? It's your boy, Kano Kingston. Hi, this is Angel Session. Hey, this is Kat. Hi, I'm Teresa Powell. Hi, Jerry. This is Iris Sandro Carter. Hi, this is Paul Powers. Hello, this is Chris Bobby with Jerry Royce Live. Hi, I'm Phil LeBurn. I'm live on the Jerry Royce Show. Hi, what do you do? Boy, who's the same? Peace, this is Dolly, the poet, spoken word artist. Hello, this is my Marquise with Jerry Royce Live. All right, all right, everyone. we got Robin Lynn, and I'm keeping it live right now on Jerry Royce Live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's up? This is a award winning podcast with the greatest podcast on earth. Thank you for stopping by. I'm your host, Jerry Royce Live Worldwide on Internet Radio, where you get your positive on. So when it's all positive, it's all power. That's positive power. This is a worldwide podcast for growth, wealth, and success. Thank you. Think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Think again. Set in the green hills of western New Jersey, inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company where decisions are worth billions of dollars and human lives worth less. Nicholas Harding, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career, family, and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse, a success thriller novel by Bill Powers, published by Donna Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com. Or .org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. Are you looking for the next great read? A book filled with love, passion, betrayal, and intrigue. The award-winning novel, Season of Change, by Tamika Patrice Kane is sure to satisfy your literary sweet tooth. Check out this must-read book reviewers are calling a blessing and emotional, and exceptionally great read, deeply intense and thought-provoking. Order your copy today, available in paperback and ebook on Amazon.com or at www.TamikaPatrice.com. Are you an author looking for promotional services or a reader looking for a great read at low prices? In this competitive world of books, Writing Royalty Promotions is dedicated to bringing authors and readers together to build a greater respect for literature through our various promotional services and online bookstores. So head over to writingroyaltypromotions.com and check us out. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and welcome to PositivePower21.org. I am Jerry Royce Live, and I wish I was in Barbados, Jamaica today, and I want to say shout-out to those guys who are listening to PositivePower21.org right about right now on Spreaker.com forward slash PositivePower21. Man, we, we got an Arctic freeze going on up around here. Man, I don't know what we're going to do. Schools closed two hours late tomorrow, so you know it's cold when they close school two hours late. But it's all good, but we're just glad we got heat. All right, everybody, stay tuned for an episode of Book Buzz, and our book sponsor for tonight's show is my man, James Deshay, the poet, the romance poet. Check him out. Are you looking for a great book of poetry that is romantic, heartfelt, and full of male emotion? Then get Thoughts, Love, and Reflections by James K. Deshay. That's D-E-S-H-A-Y. Go to www.jamesdeshay.com. You will enjoy Thoughts, Love, and Reflections. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate that, James Deshay. Anytime you guys want to sponsor, get some exposure. 
Remember, we are streaming live in Barbados, Jamaica, Canada, Spain, Germany, UK, you name it. 12 countries going strong every day. We broadcasting 15 hours on the stream, on demand, 24-7. So you want to get exposure for your product, your book, or your MP3. Come to us. That's right. We do it right here. All right, y'all. I want you to hold tight for this, this presentation. Today being featured on our show is Eric A. Terry, Sr., author of real, a book called Real Talk, Making of a Man. Stay tuned for his presentation. My moment. This is a presentation for Eric A. Terry Sr. and Jerry Royce Live Worldwide. A native of Shenandoah, Tennessee, Eric A. Terry Sr. is an author, certified marriage coach, and relationship specialist. While he is also known throughout the Southeast as a dynamic singer and a worship leader, Eric is also an, an ordained minister of over 20 years. He was licensed in Nashville, Tennessee under Dr. H. Bruce Maxwell at the Lake Providence Baptist Church in 1995. Eric and his beautiful bride, Lady Deborah, are the owners of Real Talk Consulting, a multi-service firm that focuses on building and maintaining healthy relationships. Real Talk was developed in early 2012 when Eric began posting relationship advice on his personal Facebook page. After attracting a strong following over 5,000 people, Er began to receive requests for speaking engagements, seminars, and marriage retreats, as well as singles empowerment sessions to share his views on relationships. In this time, they've impacted the lives of hundreds of couples and individuals seeking God's original design for their relationship. Eric and Deborah truly have a heart for marriage, and it's through the transparency of their own lives that they provide individuals couples, and teens with the tools necessary to build and maintain a healthy relationship. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I present to you Eric H.R.A. Sr. on Jerry Bush Live Worldwide on Positive Power 21.org, the radio network. Thank you. All right. Mr. Terry, welcome to Positive Power. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well, sir. Thanks so much for having me. We appreciate it. Hey, man. My pleasure, man. Glad to have you. And the first question is, who is Eric A. Terry, senior the author? Oh, man. You know, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a born and raised in Chattanooga, Tennessee. As the bio said, uh, my father, uh, Jerry Terry, is a pastor here, and uh, I have been uh, in ministry and in, involved in church most of my life. Um, over the last few years, God has really shifted some things for me and had me really focus on relationships and focus on mainly marriage, but for singles and also for um, for a couple for uh, couples as well. Uh, but my biggest takeaway, I guess, from life and as far as who I am, I'm a father. I'm a husband. Um, I have uh, four beautiful kids um, that range in age from 26 to 16. Um, wow. So we, uh, my wife Deborah and I, uh, basically we use our marriage as a ministry and a business um, to mm-hmm. to help others. So we uh, we really take this thing seriously, man. And it's been a real blessing to be able to do it. Yeah, see, man, we got five thousand followers. They, I guess they just want to check y'all out, <laughs> see how long yeah. you're gonna last. You yeah. know, how people yeah. are. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's a blessing, though, man. It's like a window to your life, man. That's all right, man. Now, yeah. now, you know, I was telling you early before we got started, I said my Marylanders, man, they, they like to get to know you. You know, we got a little south in us, too, because a lot of us come from, from, from the Virginia area, and, you know, that's considered really south for people living right. in Maryland, especially if you're in New York and you come from Virginia, <laughs> but you're not trying right, to act right. like it. But, right. um, you know, we like to get to know you. Before we spend some money on you, <laughs> that's how we are. So, man, so tell us, man. How, how, you know, you told us you was in the church all your life. So, pretty much, you know, what was life like? You know, growing up, man, in, in a Tariq household, man. Tell us about that. Yeah, man. You know, a lot of people think that I guess because my father was a pastor, they thought, oh, man, y'all was in church all the time, didn't do anything, didn't have fun, and that was, you know, far from the truth, man. My, my father was a very balanced man, so we we knew about church, we knew about God, but we lived life. And we had fun. We went to party. We did the same thing our friends did. Uh, my father just gave us a balance with it by um, helping us to understand um, the role of the Christianity, or the role of the relationship 
far as religion and as well as, you know, just living everyday life. So, man, I, I, don't, mm -hmm. it was, I, I give people the illustration, man. It was my house was the uh, the lower class version of the Huxtables. <laughs> Uh, we didn't have the money. We didn't have the money the Hustables had, man. But we had the love. We had the family. So yeah, so, so, you, how, so you guys, you, yeah. So that means you guys didn't didn't have the um the pretty sweaters on. And, no, um, man. No, no. We couldn't afford the sweaters. Now, uh, well, <laughs> how, now, now I know I know y'all gave mom and pops a, a good show now and then though during the holidays though because I knew you had, you had a couple <laughs> brothers and sisters. I did. I had two brothers, two older brothers, and um. We all, and it's funny, my, my family's a musical family, man. Everybody sings, uh, plays an instrument. Everybody except my oldest brother. My oldest brother, kid, I love him dearly, but that brother, <laughs> I know that he glued it to his back. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, man, so we we, did, we had a lot of fun going on. We had a great, great childhood. My parents always talk about how they wish they had done, could have done more for us. And yeah. I always look at them and we're like, man, we had a ball. You know, our mm -hmm. childhood was, was amazing. So, you know, uh, and all of that, man. It, it was it was one of those things where I was growing up as a as a younger kid. I was the youngest of three boys, and and my brothers to, to just kind of give you some dynamic. My brothers were both um, <laughs> very act, athletic. Uh, these two, I mean, my oldest brother played um, ran cross country. I mean, he ran track. My middle brother mm -hmm. played baseball, basketball, football, you name it. And they were good at all of them. And here wow. I came along being a little fat kid. Uh, <laughs> uh, not, not really into sports, you know, not really into other things that they were, man, being totally different. But um, mm -hmm. but we, we, we found our way. We, and that's one of the, part of the things that I talk about in the book, is how I, how I got out from under their shadows. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome, man. Real talk, consulting. That's right. That's helping people out, multi-service firms. I threw that in there. <laughs> Absolutely, man. That is, yeah, and, and, it's, and it's funny, man, because um, I, I love to hear you know people uh, you know, reminisce about their childhood. Because sometimes you don't you don't get a chance to talk about it because you don't really know what to strike up at work. Sometimes when you're sitting at the lunch table, you know, you you sit there and try to talk about you know back in the day. You know, somebody may not had a good back in the day, so it may not be good lunchtime right. talk. You know, so you right. gotta know who you're right. dealing with. You know, but it's, right. it's good to hear these stories. I'll, and I always like to ask people, you know, good or bad, you know. What it was like, and and that's the reason why some people write the books they're writing because it's based on, on you know the way they grew up, their background. Right, that's and awesome, it, man. It goes back to something you said earlier. You know, we all have a story. We all that's have right. a story. I, I encourage anybody, man. You know, if, if if we all have at least one book in us, at least one, mm -hmm. and if it's nothing but your story, because nobody can tell your story like you, man. That's right. That's what the legendary. Uh, Paul Coates used to always say, uh, the owner of Black Classic Press, publisher Walter Mosley, he used to always say that, man. You know, he wow. started his self-publishing printing business. He used to always say that, man. All right, now, how did you meet Lady Deborah? That's what everybody want to know. <laughs> yeah, man, Lady Deborah. That is, that's, that's my, my baby, my heart. Uh, Deborah and I actually grew up in church together. We grew up in the same church. Um, it, it's kind of funny. Uh, one of the, you know how when you're a little kid and you're in church, you have those little, those little uh, puppy love relationships. Yeah. My my first church girlfriend was actually her sister. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny because my I remember my brother um was dating my 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 son's mother. You know, when we were in elementary school. Yeah, and I was like, man, how he get her? <laughs> right, right, right. So you know, it was one of those things, man. Where we we grew up together, we we known each other, our families grew up together. Uh, we've known each other most of our life, all of our life, really. And um, mm -hmm. just after several years, she had gone through uh, a really bad, a uh, really long, uh, painful marriage, and they had gone through a divorce, and I had gone through mine right before that. And we just, you know, our friendship just kind of went to another level, just kind of talking and wow. kind of being there, supporting one another. And then when we mm -hmm. got together, and we just decided on some things that we weren't going to deal with. You know what I'm saying? We just we said, yeah. hey, we don't, we don't want to. Here's what I put up with before. I don't want to deal with that again. Right, right. And, and, now, it, and it made all the difference. So your first marriage, was, was your wife involved with heavy, heavily involved with the church? Not at all. Not at oh. all. And, man, oh. and I think that, that was a lot of, uh, of the, the issue uh, that we had because 
you know, when you, anybody in ministry, and I say this for anyone, anyone, if you're looking to date someone and you're interested in someone that's in ministry, understand, man, people need to understand, that is a whole other level of responsibility. Yeah. And, and uh, it's just like uh, being, and I hate to put it in this line like, but it's kind of true, it's almost like being in a relationship with a celebrity. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're being, mm-hmm. there's, there's, there's a pulling on them a little more than the average guy or, or, or girl. Yeah. So we need to mm-hmm. understand that it's a whole other level when you get to, uh, to dating someone or try to be with someone that's in your industry like that. Yeah, it is tough, man, because we've seen some guys, you know, <laughs> some big-time pastors in the, in the Baltimore area, man, get into, you know, a little bit of, little bit of trouble, you know, right. when it came to, right. you know, dancing outside the relationship. Um, right. Some of them kind of rebounded. The church forgave them. Wise forgave them. No, not all the wise forgave Yeah, one wise, yeah. <laughs> you know, the ones that are quite more known than, you know, the corner guys. Right. Man, that's that's something, man. That's, that's that's powerful, man. So so that marriage couldn't hold up. So you no. guys decided to now were you in it were you running the church or were you passing under your father at the time? I was actually I was actually associate under my father at the time. And um and it was difficult, man, because I'll be honest with you, I was I really wondered how how powerful or how effective my marriage was gonna be after going through a divorce. Yeah. And the truth is I think it got stronger because I could I could relate a little better to people mm-hmm. who were having marital issues, and I could minister to, to them on a different level than somebody like my father who just celebrated. My parents just celebrated 43 years of marriage. Wow, so, 43. Mm. So, you know, there was a, and I never thought about it this way, but the truth is, Jerry, there were some things that after going through a divorce and, and handling it properly, uh, or getting to a level where I could handle it properly, there were some there were some things that changed. I, I could I there could there were some advantages that I had to be able to minister that my father could because he had never That's experienced right. anything like that. So That's it made right. a big difference, man. So yeah, it does. It really helped and really magnified my uh, my ministry. Yeah, that is powerful because your dad was only on one side of the fence. Just like me, I'm only on one side of the fence. You know, I don't really know what it's like on the other side, you know, it, you know, right. the grass don't right. look green to me, you know, when right. I'm standing, right. you know, wow, that is powerful, man. So, so that makes you way more qualified than the yeah, average it, guy. Absolutely. And you know, here's the thing too. One of the things that I figured out with my dad, my dad has never been in ministry over 35 years. And mm-hmm. in that time frame, um, he has married countless couples. I mean, I can't. He he's lost count of how many couples he's actually mm-hmm. counseled and married. But here's wow. here's here's what's here's the messed up part. Um, he has a PhD. He has a doctorate in theology. But the truth is, uh, the seminary never trained him on how to counsel couples. Mm-hmm. So out of all the couples that he's married in over over a thirty five year period, the only one of those couples is still together. Mm. Only one, and, 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 Only here's, one. The, here, and here's the real here's the real kicker behind that. That one couple is actually in counseling with me right now. <laughs> wow, I hate to laugh about that, but goodness, yeah, crazy. yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, it, it, it's weird, man. But yeah, twenty years later, yeah, they are they're, they're actually in session with me, and it's because, yeah. So you gonna keep them together? You gonna keep that glue? Yeah. And, and, and you know, yeah. and, they, and they're doing great. They're doing great. But I think it was just some principles that I'm able to give them. To, to manage the arguments and the issues and all that stuff where my yeah. father never really experienced that. So he couldn't give them the tools to help with that. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You, you really can't really fathom what they're going through because, you you know, you're not there. But, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure, what, you know, if your mom if your mom and pop ever had ups and downs during that relationship because, you know, a lot of times when, when you, the first lady, they like being the first lady. So they, they take whatever – they take all the punches, you know, that's being thrown right. at them, good or bad. So right. I don't know how good your mom loved that lifestyle so that she didn't challenge anything that went on in the marriage, you know, because I know, you know, talking to some pastors, they, you're right, man. It's, it's like being a rock star, man. You know, yeah. the women are out of control. Women are chasing after them just like they chase after rock stars. You right. Know? And I didn't know that at first. I was like, wow, it's like that. Yeah, and the truth yeah. is, like, see, the reason that happens is there, there's an attraction. Women really want a man who is able to lead, 
the food is able mm-hmm. to give them that spiritual guidance. And when they can't get it at home, it makes that man, that pastor, a little more attractive. Yeah, yeah. So it's man, how about this, Eric? This yeah. is a good. This is a good question. This is something you could think about. Like, all right, how about the time you remember the times you know you were in school, you know, probably high school most likely, and you had an attractive teacher. You kind of heard her a little clearer than you heard the other teachers for some reason. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So that could be it, man. It's like the you know that's the class you don't miss. You know? Right. And the same women lined up on that first and second row, but they have to sit in the second. They have to sit in the second or third pew, first lady in the first pew, right? Or she's sitting somewhere else in your <laughs> church. Right. You know right. I know. I know with, with my mom, she usually sits like on that second pew to the right of my dad. Um, yeah. what, he, what he did was years ago, he stopped women from sitting on the front row. Yeah, I heard about them guys. They're making them wear, they make them wear little uh, blankets or something like that too. <laughs> right. Like right. Yeah. And, you know, and, and unfortunately, you have to have that type of mindset because you just never know how people are thinking and how they're going to react to the situation. So it's it's really a lot of the things that pastors go through and pastors are, are approached with, man, it's really all in how we handle it. Yeah. We put so much pressure on those guys too, man. Cause I, I, had, I had a conversation similar to this with a gentleman on my job who was passing the church, and you know, I was telling him what my pastor was going through, you know, because he, you know, got caught, you know, pretty much with his pants down in the, ch- you know, at the church, you know, when wow. a deacon walked in on him and um, oh, he wow. said, but, you know, and he knew him too. He said, but th- he said, this guy is, 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 is a man just like you and I, they make mistakes. I said, yeah. dude, I said, you got, I said, you got some people, man, they, they hanging on to his every word. This is their last stop. And he said right. that one time, he, he said, I know a lot of y'all come from those big churches, family churches, and this is probably your last stop, you know, not before you die, but before you call it quits and say, I'm staying home watching football on Sundays now, you know, right. or hanging out with the fella. He, he said, he knew this. He, he said, I, you guys got me on a higher pedestal than probably any other man on earth. And he was right. Someone was saying, yeah, dude, this is it right here. If you mess up, I study at home. <laughs> that's, wow. that's, what, that's what some of them wow. guys are saying to themselves, you know. I was thinking that. You know, I was like, yeah, you mess up, dude. I'm just going to stay home and deal with the guys on TV then. Because, you know, I don't know what they're doing, but I, I don't, I don't want to hear what's going on bad. I don't even want people to even tell me what they're doing. I just want to go get the word, participate, do some community service, take it home, you know. It was, getting, it was starting to be like that. You know, you get my age, you start to see a lot. You start to hear a lot. And then you start saying, man, you can't put a lot of trust in no man. You know, he's just a man. You know? Right. But, you know, but here's the thing, man. We, you know, the Bible is real clear when it tells them to to – not to put that kind of pressure and that kind of trust on the man, but it also tells the men that have passed men, we have to be careful that we don't allow that stuff to go to our head. Because a lot of times you have these, these, you have these rock star pastors who their mindset has, it, 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 they see themselves as rock stars too. Yeah, they do. So, you know, yeah. and if you're not careful with that, man, if you're not careful with that, you can, you can we can, uh, use that power, use that authority in the wrong way to ultimately hurt somebody. Um, yeah. And, you know, and, and, it, and it's, it's hard. It's difficult, but you're right. You, you, you do, we do put people on the pedestal because I never get one of my friends hearing my dad um, cuss for the very first time. And he, he, <laughs> Whoa. he, he freaks out. He was like, your father's a preacher. And I'm like, okay, but he still knows those words and he still has emotions. He still, you know, mm. there was nothing... Now, now, if he walked around and every other word out of his mouth is a cuss word. <laughs> yeah, he like thug man, preacher. Yeah, you, yeah, you, 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 you the hood preacher. <laughs> you know, <laughs> okay, I can, I can kind of see your issue, but, but you know, when you talk about somebody, I mean, man, my dad literally, when he, when he cussed, Jerry was one of these. When he cussed, you knew he was mad. Yeah, he was mad. Dog on red sea was about to part, man. People were right. like, "Oh God, Jesus coming!" <laughs> right. Yeah, they got him up there, man. He up there, man. Yeah, man. Too, but again, he's still a man. He's still a man. That's right. He is a man. He make mistakes, man. That, that's why I, it used to freak me out, man. When I used to hear about pastors were going that second marriage, I was like, "Oh my God, what, what happened to the first one?" You know, you the yeah. man. You know, yeah. she should have been the one, the queen. You can't divorce the queen. Right. But. 
you know, I had to start understanding, you know, it was like, you know, he made, it was just like some of, the, some of those guys run churches in the, in the hole because they mismanage money because you know, they steal. Right. And, you know, right. there's a lot of mistakes, you know, that's being done in the church that we don't always yeah. see. Right. Yeah. And that, that's mm. why we have to make sure we're putting our trust in God. And that's one thing I can really say that I can take away from my dad by raising us. He said, man, you know, uh, understand that, you know, Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God. It's, it's about God. It's not about the man in that pulpit. And right. it, it's, about a, it's about a personal relationship more than it is about a personality. And unfortunately, we get caught up on the pastor's personality, and we forget about the relationship with God. Mm-hmm. That's true. That is true. Man, that's one thing about religion. He said, never talk about religion on the job. Man. <laughs> Everybody got their opinion. It's oh, like, man, yeah. That was quick and politics. Fight. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah, that in politics, man. That's right, man. Exactly. All right, all right. We talking to Eric A. Terry, senior, author of Real Talk, Making of a Man. Married to Lady Deborah. His dad is the man that we all look up to, and he's he must he's the last man standing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. I got twenty three years coming up this uh, spring, man. You know, okay. twenty three years. Cause I did, but I did a lot of dating. So it was almost like being married. Because <laughs> I was like, gotcha. I had like six years with like this one and that one. Oh and wow! Like, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was only wow. really like really one that was a pretty long stretch. That was like being married. So it, that was like a long engagement. Yeah. All right, bro. Hold tight. We're gonna take a quick commercial, a sixty second break. Everybody, you want to get a drink of water? We talking to Ty, Pastor Ty. He's the man. We gonna when we come back, we are gonna talk about his book. Real Talk, Make Him a Man. Stay tuned for Book Buzz, a Book Buzz presentation from Reese Publishing. Are you an avid reader of urban fiction, looking for drama, suspense, and more? Reese World Publishing is dedicated to bringing the world's best literature to our readers. Urban fiction, erotica, sci-fi, mainstream fiction, and children's literature are just some of the genres produced by our diversified family of authors. You can reach us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at our website, www.reeswellpublishing.com. Have you been hurt? Been hurt. Been back, back there. Got a talking back to you. Talking back. Cause you're not alone. No, no. Escaping to another reality. Pre Dominic Wilkins' good book. Good books, audio books, paperback, ebook, good books. Available on author D. Wilkins, goodbooks.com. Hi, I am Arthur Crystal Alexis, and I'm on Positive Power 21 with Jerry Royce Live. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Jerry Royce Live Worldwide, Positive Power 21. Spreaker.com forward slash Positive Power 21. Worldwide, 12 countries, everybody. You have to, you got to stick it out with us, y'all. We're here for the long haul. That's right. Promoting and branding. Our good name. That's right. All right. We're being led by God, man. That's all I can say. All right, we're talking to Eric A. Terry Sr. He's the author of Real Talk. I'm sorry, he's the owner of Real Talk Consulting, multi-services firm that focuses on building and maintaining healthy relationships. So I'm assuming that this book kind of was a rebound from this from this business. You would say, Eric? Absolutely, absolutely. All right. But tell us about Real Talk Consulting, and then we're going to get into the book. Yeah, man, with Real Talk Consulting, um, what we did was basically, you know, I, I was on Facebook just with my family, friends, and classmates, and, and just started to see a lot of drama. And I was like, wow, you know, I remember having a relationship like that. And it just, I, I hated to see other people in that situation. So, you know, I would post different, um, different scenarios and different advice, relationship advice, just trying to, you know, give some people some, some clear um uh, ways to handle and to manage their relationship, you know, to make mm-hmm. things look better, man. And in doing that, man, um, my numbers started to grow. I mean, it just, it, 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 it expanded so fast before I even realized it. You know, before I knew that, I looked up and all of a sudden, I, you know, I maxed out at 5,000 people and literally, wow. had, and literally had to start a fan page, mm. you know, 
and it was either that or go to a, a second uh, second personal page. And I really didn't want to do that, so I did the fan page. Um, and in the process, man, I started getting a lot of contact about uh, different people from different people, especially churches, who wanted me to come in and do um, marriage retreats and seminars. So we began to do that. And um, and I'll be honest with you, man, when that first happened, I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, are you serious? Who, who wants me to do a marriage retreat? But I realized that this was something that God was putting me in that position to do. So yeah, man. Um, I just took it. I said, all right, let's, let's, find, let's, let's do some homework, find out what we need to do to make it work, and let's get it done. That's right. Yeah, people want to hear you, man, and they want to read your post. So obviously, so so out of that five thousand, what's the percentage of men and women that's, that's part of that that fan fan base? Oh man, the, like, when I looked at my last um, um, statistics for my page, the um, it's about seventy, probably seventy eight, seventy nine percent is in women. Oh, um, and, and, and I'll be honest, with you, it's mostly. It's mostly single women. I've got a lot of married women too, but mostly single women. And um, mm. which, which, which I found to be real interesting because mm. it, it, it showed me something. It showed me that women women really have a mindset to want to know about men. They want to yeah, know. They, they want to know what we're thinking. They want to know why we think certain ways. Uh, when we do events, when we start doing the events and sessions, man, women come out. I mean. Yeah, they do. You know what I'm saying? They come to this stuff now, mm-hmm. trying to get trying to get these brothers to come out. That's a whole other ball game. I know, um, man. Yeah. Especially during football season. Oh they man, don't no, never wait. see football going on. No, 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 you no, can't you find them. Yeah, no, 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 that ain't happening. So yeah, man. So it, it's it's um, but what it's allowed me to do is allow me to to talk to women and and give them some tips because I think some women just have uh, a uh. Kind of, a, I won't say a bad mindset, but just a different mindset on how to handle or how to talk to men. And I'm like, you see it all the time. You see women, you know, getting in a man's face and putting their finger in their face and pushing him. It's like, yeah. you, you can't, man, that's just, that's, that's not how you approach a man, you know. Yeah, you're right. Um, Even on the job, man. Even on the you know, job when, yeah, when, when yeah. you're leaders, your supervisors. Some of them just don't know how, especially the ones that never been married or in really good relationships. Right, you know. right, and that's the key. That's the key because if you've never had that, and you don't know how to correspond. Man, it really it all comes back down to communication and being mm-hmm. able to communicate effectively. So, I'm trying to teach people that now, I'm uh, volunteering at a place here called the House of Refuge, where it's a uh, uh, kind of a halfway house program for me. Uh, and these guys, man, I'm I'm able to go in every Tuesday and teach a class with them. And basically, I'm, I've made the book a workbook, and I'm kind of walking through that with them. It's just helping these guys mm-hmm. get their leadership skills up, increase their communication skills, yeah. kind of change, change their situations at home. Yeah, y'all talk about anger management and everything, because that's, <laughs> that's like a key issue. Definitely. <laughs> but, you know, here's, here's one of the things that I figured out, even when it came to anger management. If I could get guys to recognize, to to respond, let's put it this way, if I can get guys to reply instead of responding, mm-hmm. they can control their anger. I think a lot yeah. of what happens with, with men, you know, and this was me back in the day, uh, I would listen to respond instead of listening to understand. Mm. So I think what, yeah. I would end up doing, what I would do is I would, I, I'm listening to what she's saying, but I'm only listening to get enough for me to make a comeback. That's right. That's right. You know, you're trying to win. You're trying to win the argument. I'm trying to, you're trying to win. Right. Right. Absolutely. And and that's and I think that's one of the biggest struggles because listen, the, the truth is a man's number one need is success. So mm-hmm. so we we need that challenge. That's why we like sports. That's why right. we like games. We that's why we don't like to lose. It's, mm-hmm. it's success is our number one need. So. When we're in those situations and we feel like we're losing an argument, I mean, you you put that brother, uh, you know, you back him up against a, with the ropes. He, he's going to fight wow. you. That's right. Wow. That's, that's funny, man, because like you can use that same analogy when it comes to education. If a young man, you know, if he if he's having problems in school and he's in the eighth, ninth grade and his parents are not home or he's a single family household and he, his mom needs help anyway with money, right, right. you know, he's going to bail. You know, because yep. you feel like he's losing the race anyway. Right. You know? Absolutely. Wow. 
All right. Now, now your book. Now your book covers all of this. You know, is it addressing more females or more male or was fifty fifty? Well, you know what? Originally, the book is the first four chapters is all about me. Because it, in the process, I was writing the book and going through all this uh, relationship tips. And, and in the process of writing, God said, "Okay, but the people like I like what you said about your listeners." He said, "All right, the people need to know who you are." Mm-hmm. They, need to, they need to know your story. So the first four chapters, man, I really talk about my story. I talk about my growing up, my, uh, you know, being raised in a, in a pastor's home, being raised with two older brothers who were very athletic and very popular, um, mm-hmm. you know, who were, who were thin, who were, you know, um, good looking. And here I was becoming a little chubby fat kid, you know, mm-hmm. you know um, and trying to live up under that um, the scrutiny. Of that, so right. um, so a lot of those things, man. Uh, the first four chapters, pretty much, are just all about that, all about my my life and my relationship issues and the issues that I had um, that kept me from, you know, doing the things properly that I needed to do. So it it, it really, you know, because here's one of the things: if you start wrong, it, it's hard to get back. You know what I'm saying? So for me, a lot of the situations that I had been through with it, when it came to relationships, it was stuff that I had done wrong from the beginning, but never got the right information. Yeah. 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 So now, all right, now, now, my question is, that before you met your first wife, were, were you doing a lot of dating before you married? Did you, did you have a lot of experience with women? No, I mean, you know what, honestly, um, I, I was that, again, I was that fat kid. <laughs> I was afraid. Uh, I was. I, I had a, a major fear of rejection. So mm. I wouldn't, I wasn't the guy that would go out and start talking to women, trying to get their attention. Um, right. So for me, I didn't date a whole lot. Now, when I did start dating, it was all because either somebody set me up with somebody or uh, I just told a friend of mine this other day, I used to use my singing ability to get mm. because, you know, mm. I knew, I said, hey, if I can, you know, if I saw a young lady that I like, then I would, I'm one of those, I would start singing to make her make sure she heard me and hope she would come and say something. Mm. You know, mm. so I used that, I used that. And, um, but the problem was for me, is that was cool for a minute, but the problem is you can't continue to hide behind that for too long. You gotta, mm-hmm. you know, you gotta, you gotta open your mouth and start talking. You know, you can't just come out like that. So yeah, you be like uh, Michael but, Jackson, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, right. Okay. So yeah, man. So I really didn't. I didn't date a whole lot now in high school. Probably, probably more than average. But I think it was only because um, once I started singing. It it changed people's perception of me. I was no longer oh, just a little fat kid. You know what I'm saying? Right. It so it made yeah. it a little different. And, and you know, and plus I stood out because there wasn't a lot of guys, you know, running around singing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, you like the Levert. You like like Gerald Levert, his son. Oh that's man, yes sir. One. Yes sir. Yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Man. Wow, you had to do. Hey, you had to do what you had to do, man. You know, some guys got the loose, some got the voices, some got the height. You know, you exactly. use what God gave you. That's right. Exactly. So attracted, but, then, but when you counseling women, like I find out, I found that like women when they, they the way they they identify men in high school, it, they, they 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 look at guys the same way when they're in their forties and fifties. They still looking for that same type of guy. Absolutely. You know? And there's not going to be a lot of them out there that's going to be available at 40 and 50, you know. Right. So you kind of got to scale down a little bit. Sure. I know. <laughs> right. Well, see, and I think what the problem is, I know with, I know for me, when I think back to my exes, uh, I had a couple of girls that I talk about in the book that, that didn't want to be with me in high school because they didn't mind being my friend. But they didn't, they couldn't see themselves dating me because of my weight or whatever at that time. And, um, then, of course, years later, get out of graduate high school and, you know, go through divorce and lose a bunch of weight. And it's all, oh, mm-hmm. oh, you know, and everything changes. But right. it, it was sad because to see these same women, like you said, still chasing the athletic dude that 
And mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, your history with these dudes ain't that good. I mean, you <laughs> you know, you, you've had these brothers, and they treated you like dirt. Why would you keep looking for that same type of dude? Mm-hmm. But, you know, it, it, for me, it's all about it. It's all about teaching women now to value themselves so that when they find somebody who values them, they recognize it. That's right. That's right. I mean, I understand you have to have some type of attraction for somebody, but sure. but always, I I, 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 told, I told my sister and a couple of friends, I said, you guys missed the boat when you didn't marry the guy that was like your really good friend. That was the one that was really for you. I said, you should yeah. have a relationship where you're like so, I mean, I met couples that they have longevity in their marriage, and then you look at the, the secret to their success or their formula of why it's still going strong, and it's because they get along so well. They want to be with each other all the time. It's like, are y'all together all the time? Do you have to drive her everywhere? Do you have to go everywhere he goes? They're yes. together all the time. You now, know? listen, it, it is key. We, we, my wife and I tell people all the time, you've got to understand, if you don't understand anything else, people are so busy trying to fall in love, and the truth, mm-hmm. we need to learn to fall in like. That's right. We like them. Like, like them. Like them a lot. Like you got to be able to like them, man, because I'm telling you, man, there is, and, and listen, I'm, I'm sure there's several, plenty of your listeners can, can attest to this, there is nothing worse than being in love with somebody you don't like. Yeah. That's a bad spot that to be here, man. <laughs> yeah, you sit next to them at the movie. I can't stand this person. Why am I at the <laughs> movies with them? Why I'm laying in this bed with them? I can't stand them. Right. Yeah. Right. Got to like sure. them. Don't even call them when you, when you don't see them all day. <laughs> like you don't right. care. They like right. a roommate. <laughs> right. And, 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 you know, man, that's, and so many people get married now, man, for the wrong reasons, and they end up being in relationships where they are. They're just roommates. And, you mm-hmm. know, they, they can't they can't break up because they got too many bills together. You know, they got too much stuff going on. So it's like you, you're just there. But we, here we are married, right. living single. I mean, that is no place. That's, that's, just, that's not a good place to be, man. Yeah, especially especially you hook up with them girls that had them supermodel bodies, man. You know they get start getting their forties and fifties, man. They you know they they not gonna be that much of a supermodel no more. Right, you know? it's the same thing. Same thing with those athletic guys. Because I I, I, yep. know, I don't know about your experience. I know for me, a lot of those when I went to my twentieth anniversary, twentieth reunion, man, I remember laughing so hard <laughs> because I walked to my twentieth reunion and all the dudes that were the, the athletic, you know, shock guys. Man, they were just as fat as I was, and I thought it was hilarious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember my best friend, man. He said, "I used to, I used to brush my hair forward all the time and back." He said, "He, he said, yeah, Jerry. He said, you gonna be bald. You gonna be bald when you get in your forties or something like that." He said, "Man, I saw him in his thirties. He had no hair. I still got my <laughs> hair. So, I, that's what I focus on. That's my focus." <laughs> I said, yeah. "Man, this kid. That, that was a." a Good old days, man. You got to love your boys, though, man. The homies, yeah, man. man. You got to love yeah. the homies. Yeah. They keep you in check, man. Make, they, some of them guys have, have made their buddies successful because of certain things they've said in high school to them, you know? Absolutely. You're going to be nothing. You know, you're going to go prove them wrong. And then you yeah, pull right. up yeah. in, a, in, a, in a helicopter. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Look, we're going to take a quick break, man. So we when we get back, we're going to take your, your final thoughts, man, to – to, uh, today's conversation, man. We appreciate you being here, all right, you know, telling your story, man. We wish you the best with the book with 5,000 people following you, man. I know you probably sold, you be selling out all the time, man. We try that and, best, um, Doc. <laughs> that's right, that's right. All right, hold tight for a quick presentation with Lisa Sandler, with WRP Promotions. Are you an author looking for promotional services or a reader looking for a great read at low prices? In this competitive world of books, Fighting Royalty Promotions is dedicated to bringing authors and readers together to build a greater respect for literature through our various promotional services and online bookstore. So head over to writingroyaltypromotions.com and check us out. PositivePower21.org Internet Radio. You are listening to Positive Power 21.org with Jerry Royce. All right. Thank you, family. We're talking to Eric A. Terry Sr., Real Talk Consulting, Real Talk Making of a Man. All right. Tell people where they can get your book at, man. Absolutely. Where they can meet man. you. Absolutely, man. 
man. I'm on Facebook. Uh, they go to facebook.com slash Real Talk Consulting. Uh, that'll get you to my fan page. Uh, the book is available right now on Amazon, also on Create Space, Create Space, the ebook store. Uh, there are a lot of little independent stores that also have it now. Um, they can also go to our website, realtalkconsultant.com, and they can get the book there. Um, and we, we've been having an awesome, awesome time with the book. The, the response has been amazing. Uh, the thing that's really been blessing me, Jerry, is me. I've got mm-hmm. brothers calling me that are reading the book saying, man, I'm not a big reader, but I read mm-hmm. your book in a couple of hours. I read your book in a couple of days, and I saw myself, and it really helped me. And now that's mm-hmm. the thing that really, that's really been blessing me, man. So, uh, but yeah, always, they can also go um, to... Um, we're actually working at it, getting it in Barnes and Noble. Um, okay. Like Amazon is the biggest thing, man, right now. Uh, but if they want an autograph copy, you know, I still do an autograph copy. They can go to my website, realtalkconsultants.com. Man, you got to give me a copy, man, so I can present it on my show, man, my, you. my YouTube I show. You. All yes, right? sir, I got you. I got you. I see, I see my address, man, so we can talk it up, man. I love talking yeah. about it. Matter of fact, I was trying to do a romance show, but my dad said I got out of control. <laughs> I'm going to try it again. <laughs> I'm going to read your book first, and then I'm going to try it again. There you go. There you go. There you go. That'll work. Yeah, was, yeah, he said we were too dark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna read your book, man. Then I'm gonna try it again. I even got a host that's gonna help me out this time, man. Keep me, keep me in perspective. Yeah, okay. man. I appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Now tell us again about Real Talk Consulting. How people get in contact with you, man? Who's looking for some help? You know, they on the fence right now, about to jump. Absolutely, man. Listen, and, and, and this is one of the things I tell anybody: if you were in a relationship that you value, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't want to talk to people who don't value the relationship they have. Because not only will you not be will you not be willing to invest in something you don't value, but you won't invest time either. So in other words, everything I say, everything I tell you, you know, to try, you won't even attempt it because you know um, that's got to be key. So if you are in a relationship that you value, and if you feel like there are just some key things that you're missing that you don't have that you need to make this thing work, contact. Listen, we um. And listen, we're like you, Jerry. We're worldwide with this thing, man. We, um, mm-hmm. uh, I don't just do local. If um, I have couples that, are, that call us on Skype, that we, we set up Skype sessions, um, mm-hmm. and I can meet with them right there, you know, and talk to them and, and you know, speak to both. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and give them some tools, man, to really help them make their relationship better. Because the truth is, the church hasn't prepared us. The educational system hasn't prepared us. So we created Real Talk Consulting to be a place to help people build their relationships and make it work. Yeah, sounds good, man. Sounds good. Yeah, definitely send me that book, man, so I can straighten yes, up sir. old girl, let her straighten old girl up, man. She like to work all the time now. <laughs> we both like to work. So, yeah, but we make we make we make the weekend special though, because you know, this matter of fact, the next show is my last show until Monday, and it's all about her, man. It's all about her. That's good. That's right. That's right. Miss right. Nene, it's all about her. All right, bro, man, I appreciate you coming on, man. We got to have you back on here, too, man. We got to have hey, you back. Anytime, man, anytime. Yeah. I'm glad to. Yeah, we got we to, gotta, we gotta, man, in fact, if you do a webinar, man, let us know, man, so we can tell people, you know, where they can find you. Do, do you do Google Hangout? I sure do. Yeah, we got to let us know, man, so we can crank that out, man. I'm always trying hey, to push um, positive things, man. You got to give me some positive stuff to push. I'm getting tired hey, of man, pushing we, all these urban fiction books all the time, man. I got to hey, push man, some, some nonfiction, right? Doc, I'm going to tell you, we uh, got plenty because we, we're doing classes and schedules all the time. So we got plenty of stuff that we can yeah. do. Yeah. So we'll do that. All right, please. Yeah, please let us know. This shoot it right in the inbox, man. We'll make sure we put that on the, the front of our things to do list and promoting, gotcha. all right? We'll all do. right, y'all. Man, look, all right, we appreciate you, bro. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Thank and you, look, sir. All right, appreciate I, you. I tell I tell people all the time, man, when they want to hear the good stuff, man, especially tonight, man, this guy has over 5,000 people following him on Facebook. They want to know, women want to know what they're doing wrong, what they can do right, how they can get a man, how they can keep their man. And then men want to know how they can treat the women right, how they can communicate, how they can listen to them and not try to win, win, the, win the race every time. Right. Eric is the man to talk to. Real Talk Consulting. He's on Facebook. Take care, everybody. We appreciate you listening. And like I always say, stay awesome all week long. Peace, everybody. I'm Positive Power 21.org and Spreaker.com forward slash Positive Power 21.
Thank you for tuning in to Jerry Voice Live on PositivePower21.org and Spreaker.com forward slash PositivePower21. This is a Voice Enterprises production. And don't forget about replay on Facebook.com forward slash Jerry Voice Live. All right, that's. Have you been hurt? Been hurt. Been bad, babe. Gotta talk him back to him. Talk him back. Cause you're not alone. No, no. Escape into another reality. reality. Through Dominic Wilkins' good book. Good books of your books, paperback, ebook, good books. Available on author D. Wilkins, goodbooks.com. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. On February 23rd, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, I will be live on Jerry Rose Live Radio. I will be discussing my new album and my new single coming in February. Stay tuned and we'll see you there. My name is author Alita H. My book is Dangerously in Love, Blame It on the Streets, and I'm on Jerry Rose Live Worldwide. You are listening to PositivePower21.org with Jerry Royce. What up? It's your boy, Kano Kingston. Hi, this is Angel Session. Hey, this is Kat. Hi, I'm Teresa Powell. Hi, Jerry. This is Iowa Sandro Carter. Hi, this is Phil Powers. Hello, this is Teresa Bobby with Jerry Royce Live. Hi, I'm Phil LeBaron. I'm live on the Jerry Royce Show. Hi, right, what are you doing? Boy, who's the same? Hey, this is Dolly, the poet, spoken word artist. Hello, this is Lamar Marquis with Jerry Worth Live. All right, all right, everyone. you got Robin in, and I'm keeping it live right now on Jerry Royce Live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's up? This is a award winning podcast with the greatest podcast on earth. Thank you for stopping by. I'm your host, Jerry Voice Live Worldwide on Internet Radio, where you get your positive on. So when it's all positive, it's all power. That's positive power. This is a worldwide podcast for growth, wealth, and success. Thank you. Think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Think again. Set in the green hills of western New Jersey, inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company where decisions are worth billions of dollars and human lives worth less. Nicholas Harding, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career, family, and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse. It's a sense thriller novel by Bill Powers, published by Donna Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com or DonnaInc.org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. Are you looking for the next great read? A book filled with love, passion, betrayal, and intrigue. The award-winning novel, Season of Change, by Tamika Patrice Kane is sure to satisfy your literary sweet tooth. Check out this must-read book reviewers are calling uplifting and emotional and exceptionally great read, deeply intense and thought-provoking. Order your copy today, available in paperback and ebook on Amazon.com or at www.TamikaPatrice.com. Are you an author looking for promotional services or a reader looking for a great read at low prices? In this competitive world of books, Writing Royalty Promotions is dedicated to bringing authors and readers together to build a greater respect for literature through our various promotional services and online bookstore. So head over to writingroyaltypromotions.com and check us out. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and welcome to Positive Power 21.org. I am Jerry Voice Live, and you, we have a sponsor for tonight. Tonight's sponsor is James DeShay. That's right. So stay tuned for his 30-second presentation. The poet, James DeShay, romance man. 
Are you looking for a great book of poetry that is romantic, heartfelt, and full of male emotion? Then get Thoughts, Love, and Reflections by James K. Deshay. That's D-E-S-H-A-Y. Go to www.jamesdeshay.com. You will enjoy Thoughts, Love, and Reflections. All right, all right, everybody. Thank you for coming back. Stand with us. That's right. Support our sponsors, everybody. We really appreciate having sponsors. You know, we've just been around for a year now. We celebrate on December 21st, 2013. And it just, it's just awesome to say, hey, this podcast has, has generated some, some great buzz. Um, we've been having some fantastic guests on the show, including the one we have tonight. That'll be Miss Alita Hodges. She's here to talk about her new book, Dangerously in Love. So let me unmute her so I can bring her on. I'm going to read her bio, then we're going to say hi to her and, and get to know her. That's right, because my, 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 my Merlin family and my D.C. family, we'd like to know who you are. All right, Dangerously in Love, Blaming on the Streets, Volume 1, Paperback. It was, uh, it was released October 2014. Author Lita Hodges is poet and writer born and raised in mid-Michigan. Her debut novel, Dangerously in Love, was published in August 2014, on Cinematic Inc., sub- subsidiary of SBR Publications, owned and operated by best-selling author David Weaver. Uh, we still haven't had that brother on yet. Alita currently lives in Lansing, Michigan, where she is a dental assistant. She began writing poetry at the age of 12 and has always been an avid reader. Her poems have been sought out by fans and friends alike for years. Her book, Dangerously in Love, is a trilogy series that chronicles a love tale filled with danger, passion and one woman dream of escape and i remember that commercial too on my show we still play that <laughs> sometime i'm just sorry we put a date on that thing when you released it in november i could still be rocking that so how you doing Lita? welcome to positive power oh thank you for having me i am doing great i am doing so great yeah so awesome to have you back second time around right doing, right that's right you must love it here you know you can yeah you i do i time. do <laughs> That's right. We had you featured on our our adult program, and he said, she said, which I really love that show. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to revamp that show, but no, no, <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, I had a ball that night. Yeah, we did. We 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 cut up. We all cut up. So you gotta let your hair down sometimes. Right. <laughs> but the powers of the B, you know, the company, they weren't all that happy with the program too much. I had to I had to steer in another direction. So I'm gonna be working with Ramon. We're gonna come up with some topics and. And stick to them because, of course, you know, we was reading our questions from some of the popular online publications that's based on, you know, men and women relationships and, and their uh, habits, <laughs> their sexual habits. Right. So it was kind of funny, though, you know, talking to people, find out what they know and what they don't know. It was just so much fun, though. But anyway, you know, but, you know, I got to think about some of the kids that listen to the program. After all, we are streaming in other countries now and, you know, where it's nighttime here, it's daytime there. You don't know how people, uh, you know, listen to internet radio these days. With, uh, exactly. You know, computers being the way it is. And, you know, some places actually have free wire, free wireless services in their country. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, we're not there yet, but <laughs> we're close, though. I heard we're close. Yeah, I get a, I get a wireless signal um, at my house. So my kids, you know, switch back and forth sometimes. All right, so we're here to talk about you, okay. brand new project. Well, I remember we promoted this for you when you released it. I think it was around November. Uh-huh. I'm dangerously in love. Uh, it's out there on Amazon.com for anybody looking to snatch it up real quick. And we're going to talk about your reviews later in the show. But before we get started, we want to know who is author Alita Hodges? Um, I'm just a regular person. I'm just, you know, I'm a dental assistant. I work daily. I got a regular nine to five, you know, my passion is writing. So in my spare time, I write, I like to write. I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother, you know, I'm really close with my sisters, my family. So, you know, I, I stay in the house a lot. I'm not really a um, party or, you know, that type of, that type of person, but I just love to write and I'm just stepping in this, you know, writing game with everybody else. And I'm just, I love it. It's like I'm home. Yeah. It's like, okay, I belong. This is what I should be doing. That's right. That's right. All right. That's so awesome. Now, Lisa, 
So, you know, you're a grandmother, and, you know, I, wish, uh-huh. I forgot that you was a grandmother, you know, because we see you, you know, posting out there on Facebook. You know, <laughs> I guess it's just hard to tell people ages these days. You know, people yes. age so well. You know, people found, the, you know, the fountain of youth. Now, you know, now we know, you know that you're not a, you know, you're basically a homebody, you got a nine to five. Uh-huh. But tell us a little bit about, you know, how you, how you was brought up and everything, you know, your upbringing. I was the youngest of, you know, I was the youngest of four. Um, my mom and dad was together for 40, um, like 45 years, and he passed a few years ago. Oh, so, you know, I was, we had like a, a really tight-knit family. Um, my mom was a teen mom. Her mom was a teen mom. I was a teen mom. It was just like, you know, a family, you know, this is just a family curse. It's just a generational curse, I guess. But, yeah. you know, everybody made it through it, just made a stronger woman at the end. We didn't let it, we didn't take it and, you know, let it interfere in anything we were doing and just made a stronger woman at the end. So that's why I'm, I'm not that old. So to be a grandmother, I'm only, you know, I'm just about to hit the 40 mark this year. So. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I know. I'm, sometimes I wish I could be a oh, grandpa, papa, you know, because my son, you know, Brandon, you know, he's, he's about your age. No, he's oh, okay. actually younger than you, but he's in his early 30s. But, um, oh, okay. You know, he's still out there looking. You know, he's been dating a little young lady for the past year, so who knows. But, uh, yeah, you you know, but I got a young son, too. I got a son that's only 11. I think he's 11. Maybe he's 12. He's 12 now. So I'm still running a <laughs> little league event. Okay. School event. And my daughter, she's just uh, 14. I think she's 14. I don't, you know, they grow up so fast. You kind of. Do yeah. track of their age. You know, you don't want well, them to youngest, grow up. My youngest is a boy. He's 17. And then I have um, three three girls. That's my youngest. And my girls are 24, 22, and 19. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Ah, grown wow. women. They're grown women. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, y'all, so if you do hang out, you can take them with you. you know? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so nah, mom going to let, let her head down. I can't go. That's I'll right. I'll tell mom. All right. So when you so when you're not writing, you know what's going on. What, what are you doing when you're not writing? I you spend know. a lot. You know, I try to spend a lot of my spare time with my grandkids. I love them to death. And you know, I just write like I've been really on um, like focused. Like um, so, my first book came out in October. I'm done with the second book, and I'm working on a new series. So you know, I, I've really been writing a lot lately. So I'm just trying to you know I'm really trying to get some books under my belt this year. Yeah. So yeah, my main right. focus this year is just to keep writing and just keep going. That's right. Keep grinding. That's what they do out yeah. there. All right. So, so the last time we talked, you know, you know, you was, you was doing the same thing. You was grinding. So, so what's new out there in the in the social media world when it comes? To, well, let's just say what's new in the publishing world. Any, any changes? Anything that you can share that can help a young writer, someone who's who's looking to get into the business? What's your advice? Um, My advice is to try, you know, a lot of people, I know people that say, well, I write all the time, but you know, I can't, you know, they don't really believe in themselves that they can write a book, you know, and it's just, it's just not that if you're a writer and you like to write, or even if you like to do journals, you know, write journals or something, you know, it's a writer inside. You just got to get out there and try and believe in your work. That's your piece of art. That's your work. So you got to just believe in it. So somebody else can believe in it too, or they're not going to believe in it. You got to believe in yourself. That's right. Now, I mean, you have a lot of motivation in you. Is, is, is that because, you, you know, you're a poet? You know, you write poetry. I know a lot of people write poetry are, are self-motivated. Is that is that the deal with you? Why? You said why? Because I have a lot of motivation in me. I think it's yeah, you, because... Yeah you, see, yeah, you seem to be self-motivated. Is it because, you're, you know, you're a poet? Maybe so. I, po- poetry to me is like therapy. So Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I, when I let out or whatever, usually, you know... Make my best poem, something was going on in my life. So it's mm. like therapy for me. But I just try to stay positive, you know. I really believe, you know, you stay positive and positive come back to you. If you negative and complain and, you know, then mm. that's what's going to come around you. I really believe that. That's right. So. That is so true. Now, when did you first start writing poetry? When, when, I was 12, when I was 12 years old. 12 years old. All right. Yeah. So you found it on your own. Did somebody introduce it to you or you Stumble across it in the library, and you just loved it. I was in a, I was sitting in um in my civics class, and the teacher was talking about um. You know, a lot of the violence and stuff going on around. You know, around that time, you know, it was like the nineties, whatever. Around that time, then, 
early, late 80s, 90s, whatever, around that time, that's when a lot of violence just started happening. A lot of kids was getting shot. A lot of stuff was just happening. So I wrote a um, poem, and he was just like, you know, how we can figure out ways to, you know, help the world or whatever. And I wrote a poem called Teach Peace when I was 12 years old. And he printed it out, and he gave it to every teacher. And I was so mm-hmm. impressed. It was mm-hmm. a really, I re, you know, I put an excerpt in it in my first book. I don't know how mm-hmm. I remembered that poem. It must have been meant, you know. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I know that yeah. was a great feeling. Um, a teacher sharing your work with his colleagues. You yeah. Know. Uh, great feeling. So, so what happened after that? Did you continue to write? Did you join a newspaper team? The, you know, the. Nope. Not you know. I've community? always been. Yeah, I've always you know been a like you know an inside person. So, um, no, I would just write at home. So I wanted to you know for Christmas I didn't want no new Jordans or Nikes or no dials or nothing like that. I wanted a typewriter. I wanted some paper and pencils and you know I wanted to write you know that's all I could think of I love the feeling of the keyboard I love that mm-hmm. so have you published a poetry book yet no but I, I want to eventually poetry is not that easy for me because it's like it just happens sometimes you know oh. it might be something on my mind or something going on and just happens so you know it's just you know I got poetry here and there I don't think I could just actually sit down and try to write a whole poetry book because I would want it to be genuine. Yeah. So 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 you don't you don't do spoken word. No, but I want to eventually. Yeah. Oh, I love spoken word. I was hoping you were gonna say, yeah, Jerry, I have a couple pieces I can read for you right now. No, that's on my bucket list. I'm shy. I got a book signing Saturday. My first book signing. I am so shy. I'm really gonna have to put my big girl pants on and yeah. you know get out there. <laughs> you gonna have family with you? Family gonna be yeah. with you. Yeah, my sister, my mom probably be there with me. Yeah, as long as you got that support, there everything be okay. Yeah. 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 Wow. So your first book sign. So why why it's taking so long for you to do a book signing? You know, I work. It's just been a lot going on, and then I've been writing. You know, I just like I said, I've been writing and all that, and I really didn't even think about a book signing. You know, and then a lot of people from my hometown, which is like forty minutes away from where I live now. It's like, we want a book, we want a book, you know, and I'm like, order it. You know, don't nobody like ordering, I guess, paperback. So mm-hmm. I, that's when I was like, well, let me do a book signing. I ordered book, books, and I just started making arrangements, and I'm like, wow, I planned a book signing. I'm having a book signing. <laughs> oh, so you, okay, so you did, went ahead and ordered a couple of books yourself. So would you order them through Amazon? Yeah, well, my publisher do, does that part for me. Oh, your publisher, that's right. I forgot yeah. you got a publisher. So how's the publishing relationship going on? How's that going oh, for it's, you? It's, you know what, I, TBRS, that group, that's like the, um, that's like a blessing. I'm blessed to be in that group. You know, yeah. it's just they, they, they inspire each other. You know, every time I wake up, I, you know, if I'm on Facebook and I'm going on a um, feed, you know, and it's the group, you know, like our private group that we talk in, everybody mm-hmm. got so much inspirational stuff to say. It just keeps you going. It keeps me going. You know, and I really yeah. appreciate that. I can get advice from other authors that's well-established. That's, you know, number one, number two, every book they touch, they, you know, their numbers are just, you know, phenomenal. And they, they talk to me, you know, just like, you know, to me they're not normal. I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, I read your books, you know. So for <laughs> them to talk to me and I can communicate with them and they can help me, that's like everything to me. I love that group. That's yeah. the best thing that could have ever happened to me to be a part of TBRS. That's right. Amen. That's a blessing. So they really working it out there. So where are they based at? Um, um, C- would you say C- SBR, um, right? Well, uh, T- TBRS, that's a group of publishing companies and people. But I'm with Cin- Cinematic Inc. Publications, which is a part of the TBRS group. Okay. Oh, you said T, because I thought we downloaded it said SBR. So you said TBR. Yeah, it's like, S- huh. it was SBR. Yeah, I got to do some updating to that. Oh, they call it T now? Okay. All it's right. TBR, yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, good, good. All right, well, hold tight. When we come back, we're going to talk about what they're saying about Dangerously in Love and, you know, how you feel about the trilogy series and how's it coming along when the next one going to drop. So we're going to stay tuned for a book buzz presentation. Like I tell everybody, you know, if you want to get your, your name out there and you want people to know who you are, so when you start dropping your second and third book, they already know who you are on Positive Power 21. Because we're in Washington, the Merlin area, where we buy books. That's right, everybody. Check us out. Think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Think again. Set in the green hills of western New Jersey, inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company where decisions are worth billions of dollars 
and human lives worth less. Nicholas Hardy, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career, family, and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse, a suspense thriller novel by Bill Powers, published by Donna Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com or DonnaInc.org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. This is Angel Sessions. On February 23rd, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, I will be live on Jerry Rose Live Radio. I will be discussing my new album and my new single coming in February. Stay tuned and I will see you there. Hi, I am Martha Crystal Alexis, and I'm on Positive Power 21 with Jerry Roy Slides. Woohoo! That's right. Crystal, she was here. Crystal Alexis. And don't forget Angel Sessions coming soon. The big superstar, urban gospel star. That's right. She coming back to Positive Power. I think she was one of my first musical um, artists to come on the show. You know, that was my first time interviewing them after talking to book authors so long. Like, I'm ready to ask them, you know, where did they get that fictional story from? <laughs> you can't ask them that. But anyway, she's coming back. Give Jerry Voice a second chance. That's right, talking to a superstar. All right, right now we're talking to superstar author Lita Hodges. She got to be a superstar because she came back, gave me a second chance. What's going on, Lita? You ready to talk about this book? Oh, don't tell me. Leave the call dropped again. All right, hold tight. Let me see. Yep. She here. Lady, you still here? I see her call. All right, y'all. So we, we Can you hear? Leader. I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, you here? Yeah, I hear you yeah. now. Okay. <laughs> All right, no problem. All right, Lita, so we ready to talk about this book of yours. Now, what are the people saying out there? Are you happy about what's going on with this? But the book is it selling the way you want? Do you need more yeah, marketing? What's did. going on? I can't. I can't complain. You know, this is my first book. I, you know, I put myself out there with that book and getting it published. And you know, I didn't know. You know, I didn't. You know, but I got you know some really good reviews. Of course, I got a couple bad reviews. You know, but you got to have mm-hmm. tough skin. You got to keep going. Everybody ain't gonna like you, and that's fine. But I got yeah. some really good reviews. You know, some really good reviews, and I got. You know, fans, people who like the book, can't wait to book two, who follow me, who, you know, that feels good to know that people read my book and they know the characters and, you know, that really feels good. Yeah. Now, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty competitive out there in the urban fiction world. Do you, do you see yourself, mm-hmm. you know, writing some other genre, you know, once you get yourself finished established here, you know, with this company? Maybe. I mean, um, maybe a poetry book or self-help. I want to write um, some self-help. Yeah, I can see you doing that. You know, you seem like the type. Now, let's see what they're saying out there. I just finished okay. reading Dangerously in Love, five stars. Um, Alita H., I couldn't put it down. Once I started, this book is amazing. I can't wait for the next book. That's right. She said she's ready to pre-order. <laughs> <laughs> she said very talented. So you got so much talent. What? You're not, you're not just going to limit yourself, you know, just with urban fiction, are you? You know, you see yourself um, doing romance. You know, romance is pretty hot. I remember, yeah. you know, talking about that. So what's up with that? Um, you know, I, you never know. I never know, you know, that like the, the new book, the third book I'm writing right now is, um, I, you know, Drifted from Dangerously in Love. Um, mm-hmm. This is a whole new series, you know. And I always like in my Dangerously in Love, you know, it was a street literature book, urban fiction, but, you know, it was a message in there as far as domestic violence, you know, women, women lifting themselves up. So now I'm um, kind of tackling the issue of um, um, police, you know, all these guys getting shot, men getting shot by police officers, yeah. you know. So why that story, you know, that's like just in the story a little bit, but I'm hitting a lot of main points why another story is going on around it. But it's, mm-hmm. it's a really good story. I'm, I'm getting, you know, proud of myself. I'm really proud of myself. Yeah, because you talk in this book, you talk about a, a abusive cheating, a womanizer, yeah, you know, a woman's a woman's worst enemy, you know, yeah. man that just can't stay in one place, you know. Now, I mean, this is you know, I guess we won't go off the subject a little bit, but you know, it's pretty much the character in your book. I, I think we're talking about Jimmy. Mm-hmm. Um, now, you know, black men, 
you know, the, you know, your experience with us, you know, the character in your book. I'm sure you had to do some research. What was, what was some of the, the known facts, you know, that was coming out when you was researching your character, Jimmy? Because you wanted to be truthful with him. You didn't want to just make them all up, but, you know. Right. Were you, what, what did you find out about black men when you was researching this book? Um, um, as far as um, abusers or black men in general? Yeah, you're on your research, black men pray. What did you learn? You know, that was a surprise um, to you. Um, that was a surprise to me. I, I, I don't think I can be surprised. <laughs> you were surprised. <laughs> yeah, you've been around a while. Okay, but just but tell us what were some of the things that you know you like to share that you know the you know about black men that you think you like to talk about that was part you know of like as far as um, black men period, as far as people period, you know. Hurt people hurt people, so you never know what that went on in somebody else's life, you know. Mm-hmm. And then as a woman, we got, you know, women just got to just really love themselves and, you know, try to to do what's best for them at the end of the day. We, you know, as a woman, we get, we so emotional. We always trying to take care of somebody and love and no matter what, mm-hmm. it, you know, no matter what should come to do, it should be only with yourself, you know. Mm-hmm. You should love yourself like that. So, you know, just as, you know, people in general, you know, yeah. with the book. So you're saying that, you know, when you was researching this character, it was nothing really surprised you that what men had to say, you know, when you, because you did have to do some research about Jimmy, right? You didn't just yeah. write him from your mind, right? So it was nothing that guys said to kind of like, whoa, y'all think like that? Nothing, you know? A lot of men don't, a lot of men don't think it's, um, I know that a lot of men think it's okay to cheat and that everybody do it. And I think that's because of the media and how it's just out there like that. Like that's, that's the new thing to have a, you know, more than one girlfriend or cheat, and a woman, that, that shouldn't even be a problem no more. You know, a lot of men mm-hmm. think that's okay, and I, I think that I don't think that's okay. Now, these were single guys, or these guys were married or engaged? Both. 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 Yeah. Well, I, I remember I met a guy from Africa, and I remember, you know, when I was just, you know, out there myself, you know, just not sure who I want to, you know, make the main lady, you know, because you, right. you just keep thinking you're going to miss the, you know, you're going to miss the opportunity for the ultimate. And I remember this guy said, um, the name was Joseph. I'll never forget him. He's from Saigon. Saigon. He said, um, he said, it's okay to have more than one wife, but you got to be able to afford all of them. You can't buy a house for one and not the other. Wow. Like, really? Yes. You, you know, <laughs> wow. You, gotta really, you really got to be a king. <laughs> you know, everybody live in a townhouse, you know. Right. But, but I said, wow, you know, he said it's okay, but you gotta be the, you know, for both of them, you know. So, I guess guys do have it inside them, you know, that, you know, you see it on TV when you watch those 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 movies on those African kings and queens, you know how they, you know, the guys bathe by many women and that yeah. might be enough for that be enough for a guy right there to keep him happy, <laughs> you know. He's all right, baby, great, go take a bath. He got twelve girls yeah. washing you down. He be, you know, he be okay. He's not going nowhere. I don't know. That's, I guess the world we in, man. You know, pe- people yeah. gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta understand. Um, you know, the principle of the Bible, what the Bible say. But exactly. You know, sin, we sin. All right, let's move on. Yeah, All right. but, yeah. Now, but the book, you know, it's just tricks and people. But fire is. I didn't want to be with book one. You know, it's all about reminisce. This girl, oh poor reminisce. So like mm-hmm. I say, hurt people, hurt people. So my book two. It's Jimmy's telling his story from when he grew up, how he got where uh, he got. Yeah, so Jimmy. you know, I, I had Jimmy to, I had to give him a say. Yeah, I had to let him, everybody know where, how he thinks, where his mind comes from. And for me to turn myself into that character was amazing. I was mm. so surprised, you know. And I was, and so book two is a little more street. It's a little mm. more urban, but more you know, I let Jimmy speak, so of course it's gonna be. Yeah, it's his turn. Jimmy's turn. Yeah, it's his turn. All yeah. Right. So, so this is going to be a three-book series then, huh? Yep. Three-book trilogy, trilogy, yep. the Chronicles of Love. So is it a lot of love in it, or is this a lot of danger it's and a, one it's, woman? I think, I think it's turning it, it's, it's, you know, danger and love, but it's a lot of danger. It's, you know, a lot, a lot of, of stuff going to keep you on, on suspense on book two. It's just like a page turner, like, oh, my gosh. You know, I really, mm. I just took, the, took my gloves off and just took, you know, just wrote. I didn't, you know, I wasn't trying to worry about what people would think about this or what, you know, maybe I shouldn't say this. I just let myself go and just wrote. So yeah, I'm really surprised to see what everybody got to say about that book. All and there's right, some poetry in the book. Off. 
Oh, yeah, really? and it's some, oh, reminisce, it's some reminisce. Po- Yep. Jimmy. Yeah. Oh, Jimmy writing poetry this time. <laughs> yes, Jimmy. Okay. Yeah, it's some, it's yeah. some poetry in the book, but I never forced my poetry, so it's not as much as in book one. Yeah, cause reminisce was to write it in. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now, a lot of people said the book didn't make them cry. So what was yeah. it about it that was sad? You know, what was going on with reminiscing, you know, made, her, made father, her father, her father, the, the whole scene of her father passing, her, oh. you know, pe- you know, her passing, it was best for the family, but reminiscing, you know, growing up. So the, her father passing, her nephew passing, you know, she went really in detail, you know, with those care. I went, you know, those characters, you know, it takes you through the whole scene. So it's kind of sad. It is kind of sad. Yeah, oh man. So so you took the the audience on an emotional roller coaster ride at the same yeah. time. Mm. Yeah. All right. So so we're gonna see any of that in the second book where you know it's gonna be some some sadness to the book or it's just gonna be all hard, Jimmy. Poetry. No, it's sad. It's sad. It uh, starts off sad. It starts off. It starts mm. starts off really sad, and then you know, like the first book ended, you know. It goes. It jumps right back into where the first book ended, and it, it's sad. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, mm. I can't believe this. So, and then Jimmy mm. start. You know, like I said, I give him a voice, and those poems. You know, those are his poems. And <laughs> so the, the writer. That's right. Yeah. Now, did you introduce us to any new characters in the second book? Uh huh. Who we got? Yeah, it's um. Let me think. Yeah, it's one new character in the book. Because you know, Riven is still feel like she got work to do, so she go back in time and. She mentioned a character, and the you know that's the character that later on come on in the end of the book, you know. So okay. yeah, it's like one new character is another female. It's um another some more characters that was in the previous book, of course, in there. She have a new love mm-hmm. interest in book two, which mm-hmm. was one of the previous characters. Oh, uh, mm. yeah, I see, I see. Uh oh, dangerously yeah. in love. Oh, you so you ready? You ready to get everybody on this one, then, huh? Yeah, so I said I took my gloves off, and I hope. You know, it's. I mean, you know, I have like I wrote a. It's a. It's a sex scene in there, so I took my gloves off. I. I didn't want to be Uh-oh. like, well, I was. I'm worried. I don't want people to. You know, no. I had to just write. Mm-hmm. If I'm a write, I'm a write. I'm not gonna hold. I'm not gonna so hold that. So you got a little graphic on this one. A little graphic. A little graphic. Oh, read it. Uh oh. I hear you. We can't wait to read it. So when right. is this Thank one supposed you. to drop? When when Dangerously in Love, the second one, book supposed to Actually, drop? Actually, I should have a cover reveal probably in the next week. <laughs> and so probably in the next few weeks, that's about to drop, you know. Yeah. In the next couple weeks or next few weeks, that should be dropping. Mm-hmm. And I plan on having three out by the summer. And it, I want to have three out by the summer and my new series started too. So by the end of the year, you know, I keep saying 10 books, but that don't really sound realistic when I think about it. So I want to have, you know, maybe six, seven books out by the end of the year. Awesome. Now, now what are the what are your fans saying on, on your Facebook, on your fan pages? You know, how they engaging you? Are they, they happy the direction you're going in to know another book is about to drop? Yeah, they're, they're excited. They're excited. They, they're really excited. You know, my fans, I feel good because I know it feels good that people, you know, I, people be like, you know, you really inspire me. And, you know, you have, you know... And I, that really makes me feel good. I get an inbox like, you know, that's great. You're writing a book, and that inspired me. I want to write it, you know. Or maybe I get an inbox. You know, I used to get abused, and I, that was so good. How strong she's been, and you know, so mm-hmm. it just feel good. I love the, I love the fans. I love them. I love, you know, I met a lot of interesting, like just phenomenal people. Period. Just writing this year, phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Good, yeah. That's the, see, that's the world we're in. Now, yeah, it is. Now, now, a lot of people use Instagram, Twitter, you know. Are you all over the place, you know? I'm everywhere, how, yep. Everywhere. Tell people exactly, you know, your your method to your madness when it comes to promotion. How you start your day out when it, when it's time to promote and, and then share some time in writing? How does you know, it, how your day like, go? You asked me, we talked about that before, and like I was like, Facebook is like the main source to me. So if I'm posting... When I can, you know, because I work, you know, I work a regular job. I work, I open and close, you know, I'm a dental assistant. But I try or I hire somebody. But 200 groups a day is my goal to post a day. If I can post at least 200 groups a day and, tw- you know, tweet it a couple times and Instagram it a couple times, you know, then I'm doing great, you know. That's, that's, right. that's my goal. And if you can do that a day and you can be in those big groups and you can interact with the people and start, you know, 
being familiar with names and knowing people and they knowing you, you know, those likes that they hit, that really makes a difference in, you know, in the book world where people mm-hmm. like you and you start engaging in more friends and having, you know, just more interaction. I have 5,000 Facebook friends, 1,700 mm-hmm. people on my author page and like 200 people in my group. So I got a nice audience on Facebook. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Now, when you have an audience that size, do, do you, does it materialize in the sales? Or it's of like course. A lot, of them, a lot of them doing the same thing, too. They're marketing books. Some yeah, of them might not I, be all on the same time. No, you know what? At first, when I first started getting my friends, I just wanted any friends or whatever because I wanted, you know, audience. But then I started filtering through my friends. So if all the people that's marketing books and all that, you know, if we're doing the same thing and, you know, we really don't communicate, no, that, you know, then I don't keep them in my feed or maybe I don't keep them at all if I need some, to add some new friends that's interested in my book. So you got to, you know, just be kind of tedious with all that, with your friends on Facebook, with who's in your group. Just be, you know, you want people interested. All right. So tell us exactly how the feed thing works, for, to, you know, for those who, not, who don't understand how the Facebook um, engine works. And how does that work? What is that saying when you're talking about the news feed or filtering people out? What does that mean? Oh, I'm just basically saying like um, I was saying that as far as people coming through my feed, I don't want to I don't want to look at everybody. You know, I do got a, a lot of authors that I do you know engage and read their books and stuff. But I, as far as a, as far as my feed, you can unfollow people from your Facebook. You can unfollow them. You can just don't have them coming through your feed. So you can you can you have an option of what you see and going down your page. But as far as advertising, you know, if I'm advertising to 200 groups a day and th- those groups got 10, 20, 30, 40,000 people in them, you know, or more, you know, mm-hmm. just, the numbers just add up. If, if you get one click or one like from the group or two likes from the group, group it just it just like a domino effect. It just adds up. And then like, oh, yeah. thanks for the like. And they like, no, th- your book is great. Where can I get it? And it's just like you just communicate. It's always mm-hmm. communicate and always be thankful. Be thankful and and share if somebody share your stuff, you share their stuff too. You know, that's right. You just, that's just, right. Just, just keep it going. Be fair. That's right. Yeah, that, that's one of the things I know. I'm starting to see people that you know the behavior is starting to get a little better. Like sometimes yeah. you see some jealousy out there, and you catch a couple um, people um, uh, posting about somebody. You, you know, you try to stay away from the negativity, but when it comes to sharing and promoting another individual, do you see a nice thread of everybody complimenting that person's book and? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. thank you very much, you know, and I want to get your book too when it comes out. You know, right. that's, that's what you're talking about, networking right there, you know. You don't hear a lot yeah. about that networking, you know. Mostly you hear yeah. people saying, I'm grinding, I'm posting. Yeah, but, you know, are you networking? That's different when you have a relationship with people. Relationship you know? with people, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. I'm developing some, I mean, some great people out there. I'm, I'm not coming with, you know, no harm. I just want to, you know, I just, if I'm, I'm asked questions, like I say with my group, they just, so it's like the best place to be, I swear. Mm-hmm. Even with my book signing, I tell them I'm nervous. I got support. Alita, you're going to do fine. Alita, you're going to be great. Yeah. You know, they don't know me in real life, but they, you know, I'm a part of this group, and I'm like family. It's like my family now. That's right. And I like, sometimes I, sometimes I do find myself going to some of the groups and just scrolling there for maybe like a half hour. You, you find some interesting people in the groups, you know, that's not yeah. on your normal fan, you know, your normal page that you see all the time. You know, sometimes... You can get some people that can give you the blues, but like I love the business side of Facebook, so I go inside the groups where people are promoting radio shows or yep. book signings or poetry sessions. Love checking those out. Sometimes I don't have the opportunity to always listen to those shows because they go live, and it's hard to find that you know that yeah, demand that you know show. But um, you know, it's good to see people trying to do some positive things. You know. It's a lot of promotion. It's a lot of great promotion groups out there, too, like you. You know, I, I think you was one of the first ones I worked with. You know, you really helped me out. You know, I was I was so thankful to be on your show. You know, it's like really um, Kasha Jordan, Miss Jetson. I think she's MissJetson.com. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. I mean, I love her. Yeah. People, And then people, she, she, you know, I like the promoters that want to help. Not, okay, you're going to pay for this service and then it's over, like you. Mm-hmm. You know, you keep it going for weeks, and that's beautiful because advertising, it doesn't stop. That's not nothing that's that right. stops. Yeah, yeah you're so very really welcome. Appreciate we appreciate that. you. Yeah, we appreciate you coming aboard, giving us the opportunity to work with you, too, and showing people, you know, what we can do here at Positive right. Power 21. That's right, helping people. That's right about growth, wealth, and success. 
And there's so exactly. many things that I know people want to do, but, you know, when you got your family, like you got grandchildren and family, mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, you find yourself being consumed with this business because you, you know, you can almost have an obsession with it, you know, it if is. you let it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it it, it is. is exciting. You know, it's like, just think, when we didn't have this type of community, and I remember Yahoo Groups was pretty neat, too. I used to love Yahoo Groups. It wasn't as pretty as this, you know, graphically. You couldn't, you know, post a whole bunch of stuff. You just basically put your comment or your poem, and I, I guess everything else was through MySpace back then. Right, you know, right. But MySpace had, like, viruses and stuff all in it, so you had to be careful. But people yeah. would, would send you to their, to their website back then, so you had to have, like, a really expensive website back in the day. But now Facebook said, well, I'll give you a page, a fan page. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. so that is awesome. All right, we're gonna take a we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back. We're gonna get your final thoughts and let people know where they can find you. Tell, tell them about your book signing if they out there in the area. Remember, y'all, we are we are we are streaming, so you don't know who's gonna be listening to the show. <laughs> and I already know we're in twelve countries. We got our report. We doing really well in the Chicago area, New York, Texas, out west, California. And we appreciate all the support in my hometown, Maryland, Eastern Shore, Maryland. That's right. And Baltimore and Washington, D.C., my stomping ground. All right. So hold tight, everybody. That's right. Hold tight, D.C. Hold tight, Baltimore. Hold tight, Eastern. This is Jerry Voice Live Worldwide. And I'm talking to Alita Hodges. She's the author of Dangerously in Love. Here we go. An episode of Book Buzz with ReesePublishing.com. Are you an avid reader of urban fiction, looking for drama, suspense, and more? Reads World Publishing is dedicated to bringing the world's best literature to our readers. Urban fiction, erotica, sci-fi, mainstream fiction, and children's literature are just some of the genres produced by our diversified family of authors. You can reach us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at our website, www.reachworldpublishing.com. What do you give to a person who has everything? Hi, I'm Darlene Rucker Williams, and I am the owner of Stylish and Stellar Gifts by Dar. I get this question all of the time. At Stylish and Stellar Gifts by Dar, we specialize in customizing gifts for people and pets too. Our gifts are original and one of a kind. Not only do we deliver, we ship as well. We work according to your budget and your things. We have gifts for all things, including baby showers, sports teams, get well, bridles, birthdays, pets, just because, and that's just to name a few. So let's style and sell a gift by Dar. Take the worry out of your gift giving today and also for the holidays. Our website is www.stylishandseller.com and our phone number is 443-682-5664. Listening to Positive Power Twenty One dot org with Jerry Royce. All right, thank you, Studio Twenty One. That's family right there, and they looking out for me. All right, we talking to you, Alita Hodges, poet, writer, Michigan. Her family's out there supporting her. She has a book signing coming up. Tell us, a, tell us a little bit more about the book signing coming up, Alita. Um, well, it's going to be in Jackson, Michigan, um, this Saturday from two to five at the Jackson Coffee House downtown. Yeah, it sounds like fun. I love coffee. <laughs> love coffee. All right. That's going to be fun. Y'all going to have fun, yeah, it's right? it's going to be fun. I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a good time. Yeah, I mean, it's exciting. It is really exciting. Yeah, you doing you doing giveaways? You going to give away some prizes, door door I got prizes. no, you know, I I got a goodie bag. I'm only selling my book. The book is only $10 there. I'm going to sign it and then I got a goodie bag with so, uh, I'm gonna put a sample of the new book, some you know, some new must-read books, and some information mm-hmm. about how to get published, and you know, some just you know, just a little goodie bag to help people out to thinking about writing. Yeah, 
No raffle tickets, none, none, none of that. You know, I this my I didn't even know. This is my first Man, book you, signing. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get some raffle tickets, get people, you know, a ticket and then you call that number and they win a free book or, or a gift basket or something. You gotta crank it up. Oh, okay, maybe maybe yeah. I will crank it up. Maybe I will yeah. do that. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. People like this stuff, so the next time you get one, they're gonna they're gonna bring their friends. <laughs> right. <laughs> so right. I'm just yeah, 'cause they go they they come to look for food anyway, but you wanna give them some prizes. <laughs> <laughs> right, maybe I'll raffle off some um, coffee coupons from the place. Yeah, something. that's right, some gift cards, some $5 yeah. gift cards for coffee. That's, that's right, do it up. All right, y'all, we ready to hear Alita's final thoughts for tonight's show. We appreciate having you here, as always. It's our third time, you know, having the show with you, and we, we had a great time talking to you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so you ready? Give me your final yeah, thoughts. Yeah, I'm ready. My final thoughts is, you know, everybody follow me on Twitter at Author Alita H. I'm on Instagram at Author Alita, Facebook, Author Alita H. Um, you can even you can even um, Google me, www.google um, me or www.alitah.com. Book two is coming soon. Um, thanks, everybody, for your support. You know, everybody stay positive. Just stay positive. Keep going. You know, keep smiling. Keep laughing and just. You know, just keep it moving. Just keep it moving. That's right. Keep it moving forward. Momentum. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. Did you see You see my, my kids' music video? You know, oh, no, I didn't. Music. I'm going to have to look. <laughs> your, yeah. your son is a rapper? No, they, they was on their drums and guitar. They played, but, we you know, we did everything from a uh, track. But they, you know, we was having fun, you know, trying oh, to yeah. That's crank I everything like up. Yeah, I sent it to you. All right, everybody. Oh, yeah, one more. One more oh. thing, I'm sorry, I forgot. Um, sure. I'm on the cover of um, issue 11 of Black Rain magazine, and it'll be a link on my page. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. Good for you, good for you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of our broadcast, our podcast, but it's going to be available for replay, rewind, on demand. It's going to be streaming with a whole bunch of other awesome authors. That's right. They're talking about growth, wealth, and success, fiction, nonfiction, survivors, of domestic abuse, child molestation, all that stuff, homelessness, all that written, all that stories being told right here on PositivePower21.org. And I always tell people all the time, Alita, if they want to hear the good stuff, I mean the real good stuff, you better listen to Jerry Voice Live worldwide yes. on PositivePower21.org and Spreaker right here on Spreaker.com forward slash PositivePower21 and share this with your with your Facebook page, y'all, it's going to help somebody. Believe me, we got some serious stories on here. All right, I'm Joy Voice Live. We out. Howdy five. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to Joy Voice Live on PositivePower21.org and Spreaker.com forward slash PositivePower21. This is a Voice Enterprises production. And don't forget about replay on Facebook.com forward slash Joy Voice Live. All right, y'all, stay awesome all week long. Have you been hurt? Been hurt? Been back, back there? there? Got a talking back to you. Talking back. Cause you're not alone. No, no. Escape into another reality. reality. Through Dominic Wilkins' good book. Good books, all your books, paperback, ebook, good books. Available on author D. Wilkins, goodbooks.com. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. On February 23rd, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, I will be live on Jerry Rose Live Radio. I will be discussing my new album and my new single coming in February. Stay tuned and we'll see you there. Hi, this is Joyce Ree. I'm the author of Hurt You to Live Here, and I'm on the Jerry Rose Live Worldwide. You are listening to PositivePower21.org with Jerry Royce. What up? It's your boy, Kano Kingston. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. Hey, this is Pat. Hi, I'm Teresa Powell. Hi, hey, Jerry. This is Iris Sandro Carter. Hi, this is Paul Powers. Hello, this is Teresa Bobby with Jerry Royce Live. Hi, I'm Phil LeBaron. I'm live on the Jerry Royce Show. Hi, what do you do? Boy, who's the same? 
think this is value to poet, spoken word artist. Hello, this is Lamar Marquis with Jerry Ward Live. All right, all right, everyone. You got Robin Lynn, and I'm keeping it live right now on Jerry Royce Live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's up? This is a award winning podcast with the greatest podcast on earth. Thank you for stopping by. I'm your host, Jerry Royce Live Worldwide on Internet Radio, where you get your positive on. So when it's all positive, it's all power. That's positive power. This is a worldwide podcast for growth, wealth, and success. Thank you. Think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Think again. Set in the green hills of western New Jersey, inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company where decisions are worth billions of dollars and human lives worth less. Nicholas Harding, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career, family, and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse, a suspense thriller novel by Bill Powers, published by Donna Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com or DonnaInc.org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. Are you looking for the next great read? A book filled with love, passion, betrayal, and intrigue. The award-winning novel, Season of Change, by Tamika Patrice Kane is sure to satisfy your literary sweet tooth. Check out this must-read book reviewers are calling a blissing and emotional and exceptionally great read, deeply intense and thought-provoking. Order your copy today, available in paperback and ebook on Amazon.com or at www.TamikaPatrice.com. Are you an author looking for promotional services or a reader looking for a great read at low prices? In this competitive world of books, Writing Royalty Promotions is dedicated to bringing authors and readers together to build a greater respect for literature through our various promotional services and online bookstore. So head over to writingroyaltypromotions.com and check us out. Hey everyone, this is Tamika Gonzalez, open word poet. Whenever I'm online, I'm always listening to Jerry Royce Live. You can find Jerry on www.speaker.com. Positive Power 21. Hey, hey. That's right. Tanika, Tanika Gonzalez in Florida. They listen to Joy Woods Live Worldwide. That's right. And thank everybody for joining us and welcome to Positive Power21.org. I am Jerry Voice Live. That's right. And we got a book bus sponsor for tonight's show. That's right. Because tonight we got Joyce Reed, the author. She's here tonight. And we're going to talk to her and, and we're going to hear her bio right after this presentation. So hold tight, everybody. This is James the Shade, the male poet. Are you looking for a great book of poetry that is romantic, heartfelt, and full of male emotion? Then get Thoughts, Love, and Reflections by James K. Deshay. That's D-E-S-H-A-Y. Go to www.jamesdeshay.com. You will enjoy Thoughts, Love, and Reflections. All right, check them out. James Deshay, the romance one. Good book of poetry. Check them out, y'all. Support their author. All right, tonight on Jerry Bush Live, we got Joyce Reed. She's here to talk about her book, Hurt, Used to Live Here. Based on a true story, in the early 80s, a young girl was born into a family that left her heartless, helpless, and emotionless, allowing her to always fend for herself. Alone and barely loved, she grew up and experienced so many things that eventually allowed her to learn, forgive, forget, and grow. Sharing her story that touched hearts of others that can relate to the struggle, life's disappointments, abuse, death, and betrayal, and come out with a positive attitude. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Joyce Reed. How you doing, Joyce? Welcome to Positive Power. 
Thank you for having me. I'm fine here, so. I'm doing great. We in the middle of a snowstorm here in Maryland, but you know that's the way it is. We in, we in the middle of February now. Mother, Mother Nature's going to get us now. We've been ducking it all January, but we'll be. All right. I know. I've seen it on the news. Yeah, it's supposed to be like a blast of a storm. It's supposed to just come right on through and leave us, but who knows? The weather guys always get it wrong. But anyway, welcome to the show, and we're glad to have you. Um, present your your new project, one I know that's real dear to your heart. I know you wrote that with you know with with, a, with, a, with many many tissue box next to the to the writing pen. So I know it's tough, but um, I know God put on your heart to do it, and you're here to share. All right. So the first question is, who is Joyce Reed? I am an author, entrepreneur, and a survivor of many things. Um, I'm not here to preach to you, but I am here to let you in my world a little bit and help whomever I can. Um, Everyone has a story, but not everyone has the courage to speak out about it. Um, I was alone at eight. I was a mother at 14. I was a single mom with two boys at at 19 and, event, and eventually homeless with two boys. That's just who mm-hmm. I was. But now I am a survivor, not a victim. That's right. We are not alone. That's right. right. Strength. Mm. So I guess my next question, what got you through that period? I mean, I know we're going to go back a little bit, but what got you through all of that, you know, with the two boys out there by yourself? What, what state were you living in when, when you were homeless? I was in Georgia. You in Georgia? Okay. Mm-hmm. So what got you through it all? Got you, you and the boys? Oh, first and foremost, it, God got me through it. Nobody else could get me through it but him. That's right. And when I was younger, I always knew that it was a higher power, but never understood why he would allow everything to happen to me to happen to me. And right now, mm-hmm. speaking about it, I didn't understand it then, but I definitely understand it now, and I don't regret anything that I've been through because if I do regret it, I wouldn't even be here today speaking, helping, and inspiring other people that's been through similar or more worse than I've been through. Like I said before, everyone has a story, but not everyone has the courage to speak out about it. That's right. Keep it under the rug. Keep moving. So, Joy, so what happened, what happened in the early 80s as a young girl born into this family? What happened? I was, basically, I was basically alone since I was eight years old. I raised myself um, since I was 10. Um, I had a mother that was there but only there financially. I taught myself um, how to tie my shoe. I taught myself how to be a woman. I taught myself everything. Um, and I've learned that being there financially isn't raising a child. It takes mm-hmm. more than just being there financially. Anybody can give you money, but it takes more responsibility and more and, and love to mm-hmm. raise a child. That's right. So were you living in a single family household, single parent household? Yes, up until I was three. Um, my mom and my Dad, um, I got a divorce. I don't really remember it all, but um, there was always a man around. Hmm. Always a man around. Mm-hmm. So, so you said your mom was there financially. So what did that mean? She just leave you money, and then she just go off for days or weeks? No, she worked. She worked three jobs. So oh. she was. So it was like we only communicated by writing. So I would write a letter, leave it on the uh, mirror in the bathroom, and I would say, I need this. I need underwear. I need a bra. I need lunch money. And then she would leave it. Mm-hmm. And that's how we would communicate that way. So she's working, <clears throat> so she's working three jobs. So she's working around the clock. So, so that, mean, that meant she wasn't home on the weekends at all. So no, she you, you, you didn't have the – well, so you didn't have that mother – Daughter bond. No. 
And how about grandmother? No grandmother? Well, my grandmother, she passed away um, when I was only 13. I actually lost six people in my family in 96, which includes mm. uh, my grandmother on both sides of my family, my grandfather, my brother, my auntie, um, and my cousin within seven months mm. in 1996. So my grandmother passed away when she was, I think she was 56, um, and my great-grandmother, she passed away when she was 64. So I didn't raise, I wasn't raised with grandparents and mm. anything like that. Yeah, they're pretty young. Wow. Yeah, that's a young age, you know, considering, you know, nowadays I see um, women in, in their 50s and 60s, and they look awesome, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, people are taking really good care of themselves. Now, so basically the abuse came in because you were always alone. So you weren't you weren't left with no no adult supervision, just in the house or an apartment? I have sisters and brothers, um, but it was, me and my brother, we were really close. Um, but my sister, we, we wasn't really close at all because she was like four years older than I am. Um, okay. But we would be left with, at the time, my mother's boyfriend, for, you know, at the time, which is whomever that would be. Um, it was one guy that she used to leave us with. Um, he's passed away now, but he used to beat us every single day. Mm, every day? Every single day. Because he was trying to watch TV and y'all was trying to play and he thought y'all was too noisy. Or he just you know, was an angry would man. Just have to, he was just angry. Like, as soon as my mother walked out the door to go to work, he would sit us on the couch for hours. We had to sit there with our legs crossed and um, our hands folded. And if we asked to go to the bathroom, if he asked to get, if he was hungry, he would just beat us. Mm. Wow. How long did that go on? That went on. I was, I was five or six, so I think it went on. I want to say, I mean, it felt like a lifetime, but I want to say six months to a year. Mm. Wow, that's a good long time. All yeah. right, now in your book, you state you say using the words I record in journals and notebooks I kept as a young girl. I now bear my soul within these pages by sharing my truth. I share my personal struggles with the world to help others and give them support and love I never felt as a young girl. I don't want anyone to feel what I felt growing up. But in my years of healing, I realize I'm certainly not the the only one. So there's a lot of people out there feeling what you felt, you know, no mother in the house, no father, grandmother. She's gone now. Basically, when you really need a grandmother, you know, especially mm-hmm. in adult age, you really do need your grandma and parents. Mm-hmm. So what else did you guys go through? You know, you, you're feeding for yourselves. You know, you're young. You're pretty much babies. And um, now, okay, this guy, he's gone. So mom, so what? You know, so your mom, she just bring these guys around just, you know, because she needed a man around the house or she just, you know, was just, she just had friends, boyfriends, and they needed a place to stay for a little while. What was the deal with that? I- I never knew because, again, me and my mom, we didn't have that relationship where we communicated with each other. So I really, I really don't, I honestly can't answer that question because we just never had it. Still to this day, we, we communicate, but we just don't have that relationship. Yeah. Now, now, you wrote this book. What was the purpose of this book, the main purpose, you know, in your words? The main part was, it, first, it was, it was therapy for me because I've been writing in journals and notebooks since I was 10 years old. So I basically just took everything from my journals and notebooks and I created a book because people, um, I, I just get tired of people talking about me, calling me names and just doing harmful things to me. And it's like I didn't have a voice. And I just, I just, I just was tired of feeling ashamed and embarrassed it's just it ha- I'm just like it has to come to a point where I can't feel this way and like I tell anybody this book is is beyond you it's beyond me and when I found my mm-hmm. purpose was in 2012 is when I found my purpose when I tried to commit suicide after the third time that's when I found my purpose and that's when I knew that God has me here for a reason 
and it's a reason why I did not die those three times. There's a reason, and this is my reason, and that's to inspire and motivate people, other people to tell their story. If I, if, if I can tell my story to help someone, because it, it's people out here that go through what I go through right now on a day-to-day -day right. basis. You know, right. I've been I've been beaten. I've been I've been raped six times. I've been molested. I've been raped by my own biological father. I've I've been through it all. So you, I've, I've done it. So use a so use a tech break. So when did your your biological dad was living with you, or was it you was visiting him or something? Is that when the attack happened? Yeah, I was visiting him. You were what in your teens? Mm -hmm. I was I was twelve years old. Yeah. So at that point, what happened? Your, your dad didn't really feel like he, he knew you and he was trying to open up and he just went a little too far. I mean, what, what was on his mind? You know, did he have problems? Well, you just don't know what the deal was. I mean, he, he was like in and out of, of our lives when I was younger, but I just knew that he used to work a lot and if we wanted to he was he was the person that if we get in trouble he he would beat us so my mm. mother would call him if we got in trouble we did something bad he she would call him and then he would come over and he would beat us so this particular time i had to go over there because he worked at a flea market so i had to um work off my punishment and that's when it happened i was 11 going on 12 when it happened so i mean he what he's never done drugs he does not smoke drink never done drugs never drank nothing so i can't say yeah. that was the issue so he had a mental so. breakdown something happened that's, that's sick that's real sick right yeah. there yeah now now, he, now your dad your, your brother your siblings share the same biological father just my my brother, me and my brother did. Okay. He, so he you, passed so really, away. So for this, oh, your dad passed away. No, my brother. Oh, your brother passed away. Oh, sorry to hear that. Mm -hmm. So, so your your dad. So there's no explanation for his action. You know. No, and like I you said, no drugs. Mm -hmm. No drugs, and he has not served his crime. Nope. Mm. Nope, and that I don't want to give you all of it, but you have to read the book to to get that information. But no, he has not served time um, to this day, and I'm not the only sibling he's done it to. Mm. No, yes, yeah, that's, that's an I'm the only right one to speak out about it, you know. So, mm -hmm. all right. Now, what were some of the challenges, you know, that you faced writing this book? Reliving everything. Because when it happened, it's like I can tell the story and it's like I can be in that place. I put myself, because when I write the book, I want you to be where I am. I want you to feel what I feel and felt what I felt until you can get a better understanding on who I am. And that was basically the hard part, putting myself back into that place, that negative place that I'm no longer in. Now, you, you mentioned that you tried to take your life six times. Is that right? You said mm -hmm. your life six times or you, you were raped six times? Three times. I was raped six and was, times. I, mm -hmm. And then that was because of the attacks or you just didn't feel like, you know, you, life didn't owe you anything. So it was time to leave. What was going on in your um, mind then? The first time is when um, my brother... Um, wasn't here because he was the only person that listened to me. He was the only person that was there for me. It's like someone, like my soul was ripped out of my body when he left me. Mm -hmm. So I felt that um, I started having negative thoughts and, you know, if it was the devil, um, I just had this negative thoughts and dreams and thinking that it was okay for me to leave and be with him. And that's when I tried. To finish suicide, I took, yeah, I took like 40 pills. Mm -hmm. Oh, your brother had passed. Mm -hmm. Oh, he had passed. Oh. Mm. Yeah. But he was a fighter, though, wasn't he? 
Yes, he was. Yeah. All right, your reviews. You got some reviews out there. People reading reading the book. Mm-hmm. Heart wrenching, uplifting. Joyce Reed has poured her heart out on paper for all the world to see. This fearless woman discuss her tragedies and triumphs in his autobiographical novel. The stories are real, and so is her pain. I hope this book gets in the hands of these kids out there facing similar situations so they know that it will, it will, it will get better. I look forward to reading future books. Wow. Thumbs up. Two thumbs up. This, this, this reader was grateful. Five stars. Courageous, they say. Proud of you. You proud of yourself for doing yes, this, this project? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. kudos. It takes much strength. <laughs> All right, Miss Joyce, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk to you about where people can find you. You know, somebody out there probably won't give you a hug or want to <laughs> communicate with you on Facebook. You know, who knows? There's some people out there hurting going through the same thing. All right, hold yeah. tight for episode of Book Buzz, ladies and gentlemen. Just keep in mind, if you're one of those authors, you try and get the word out. If you can't get on the show, you can, we can advertise and promote you, all right? Let everybody hear about you. Remember, we, we're promoting the show in 12 countries, and we're doing very well here in the States. All right, hold tight, everybody. Are you an avid reader of urban fiction, looking for drama, suspense, and more? Reads World Publishing is dedicated to bringing the world's best literature to our readers. Urban fiction, erotica, sci-fi, mainstream fiction, and children's literature are just some of the genres produced by our diversified family of authors. You can reach us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at our website, www.readsworldpublishing.com. How would you like to have a book that reflects your life? Hi, I'm Luca Butterfly. I would like to tell you more about my latest book, The Reality of Luca Butterfly. It's a poetry chat book capturing my life that covers subjects such as self-esteem, anti-bullying, spirituality, family, friends, love, and heartbreak. You can purchase your copy online at twopenceandlint.com forward slash Thompson. To find out more about me, visit me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash M-H-C-H-A fly. Thanks for listening. Positive Power 21.org Internet Radio You are listening to Power21.org with Jerry Royce. All right. Thank you, family. Thank you. It's Jerry Royce Live, y'all. We talking to Joyce Reed based on a true story, Hurt. Hurt used to live here. And her website is www.iamyourvoice.com. And that's I am you are a voice.com. All right. And you can find on Facebook under author Joyce Reed, R E E D. It's like Christopher Reed, the Superman. All right. And we're talking to Joyce Reed. Um, man, she reads, this reads, this reads, so will, I'm sorry, I read the wrong word. I am a single mom of two wonderful boys. I am business owner. I am a writer. I am a college graduate. I am a friend. I am a woman. I am stubborn. I am real. I am a best friend. I am loving. I am worthy. I am forgiving. I am a fighter. I am beautiful. I am wonderful. I am God's child. Wow, you accomplished a lot. You're doing well. Um, college graduate, business yes. owner, writer, raising two boys. The boys doing great now. Yes. Did they remember those those times? Did they remember what you went through, the struggles? Um, some, some of it. They were um, my youngest son. He was too young to really remember, but um, I do. I did sit my oldest son down and talk to him about everything. Um, because I knew that I was writing a book and I wanted him to hear from me and not anyone else. Yeah. Now, now Joyce, now during that time when now you you sound like you might have been in what middle school or high school when you got pregnant the first time. Now, now were you dating 
you know, young guys then, or was it older guys, or you got pregnant accidentally? What, what went on during that time? Well, actually, the first, first time that I, I actually um, got pregnant, um, I was 11 years old. Um, mm-hmm. And that was that was out of rape. Um, and then my two sons that I, um, I miscarried um, with that baby. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. And my my two children that I have now, they were out of weight. Oh wow. Mm. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. Now, did those situations happen like during school? Were were you were you institutionalized or, you know, were you in a facility for girls and, you know, you know, you have males working at those places? Or you just was yeah. that that's when you was on the streets then? Were you on the streets? No, I wasn't, um I actually, I was at home, um, and I was asleep, and uh, my mom let a man that she thought that she knew, a young man that she thought that she knew um, in the house, and he raped me. Hmm. Wow. Um, Yeah. And, and then my second son, I was actually in a relationship with someone for five years. And um, most most women, with well, some women, don't understand that rape doesn't have to come from a stranger. It can be from your spouse, your husband, your boyfriend. I was in a relationship with this man for five years, and I was forced to have a baby with him. He raped me, even though he was my boyfriend. Rape is rape. When it's unwilling and you say no, and you're forced to do something you do not want to do, that is rape. That's right. Now, when you was in a relationship, did did you have a problem, you know, when when it came to, you know, being sensual for man, or there was no problem? You know, it just was just wasn't a good time. You just said, no, not tonight. You know, we do hear that, you know. Not tonight, babe, maybe tomorrow. Put on my calendar, you know. What was the deal with that? Uh, some men don't want to hear the word no or don't want to hear what well, I'm leaving you. And that was the case. Uh, I was that's a long time. With, Five years. Yeah. I was just fed up with, you know, the lies and, you know, how, and I was young. So I met him when I was 16 years old and, you know, he was 10 years older than me. So it was mm-hmm. like, I was tired of the, you know, the lies. I was young. So it's like, mm-hmm. you know, you hear, well, it wasn't, he, he wasn't abusive to me, but uh, mentally he was. And it's like, you know how men, some some men, I'm not going to speak for all men, but some men, it's like when you tell me you're leaving or you get into an argument, I'm sorry, baby, let me buy you this, and then we fall back in. Mm-hmm. But you only know when you're tired. I can sit here and call my friends, my best friends, friend, oh, I'm tired, I'm going to leave him, but only you know when you're tired That's and when right. you're fed up. That's right. That's right. Now, are you in a relationship right now? No, I'm not in a relationship. No. Just with God. Just with God. Jesus. Yes, I'm, yes, I'm focused on me and my book and my career, my company. And I'm just focused on me, and I'm waiting on God to place the right man in, in my life. Yeah, because I read here say, right in your bio, he will never leave you nor forsake you. And that's yes. definitely that's Jesus right there. That's right. The only way. Yes. Mm-hmm. The only way. Now, it took a lot of strength for you to, to publish this book. You know, was it a friend or was it just the Lord speaking to you? What, what gave you the courage? the Lord. He, 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 he spoke to me because I wasn't into church when I was little. Um, I went to Catholic school and I was raised as Jehovah Witness. So right there, I was confused. So I oh, never, yeah. <laughs> so I, just, <laughs> I never really like, I be, like I said, I believe there was a higher power, but I just never <laughs> knew that he would allow this to happen to me. But my last attempt at trying to commit suicide, that's when I realized when I was older, um, I was 29 years old, and that's when I knew that he has my back. He would never leave me nor forsake me. I've been in the, 
I've been literally in hell and back three or four times. He has mm. never left me. I didn't understand then, but I understand now. He never left me. He still loves yeah. me for who I was and who I am now, who I'm grown to be. Mm. Now, I didn't, I didn't think it was really possible, you know, just me thinking, you know, living in a big city that, you know, you can be homeless in a, you know, in Georgia. It just seemed like everybody's so southern, you know, country, they're going to help you, so many helping hands. You know, what happened that I, you and your boys were living on the streets? I mean, you guys were homeless. How did that happen in a state like that? Well, basically, the gangs were after my son. So I literally left my job, I picked up, and we left to move to Georgia. I didn't know a soul. I didn't know one mm-hmm. person. So Oh, did, okay. You re- yeah, so oh, so I you relocated know. from a... Oh, you relocated from another place. Oh, from Chicago. Yeah. Oh, you was in, oh, okay. The homelessness is big there. And the gangs, right. Mm. Yes. So I was always, I wanted to do what what my mom or my father didn't do for me, and that was protect my child, protect my kids. So I was going to do whatever I had to do to protect my son, and that's what I did. But in the process, I made the wrong choices too fast, and mm. I came down here. I got a job. Um, I was working and um, all within one week. Lost mm. my job. Couldn't pay my car note. Um, just moved into an apartment, but within 60 days I had, I was about to get evicted. Um, because I couldn't pay my rent because I couldn't find a job. But one thing in Georgia, people are nice and friendly, but it's hard to find a job. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. very hard. Yeah, so yeah. I, I had no money saved up, so we had to leave. And then when we left, I was always thinking about my kids, putting my kids first. So I could have went back home, but I wanted my kids to finish two months, which was left of school because I didn't want to take them out of school. So we lived in a car for the, for the two months. So we got up, um, woke up early in the morning, drove to different hotels, washed up, changed whatever we had in the car at the moment. Um, and that's how we survived. Two months later, I had, um, after they got out of school, I had moved to back to Chicago. Hmm. Oh, so you, did, you went back. So that's your home, Chicago. Chicago is my, uh, my home where I was born and raised. Wow. So you went back, started over again. Started then, over again for two years. And then it didn't work out, and then you left. I'm back in Georgia again. Back in Georgia again. So you decided yeah. this time you was going to be prepared, though. I was going to be yeah, prepared. Money. I had I had $10,000 saved up. I, I knew where I was going. I knew what I wanted. I came back with the money saved up, but I didn't have a job, but I was blessed with a job within 30 days. I was down here, and I'm still there. Yeah, good, good. Now, so the gangs were, so how old was your son that the gangs wanted him so bad? He was 12. He was 12. Yeah, that's the age. Yeah, that's the age they're trying to, because he can be a runner. Mm. Yeah, he, he, he doesn't look his age like people still now think he's my boyfriend or, you know, but he, he was, he, he, he's he played football. So he's big and he, you know, muscular, and, you know, you know, big. So he doesn't look like a, he didn't look like a normal 12 year old. Would look. Right. So you were living in the housing projects in Chicago. Is, is that what the deal was? Yeah. No. No. I, no, I was fine when I was in Chicago. Okay, so they're just trying to recruit them to school. Yeah, because they go into the good schools and try to recruit boys to sell drugs in those schools. Yeah, so it, was, that it was bad that you had to. It was around my mom's house. She stayed. She stayed in the city of Chicago, the South Side of mm-hmm. Chicago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, 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 so when you lived there, there was no trouble, no problem with the gangs for him. No, you when said. I went back, when I went back for those two years, no, we stayed in the suburbs. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Right, so, you, so you, so basically, you ran out of Chicago, scared, and really was really it wasn't that panic of a situation then. It was like oh, you it was kinda, because it, it was, was. It's when they ask you, "Do you want to be in the game?" You tell them no, they will beat you. Oh, 
Oh, so they was after him. Yeah, they Man. were they were after him. Oh, at his school when he was going to school, or no, at my mom's mom. house. Oh. When he was so he had to go. Over, oh, so he had to go see your mom all the time. Because I mean, I mean, there was no way of avoiding that. No, because my job that I worked, um, he had to go to that school because I I didn't have a way to take him or pick him up because of the hours that I worked, so he would walk to my mom's house. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's a, a mother protecting her son. All right. Yeah. All right, Joyce. So um, let's talk a little bit before we, we got a few minutes left. Just uh, how are you doing on, on social media? Are you engaging people? I mean, how how is the reaction to the book so far on social media? Well, so far I get a lot of messages on Facebook saying you're a powerful woman, you're amazing, you inspired me. I've had people, I've actually helped like two to three people write their own book. Um, people, Some people just write to me and just say, just, can you just listen to me? I just want to vent. I've heard so many things. You know, I've, I've met, you know, friends on Facebook just by them just inboxing me and saying, you know, I've been through the, same, the similar things that you've been through, and maybe this story was worse than mine, but I was there to listen. Sometimes that's what people need. They need to just vent or they need someone to listen to them. Even if it's a stranger, I felt that talking to a stranger was better than talking to people that you love your family because they're always there. They're judging you. I always have people mm-hmm. to throw things in my face. And, you know, it's always better to talk to a stranger to me, my opinion. So mm-hmm. I'm assuming that mm-hmm. was the same for, for them as well. And, you know, we became friends and we're still communicating to this day and, you know, most 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 people inbox me private messages because they don't want to put it on, you know, Facebook. Mm. But um, I mean, I get I get a lot of different responses because I also have a YouTube uh, channel which is uh, Joyce Reed, and I have a YouTube video that I have actually two um, called "My Life, My Journey, My Future," mm. and I have another video um, titled "My Cancer Story." Oh wow. Hmm. Now, I've been on your Facebook page. Like I said, I, I thought I thought she was a model because I thought I remember seeing you know photograph sessions and everything. I said, "Oh, a model won't come on. She must, must must have written a book, you know, about the you know the industry, you know, because you know the hurt." Mm-hmm. Um, you you have no problems um showing your sexuality. You seem like you're real comfortable in your skin. So you know, so you are you recovered? Because I think I asked you that early in the show. You know, are you recovered? Are you you recovering? And you, you, have, you have accepted yourself. I have accepted myself, and um, I am still recovering. Um, it's a, it's a process because it's like, like I said before, um, I'm reliving everything. And my first step of therapy was writing a book. I've had therapy, so you know, with a person, but it's, it's still. You have to accept that therapy. You have to accept wanting to get past everything, and you just have to accept certain things. And it's just certain. It's just one thing that I just can't grasp and understand on how my brother is no longer here. Like part of me was missing for so long, even though it's been since '96. It's like I can relive that day like it was yesterday, and I know people lose their parents, people lose, you know, their spouses, people lose certain people. But when you have that person that you're there with every single day that you can talk to, never judge you, and just taken away from you like like that, it's just like it's detrimental. And it's, I mean, it's just something that will always have a, I will always have a soft spot in my heart for that because he was like my best friend and part of my soul was just taken away from me. I think that's the yeah. only thing that I get like, you know, teary eyed and, you know, get right. all, you know, sensitive and soft mm-hmm. about, but everything else that happened to me, I'm, I forgive. Um, Cause that's the only way I can be forgiven. I forgive mm-hmm. everyone that did harm to me, that put their hands on me, raped me, molested me, fondled me. I, I forgive them all because I always thought it was something wrong with me, but it's nothing yeah, wrong that's, with yeah, me. Yeah, that's right. That's what they try to make you feel like. 
Yeah. All right, Joyce. Yeah. Mm. Sorry to hear about your brother. Did, were you able to devote a chapter in your book to your brother? Yes, a whole chapter. All right, good. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, you're going to give us your final thoughts. And um, cause we run out of time. We got to get ready for our next show. But we really appreciate you coming on Positive Power 21 and sharing your story, your life, your journey. All right? Thank you. Hold tight. Mm-hmm. All right. Here's another episode of Book Buzz with Tamika Kane and her book, Seasons of Change. Are you looking for the next great read? A book filled with love, passion, betrayal, and intrigue. The award-winning novel, Season of Change by Tamika Patrice Kane is sure to satisfy your literary sweet tooth. Check out this must-read book reviewers are calling uplifting and emotional and exceptionally great read, deeply intense and thought-provoking. Order your copy today, available in paperback and ebook on Amazon.com or at www.tamikapatrice.com. Hi, I am Martha Crystal Alexis, and I'm on Positive Power 21 with Jerry Royce Live. Woohoo! Hey, hey, Jerry Royce Live, Brooke by We talking to Joyce Reed, her book, Hurt Used to Live Here. You can find her on I Am You Are Voice, I Am Your Voice.com. Her website, I mean, Amazon.com. You can find her book under Joyce Reed. Just type in Joyce Reed, come right on up. And her book is based on a true story. You will cry, you will laugh, you will get chills. You may even get upset and want to hurt somebody, but that's her story. All right, Joyce, your final final thoughts for tonight's show? I really appreciate you having me on the show and me sharing my story. Um, I'm hoping that I inspired, motivated someone that's listening today to... Um, mm also have the courage to speak out about what they've been through or what they are going through and always understand that love does not hurt and you don't have to be ashamed and embarrassed about what you've been through because God would not put anything on you that you cannot handle. We are all strong, beautiful people and we can get through it all because he will never leave you nor forsake you. And I appreciate again I appreciate you having me on the show and me sharing my stories to help and motivate um, so many people. But I do want to say before we leave, um, I know you did mention that my book is on Amazon as well as my, um, my website. But if anyone is in the Atlanta area next week on the 28th, I'm having a book signing. Um, you can ask me any questions. You can meet me in person. Um, you can also find that um, I'll post something on Facebook as well, but it's uh, it's going to be at six Plaza from four to six, and um, I also do want to mention that in the process of me writing this book and getting through everything, um, I found the outlet, and my outlet was nail polish. So yeah. I started my own. I started, I love colors. I love to be bright. I love to be different. So I started my own nail polish company, which is called Ironic Nails, um, which mm-hmm. again you can. You can, um, I have a website for that, and I also have a Facebook page as well as Instagram. My Instagram is I am you are voice, as well as my nail polish is Ironic Nails. I have over 200 colors, and the proceeds, some of the proceeds every month, goes to a foundation or charity that empowers women. Yeah. So I do, I do that get that. Yeah, hey, well, you, you heard, we, you know, we're in 12 countries, so if you want to go worldwide, you have to advertise with us. Your um, nail polish business. That sounds nice. I like your name as a business name. Joyce Reed, you know, Cosmetics. Sounds powerful. I like that. Because sometimes we get yeah. so creative with our name. I, I, don't remember, I don't remember people's really fancy. Like, I, I, I do um, business, um, like, workshops once a month, my director and I, for the government. And um, people have all these names, like, some, 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 something, consulting or whatever, and we never remember their names. We remember their name, but we don't remember their business name. They just mm-hmm. try to be so creative. I'm like, why people don't keep the, the name, names of their business simple anymore? Because <laughs> you want people to remember you, and they won't be able to find your website. You know, they can't remember the name of your company. 
I'll just be tripping out on that sometime. Especially some people have some very, very nice, um, you know, names that be that are. If you look at some of the most successful businesses, they named after people. All right. Anyway, that's my little piece. Anyway, Joyce Reed, so glad you were able to share your story with my audience, and um, I hope they support you. You told a great story, and um, we'd be in touch with you. All right. Hey, yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I tell you all the time, y'all want to hear the good stuff. You got to listen to Jerry Voice, Jerry Voice Live Worldwide at PositivePower21.org and Spreaker.com forward slash Positive Power 21. Take care, everybody, and stay awesome. Stay awesome all week long. Thank you for tuning in to Jerry Voice Live on PositivePower21.org and Spreaker.com forward slash Positive Power 21. This is a Voice Enterprises production. And don't forget about replay on Facebook.com forward slash Jerry Voice Live. All right. Take care, everybody. Have you been hurt? Been hurt. Been back, back there. there. Gotta talk him back to you. Talk him back. Cause you're not alone. No, no. Escape into another reality. reality. Through Dominic Wilkins' good book. Good books of your books. Paperback. Ebook. Good books. Available on author D. Wilkins. Good books. Dot com. Hi. This is Angel Sessions. On February 23rd, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, I will be live on Jerry Rose Live Radio. I will be discussing my new album and my new single coming in February. Stay tuned and hope to see you there. Hi, I'm Terry B. Stewart, author of Playing While Hurt, and I'm with Jerry Rose Live Worldwide. You are listening to PositivePower21.org with Jerry Royce. What up? It's your boy, Kano Kingston. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. Hey, this is Kat. Hi, I'm Teresa Powell. Hi, Hi, Jerry. This is Iris Sandro Carter. Hi, this is Paul Powers. Hello, this is Teresa Bobby with Jerry Royce Live. Hi, I'm Phil LeBaron. I'm live on the Jerry Royce Show. Hi, what are you doing? Boy, who's the same? Peace, this is Dolly, the poet, spoken word artist. Hello, this is Ramon Marquis with Jerry Worth Live. All right, all right, everyone. We got Robin Lynn, and I'm keeping it live right now on Jerry Royce Live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's up? This is a war winning podcast with the greatest podcast on earth. Thank you for stopping by. I'm your host, Jerry Royce Live Worldwide on Internet Radio where you get your positive on. So when it's all positive, it's all power. That's positive power. This is a worldwide podcast for growth, wealth, and success. Thank you. Think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Think again. Set in the green hills of western New Jersey inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company where decisions are worth billions of dollars and human lives worth less. Nicholas Harding, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career, family, and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse is a sense thriller novel by Bill Powers, published by Donna Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com or DonnaInc.org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. Are you looking for the next great read? A book filled with love, passion, betrayal, and intrigue. The award-winning novel, Season of Change, by Tamika Patrice Kane is sure to satisfy your literary sweet tooth. Check out this must-read book reviewers are calling uplifting and emotional and exceptionally great read, deeply intense and thought-provoking. Order your copy today, available in paperback, and ebook on Amazon.com or at www.TamikaPatrice.com. Are you an author, 
looking for promotional services or a reader looking for a great read at low prices? In this competitive world of books, Fighting Royalty Promotions is dedicated to bringing authors and readers together to build a greater respect for literature through our various promotional services and online bookstore. So head over to writingroyaltypromotions.com and check us out. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and welcome to Positive Power 21.org. I am Jerry Royce Live, and our book buzz sponsor for tonight's show is James Deshay. He has a brand-new poetry book out, and his website is jamesdeshay.com. Hold tight for his presentation. Are you looking for a great book of poetry that is romantic, heartfelt, and full of male emotion? Then get Thoughts, Love, and Reflections by James K. Deshay. That's D-E-S-H-A-Y. Go to www.jamesdeshay.com. You will enjoy thoughts, love, and reflections. All right, all right, everybody. Welcome, welcome to Positive Power 21.org. That's right. Tonight on the show, we have Terry V. Stewart. She's a woman who wears many hats. She's a wife, a mother, a daughter, a sister, and a teacher. She was born in Atlanta, Georgia, and raised in South Georgia. She attended Albany State University and earned her Bachelor of Arts degree in sociology. She went on to obtain her special education certification at Vadasta State University. Soon after, she became a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, incorporated with the Valdosta alumni, alumni chapter. While teaching special education for 14 years, she earned her master's degree in education at Cambridge College and then went on to earn her education specialist degree in Nova Southeastern University. She has married to Charles L. Stewart, and together they have a beautiful and smart seven-year-old daughter, Tristan Stewart. All right, her hobbies include reading, traveling, shopping, cooking, watching movies, and spending time with her family and friends. She describes herself as having an adventurous spirit and is always willing to try something new. She shares a mother's, mother's story of love, triumph, and pain with the world in her first published book, Playing While Hurt. Mrs. Stewart currently resides in Valdosta, Georgia. And I hope I'm saying that right. All right. Welcome to the show. Terry V. Stewart, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. I'm good. All right. Did I say that right? Did I say your school right? Did I say Valdosta? Yeah, you did. All right. Valdosta. Right. Mm-hmm. You did. Yeah. Yeah, first time you've seen that. All right. Well, welcome to Jerry Voice Live Worldwide, and glad to have you. All right. Glad to be on your show. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. And your first question for tonight is, who is Terry V. Stewart? <laughs> um, Terry V. Stewart um, is a woman who um, has gone through a lot, but I don't wear it. I don't look like what I've been through Um and I use my pain for my mess for a message. I'm that person that um, can see the glass half full instead of half empty. Um, I en- like I said, like you read in my bio, I enjoy many different things. I have an adventurous spirit. I'm always the daredevil. I'm the one that want to try stuff, um, and I'm never the one to be outdone. I got that little um, sportsmanship type, you know, that little. Um, competitive thing going on, and I just enjoy life. Uh, mm-hmm. All right. Now, your beautiful book cover, and we're going to talk about oh. your book in the second half of the show. Yeah. Now, you mentioned yeah. that um, you've been through a lot. Now, you have a lot of education, so, I'm, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you yeah. Stay, I see you've been busy. Now, <laughs> what you've what you been through, what was, you know, what was so um, triumphant? Um, when you said I have a beautiful book cover, um, the lady on the book cover is my mom, is my mother. And because of her, I am the woman I am today. But it took me a, it took a full circle moment for me to get to be this woman today. Um, when I say I've gone through a lot, you know, I've gone through witnessing um, my mom being beaten, um, emotionally abused, mentally abused, um, and then to have her life. Um, literally um, stopped at the age of 50 due to a um, mishap. Um, she walked in for outpatient surgery on her shoulder to being 16 years of being incapac- totally incapacitated due to the mm. negligence of an anesthesiologist. 
And so um, I'm watching her, you know, and when, during that time I had to fill her shoes because when she um, had that accident, she was care- t- taking care of my grandmother. And so that responsibility fell on me. And I was still like a um, junior in college in Albany State when that happened. So you got this um, 21-year-old um, who's been about an honorary 90-year-old lady and my mother at the same time and trying to maintain um, my grades as well, undergrad. Wow. Wow. Um, <laughs> that's a lot. But, yeah, it's a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. Did you hear to talk about it, though? Yeah, let's talk about it. Um, I have one brother. We are 12 years apart. Um, we're very close. Um, and he has been like a, like almost like a father figure to, as well as my big brother. Um, mm-hmm. But he and I have both kind of witnessed the same thing, you know, trying to figure out, like, why. You know, what what happens to our mom to make her endure the um pain and suffering that she went through, the needless pain and suffering she went through with relationships and, you know, us having to watch it and to, you know, when she's finally starting to come into her own to be, to being struck down in the prime of her life, you know, we just, you know, just a lot of um, questions that we were just trying to figure out why, how did this happen? And then how, in, in the midst of all of that, how well my mother handled the adversity that she, the card she was dealt. Um, the title, Playing While Hurt, was actually, um, my brother's um, sermon the first um, Sunday after my mother's funeral um, mm-hmm. that he preached. Yeah, and he compared my um, uh, mother to, like, the athlete. You know, athletes, they're always, you know, they, they, it's about the game. You know, it's not about them. It's about the game, the sport that they love. And, you know, they play hurt, whether it be physically, um, mentally, maybe going through something financially. You know, athletes go through a lot of challenges. You know, the politicking of the sports, if it's, you know, NFL or – NBA or what have you, but they say, mm-hmm. you know, it's all about that game. And so although my mom didn't play an actual sport, she understood that the mentality of an athlete was in the game of life. You know, she mm-hmm. taught my brother and I how to play while hurt. You know, about this life is not about you, it's about servitude. You know, if, this, if, if my pain can be somebody else's release, so be it. You know, we go through mm-hmm. it to help somebody else. Yeah, it's not about us. Mm-hmm. And so, wow. So how 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 um young were you guys when you were seeing her go through this abuse? Well, you know, my brother got to see the the most of the majority of the physical abuse because he had to witness it from his dad. Then he walked when she thought he was they were walking away from it with his dad, and then she married my father, you know, and to walk right back into the same thing. And um, I was smaller and younger, but I do remember few of the incidents that, you know, just really just stuck out to me at being uh, four or five years old. And then when she finally left my father, um, it's a excerpt from the, um, the sample of my book where I talked about when she shared with me how my father had wrapped the um, telephone cord around her neck and he was dragging her. And mm. she literally was um, like the life of her breath, she was losing her last breath. And she managed to, like, just pray, like, God, if you let me live, I'll leave him. And she said the cord instantly broke. And so mm-hmm. she knew she had to make good on the promise she had to walk away. And so when mm-hmm. she moved back to South Georgia, um, she didn't want to go, <laughs> of course, you know, going back leaving. Because South Georgia, she was from a town called Tifton, Georgia. And she did not want to go back to Tifton. She wanted to stay in Atlanta. But because she had to make good on that promise, she had to, she, she left. And... Mm-hmm. um. A few years later, she married again. My stepfather and went from the. I mean, he was the church going, like family man. He had eight kids of his own, and he had raised wow. by himself. And mm. they were mostly grown, but it was the emotional um, abuse. And that's what I really got to um, witness. Kind of like you know, it's my way, no way at all. You mm. know, um, his kids could be sitting in the living room. And I could be sitting there with them. They were grown for the most part. And if he was not home and, they, and he would pull up in the driveway, they would all scatter. And I would be wow. sitting there like, why is everybody running? Why is everybody running? And, you know, he would, mm-hmm. and they would call me disrespectful. You know, mm-hmm. you, you're not respecting our dad. And he didn't like that, you know. And my mom was like, well, Terry, you know, maybe you should just go to your room sometimes. So you know how he is. We've got to work on him. And, you know, and I just couldn't figure out, like, why? You know, what was the big mm-hmm. deal? Yeah, mm-hmm. so... <laughs> ah, emotional abuse. So, yeah. 
Yeah, it was wow. the emotional stuff. Yeah. So he yeah. had no problems with them eight kids, though, did he? <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. rolled with an iron fist. It wasn't until yeah. they got grown to some acting out and they started, but he did. He ruled with an iron fist. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so it's not like your mom went through the same type of abuse. It was, it was a different type when in the second marriage. It was more emotional. No, 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 the first two, she was married three times. The first mm. two marriages was the actual, it was all incorporated. It was the emotional, it was the physical, you know, mental, it was all of it. Oh. And, then, and I remember her even sharing with me with the first one, um, she didn't really want to marry this guy, but she had gotten pregnant, 18 years old. So you married me, you know, that was my grandmother mm-hmm. pushing her to marry, you know, because you're pregnant. And she really didn't, she resented that, but she looked at it as a ticket of leaving, you know, South Georgia to get to Atlanta. And um, she would actually, she even shared with me how she would even initiate some of the fights, like in hoping that maybe he would leave her, you know, she, you know, mm-hmm. And she would fight with him, but then when she got with my dad, it was different. She, you know, she said it was like he would just, you know, tower her. He would just beat her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, not to give a whole lot of the book away, she even shared an incident where she had caught my father. Um, you know, she had made friends with this lady who was actually having a affair with my father. She didn't realize it was my father. She was, you know, it was my mother's husband she was having an affair with, and they had wow. became friends. And so when they were going to confront the um my daddy about his infidelity, like he's been busted. You know, my dad just looked at them and laughed. She said and left. Mm. But he beat the other lady wow. so bad, you know, and to she she was from like up north somewhere and she left. And he didn't even, you know, he just looked at her, he never addressed it. And you know, she said she should have known like saying like common sense would have kicked in, like he really don't care about it. you know, yeah. what else is it gonna take. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What did he go through in life to, to be that right. way? Right, right. You didn't get him, so you didn't get that in your in your book, did you? <laughs> you know, only because I don't know a whole lot about his childhood, but I will say, um, I just think hurt people hurt people, yeah. and something happened to him to make him be the way he was. You know, because but at the same token, I could see how my mom was attracted to him because he was funny, he was charismatic. He, you know, he when he was in his good mood, he was. The life of the party, but wow. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, you know, mm, something. something just snapped. Yeah. So he right. was, he, was he, did he serve in the armed forces or anything? He did. And let me tell you, and he got hit in the head and, um, the doctors wanted to go in to repair something. You know, my mom was trying to you know, share it with me and she said he wouldn't do it because he felt fine at that time. You got to keep in mind, this was like in the early 70s. And he was like, you know, doctors are not going to operate on me. I'm fine opening up my head. And he started having seizures as a result mm-hmm. of not having the procedure. And so he started, he began to self-medicate, like with um, smoking my marijuana, drinking, that kind of thing. And the seizure progressively got worse to the point where today um, he had a, a real bad seizure back in like oh four to the when he um, when he fell in the grocery store he hit his head and like he doesn't know me to be his daughter anymore he just ta- he actually talks to me for my mother he talks oh, he asks wow. me how how baby girl is doing but he doesn't know who I am mm. wow so he's pretty messed yeah. up now right how old, right how old is he now? Now he's, um, I think, like sixty-eight. 68 wow, he's young so. guy, still young. Yeah, guy. Mm. yeah, yeah. So those are some answers I probably would never get. You know, as to like what happened. You know, with you, because of course I was bitter, and I didn't have a relationship, like a real relationship with him, because I was just resentful. You know, the fact. And then when my my stepfather he adopted me. And, you know, and I was like, you know, you, you let this other man, you gave me away to another man. You know, you didn't want me. So I had a lot of resentment toward him um, for that. So it wasn't until I got grown and, you know, I was at Albany State and I had this professor. Um, I was needing to take a class out of sequence because due to my mom's illness, I, had to, I sat out of school a um, term. Mm-hmm. And I had to get a special permission from her. And I went to sharing with her what, what I was dealing with, what was going on. And before I left that, she pretty much was like, you don't think your mom knew your dad was trifling or who he was before she got with him? You know, like, your mom, what, you know, why are you putting all the blame on your dad? Why you're not aunt with your mom? And I got so upset with that lady because I was, I felt guilty for wanting to be mad with my mom because it's like I couldn't understand 
why she felt like she had to take what she, you know, took from men. But as I did more history in her childhood, she watched my grandmother do the same thing. She literally lost her older sister to the same domestic violence. Mm. Um, so it it was just a generational curse, you know, if you will. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. You know, you hear about that. You know, now I've been doing this show for about over a year now, and all these stories sound exactly the same. It's like, mm-hmm. it's, like it's a generational curse. It's like these women just attract these kind of men no matter where they go, mm-hmm. where they find them, whether it's in mm-hmm. church or in the hood. That's mm-hmm. what they attract. Mm-hmm. And the little good, the good little guys, they don't even see them guys. Mm-mm. They see the Mm-mm. one with the horns on their head. And, mm-hmm. and like them. Yeah, and attract them. Oh, love them to death. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then things just, that's, we saw a play this past summer that was produced by my cousin. And, man, she put a twist on that thing. And that was, it was written from the perspective of um, this guy shows up like an angel. But, but, but once he put that ring on the finger, bam. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Different guy. Yeah, a different guy. Boy. The yes. true colors. Wow. Yeah. I think that was a good play. And, that, and, you know, and I can, I can see that. But, you know, um, my grandma used to tell me, you know, I was dating this guy in college, and he was carrying me to do all kind of changes, and, and I just, we had stopped seeing each other, and she, you know, she had asked about it, and I was just like, I'm not seeing him anymore, that guy anymore, and she was like, why? I said, I could just, if I could, I could get someone else, I don't have to deal with that, and she's like, why? Because all men are the same, you just trade off one for the other, I mean, all of them do the same thing, you know, and so that's what she had talked to her daughters, you know, um, my, my aunt, my mom, um, and it was in my brother, and I was starting to buy into it a little bit. And when I made that comment to my brother, and he just went in. He was like, look at me. Look at me, Terry. What do you see? Do you see me being like those men that hurt our mama? Do you see me being like Trice? I mean, he just got, I mean, he was living. But in that moment, he validated me to tell me I was special. I was worthy. You know, I, I didn't have to take no or so for nothing but, the, you know, the best. So, yeah. I'm so grateful for that because no man had never really validated me like in that, you know, on, on way before. Mm. Now your your brother is your brother married? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Been married over thirty years. His wow. high school sweetheart. Yeah, mm. he had three kids and two grand. <laughs> yeah. So he so he know so he knew the way a woman should be treated and, and, and right. not to be treated. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. So, because you know he left us in Atlanta. He got to the point, he said he got tired of feeling like that helpless little boy, you know, not couldn't help mama and just wife got to sit in the room and listen to her get beaten, you know, and trying mm-hmm. to help her up off the floor, that kind of thing. He said he just, he just couldn't take it anymore when he would talk to her and she still wouldn't leave. By the time he was entering, in high, entering high school, he decided to go back to Tipton um, with my grandma. Oh, wow. And, yeah, and he was just like, because he said, I just couldn't take it anymore. I mean, uh, mm-hmm. So they didn't fear for her death that he was going to get that phone call one day from you. Yeah, so, you yeah. Know, mama didn't make it. You know? Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Mm. And you know, and my mom has had so many, um, had so many surgeries, orthopedic surgeries, um, and she never played a sport in her life. But all of us from mm. domestic violence, like she had like three back surgeries. Um, even after she gave birth to me, I was the oldest baby in the. Um, baby room or what have you because she didn't let me go home with anybody but she had, we had to stay in the hospital almost three months because she mm. had allegedly fallen downstairs she would never tell us what, what really happened but she had fallen wow. down the stairs mm. so um yeah and I was like three months old when we I left the hospital with her yeah mm. I just stayed too yeah yeah mm. you talking to Terry V. Stewart the woman who wear many hats the wife, the mother, the daughter, the sister, and the teacher. She wrote a book called Playing While Hurt, uh, my mom's story. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna, we wanna, people want to find out where they can meet Terry Stewart so they can hug her. <laughs> yeah, oh, find, wow. out where she get, find out where she get her strength from. All right, hold tight for this, uh, these you. episodes of Book Buzz. Hold tight. Thank what you. happens when a man meets a woman? was everything he wished his girlfriend was. Is his girlfriend's unconditional love and ride or die loyalty worth dealing with in her baggage? Find out the consequences of a man's need of self-completion 
and learn a lesson that everything comes with a price. The Lesson by Miss Cynthia Blue on Amazon.com. Think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Think again. Set in the green hills of western New Jersey, inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company where decisions are worth billions of dollars and human lives worth less. Nicholas Harding, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career, family, and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse. It's a so thriller novel by Bill Powers, published by Donna Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com or DonnaInc.org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. Hello, I am Authorist Queen Inoshi, and I am on Positive Power 21 with Jerry Royce Live this Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And when I'm online, I listen to Jerry Royce live on PositivePower21.org. Hey, everyone. This is Tanika Gonzalez, spoken word poet. Whenever I'm online, I'm always listening to Jerry Royce live. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. On February 23rd, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, I will be live on Jerry Rose Live Radio. I will be discussing my new album and my new single coming in February. Stay tuned, and I'll see you there. All right. Be talking to Terry V. Stewart. That's right. A woman with a Bachelor of Arts degree. One with a master's degree. You have a doctorate? I didn't read a doctorate. No, you know what? I stopped. <laughs> mm. Education, your occupation. Mm. All right. I stopped. All right. Well, you've been um, teaching in special education for 14 years. You must have a yeah. lot of patience. I know the kids are so difficult. And probably no more difficult than back in the day, but. No, uh, no, no. It's understatement. It's an understatement. Uh, um, the kids, I, yeah, yeah. The, the um, population of kids I work with, you know, you wouldn't know they have a disability, you know, uh, just by, look, um, they're LD and my kids. Um, and so it's like, you know, and that's a, kind of the challenge of trying to bring them up to par to meet the graduation standards um, or the passing standards. Like this year is my first year actually working at middle school level because I've done – my first 14 years at the high school level. So now I'm mm. at the middle school. And that's just a whole nother challenge. I'm still getting used to um <laughs> And we got <laughs> only 13 school up, and I'm still trying to adjust to middle mm. school age kids. Yeah, yeah but um, they're totally else. different. Totally yeah. different. Especially them little girls. I know them. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> mm. It's no That's day, right. no, every day is different. Every day is different. <laughs> That's right. You never know. But you're gonna <laughs> never <get>. know. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we're going to talk about your book now. We talked a lot about your mom and who's in the book. Um, mm-hmm. So what were some of the challenges in writing this book? Oh, gosh. Um, well, it was like um, during the, I'm saying about six years ago, um, my mom um, had developed um the cubitus ulcers, and they were so bad until she had to have, like, three surgeries within one week. And that was, like, a, tr- a real trying time, trying to figure out, you know, like, how this happened. And, to, and it was, what, she was, what she was dealing with was totally unavoidable, you know, because, of, you know, she was a caregiver. She was a CNA, and I, she had taught me how to take care of patients with my grandmother. I was going to work with her. So I knew what standard of care she should have, but that was like a constant battle with my stepfather and me, you know, her care. And so during that time of turmoil with the families or what have you, I um, was sitting there and God was like, you want to, you need to write a book. You need to tell your story. You need to tell the story. And I'm trying to think, now, why am I thinking about this or that time? And I kind of like brushed it off and, you know, but it just kept coming back up. You know, you need to write a story, you need to write a story. So fast forward, um, to 2011, and my mom passes that August 18th, and uh, probably about maybe three or four weeks after she passed, 
Um, she came to me in a dream and told me it was time to write, to go get the book, and we need to go write. We can go get the book. And I started um, trying to um, write a little bit more. I was just, I, you know, I was kind of journal anyway, and I was just kind of mm-hmm. journaling some things down or what have you. But um, it was like until last, due to budget cuts or what have you, I didn't teach summer school, and that was the first time in like 12 years last summer that I have never taught, you know, that I didn't teach summer school. And um, mm. I just took that time to just really just put it together and just kind of dive in. And it just, and it made me have to, um, you know, revisit some dark places, some things that I just didn't want to remember. It just, yeah. it was just, you know, so it was really um, an emotional journey, if you will. And I, you know, and I would stop, you know, and I'd pick it up and I'd, you know, get myself together and, come back mm-hmm. to it and then some things when I would need my brother's input, you know, for the first 12 years of life, he had mama by himself, so then I'm, I got to put him in a funk, you know, put yeah, him in a yeah. dark spot, you know. Um, How and about your my, husband? I mean, he had to be supported he, too. Yeah, home. you know, yeah, he probably thought I was civil over here, you know, different personalities, I probably was <laughs> someone, you know. <laughs> Sitting there writing, I might be dropping tears, or even I'm kind of like laughing or chuckling to myself. Yeah, so he but he has been like a you know like my rock and my biggest fan and cheerleader, you know, through this whole process. You know, yeah, it's like you yeah. can do it, and you can do it, and That's I'm grateful right. for that. Yeah, right. I am. Well, what do you what do you remember? What was the last the last like final words your mom gave you? You know about her life. You know that you, that you shared in the book. When my mom, before she, that, um, summer 91, I mean, summer 95, excuse me, um, that spring I had turned 21, and um, she started, like, actually talking to me, like, you know, woman style, you know, it, it was just woman to woman. And so from, like, that May until that September she had that story, that's when really and truly it's like she took every moment to just really share the things that I wrote about in this book. It came directly from her. And one of the things she used to always tell me, no matter what, Terry, I want you to stay to the cross and be of good courage. Stay to the cross. She even wrote it in my Bible. And I didn't find it till later, and I looked at it that she had actually written it to me, you know. So that was her mantra, like, you stay to the cross, you know, and be of good courage. Mm, and so that's, that, yeah, and, and that's one thing that you know, I, it really resonates with me, even when, I was viewing her body for the first time after she passed. I literally heard her. Cause when I really felt like I was just going to, like, just lose it and pass out. And I, it's like I heard her tell me that, and I just immediately, like, gathered my composure. You know, you know, she told mm-hmm. me, that, you know, stay to the cross and be of good courage. Yeah. Wow. That's one of the wow. most powerful things I think my mom could have told me. Yeah. So, did she, so when she met... So she she did she met Charles. She knew who Charles was, right? Yeah, yeah, she did. Right. But when she, you know, he didn't get the privilege of meeting her prior to the surgery. He only met her afterwards. So she was, um, you know, incapacitated when he met her. But she knew him, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And but he was there. Like, no, no, I was gonna say, did she get a chance to get to know him to be a good man? You know, knowing that you were yeah. safe, and I mean, you assured her that Charles wasn't one of those. Those demons that she, that she was, you know, that she was married to. You you know, yes, and even to the point where she would even like she gave me her like that seal of approval. No, like you did good, you know, yeah. Mm. Because during the time when, and before she had a surgery, the guy I was dating then, she just did not like him, and she was just telling me, you know, even though you know he's not. And it, it, the interesting part was for me. I had this thing where as long as you didn't put your hands on me, you know. Now, and I was dealing with the emotional um, abuse and the mental stuff, but, you know, and the disrespect, but you just did not put your hands on me, you know. And that was twisted. It's like I was separating them, like, you know, just to put your hands on me. And mm-hmm. she would just wow. tell me, she said, yeah, and I couldn't understand why she would tell me. She was like, you know, that dude, he reminds me so much of your daddy. I'm like, how you can say that? Because my daddy actually put his hands on you. He, but he, he never touched me, but... You know, I get it. I know in hindsight, mm-hmm. I got it, you know, what she was saying. And mm-hmm. so when she said Charles and she saw how Charles would, you know, come with me and, you know, be with me to visit home, we would do things together. She was just, I mean, she loved Charles. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Playing while hurt. All right. Now, I think you told me why you chose that title. Mm-hmm. Um, give it to me again. I think you, you kind of related to sports. You know, yeah, I think your brother, your brother. 
Yeah, when the first Sunday after my mom's funeral, that was his sermon title. Yeah, that's right. It's playing well. I like the I like the um, title of that book. That's powerful. Now, have you had a chance to uh, go out and uh, speak to women groups? Um, you know, where where are you um, right now as far as um, they, they, engaging? Right now, um, we're still like in the planning phases because it's gonna um, the book is gonna drop on um, March seventh, and um, Right now, we're in the process of locking down a venue for local book signers, but since it has been on Facebook and the word is getting out, um, I have been get, I've gotten invites to come and speak at different um, um, events, um, if you will, but they're like local here, and mm-hmm. one is in you know, October, it's Domestic Violence Month, and um, someone from Fort um, Stewart contacted me about coming over there to that base, and um, we can tell them to share my story with the women there. And so, um, of course, you know, I got a sisterhood luncheon with my Sarah, um on March, actually the day of release. And um, we'll be at Austin's um, restaurant here in Valdosta. And I, was, and, I, and I just thought how fitting, you know, the day my book dropped, I'll be with, you know, my Sarah's. And so we're definitely going to, um, you know, of course, you know, marketing share there. So, um but when I do get actual the dates and times of my actual book signings, of course, it will be all over social media. The um, Get It Right Consulting dot com, um, mm. my Facebook, um, Instagram at TV Stewart. Um, it will be out there. <laughs> <laughs> I will make yeah, sure yeah. you all know, and I will look, and I will even tag you, Mister Roy. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You better tag me too. Yes. That's right, Ty. That's how you market. Because I know a lot of people kind of new to the marketing game. But what have yeah. you learned so far about, about social media that you think? Because um, I know I didn't get into it until it was time to start this company. And then that's when I really started seeing, you know, how powerful it was. But at the same time, you could see the evilness in it, too. Right. But I saw right. more good than bad. So tell us, what, what have you seen about, you know, social media that kind of impressed you? Um, it's, it's a great tool. Um. Yes, I just upload, you know, just as a, um, when uh, my editor was saying that she was going to go ahead and put it on the, um, her page, on the page, her web, on the website about the book coming out, I decided just to share a pic, my um, bio pic and the cover on my Facebook page. And it was um, amazing how my phone literally buzzed and dinged.